Good evening, I'm Megan Wolf. And I'm Jeremy Dawes. Our main headlines tonight. Daddy, it's starting! Get yeah, every single one of you's a bit Jesus. What a wild ride this has been. Well, that's a very blunt question. Advance is lying to you. Friends and neighbours, and have confidence that the team will keep you safe. But now you start to see, yes, eh? The people never happy. It never enough. I cannot believe you. Are you saying that Advance have cured death? Jog off! We're still vassal sla slaves, we're just in prettier cages. Oh my goodness. We're only getting started. Good evening. I'm Megan Wolf. And I'm Jeremy Dawes. I'm What a wild ride this has been. Well, that's a very blunt question. Advance is lying to you. Friends and neighbors, and have confidence that the team will keep you safe. But now you start to see it. The people never happy. It's never enough. I cannot believe you. Are you saying that advance have cured death? Jog off! Neighbors, and have confidence that the team will keep you safe. But now you start to see it. The people. People used to look up to you. Take a big bastard hammer and nail your fucking f Apologize to him. It ends today. We're going live in five, four, three, two, one. It's me, Dave. You're inside me head, mate. Or maybe I'm inside yours. It's hard to say. Not important, though. What is important is that this is the best fucking DLC you've ever played. Live and spooky, dead and pukey. Time loop, <laughs> brewers droop more like. This is the one, mate. It's going to be the real deal. It's going to be a roller coaster, all fucking expenses paid, uber bastard. And best of all, you get to play as me or with me or something. So fucking strap in, mate, because we are going to fuck shit. Oh, fucking hell, it's both. Man, hang on, mate. What is this? What, what the fuck? Oh, never mind. We'll come back to it later. Hello, Dave. Hello, Bozeman. Thank you for agreeing to stay late tonight and run this light entertainment piece. You didn't really give me any choice, mate. No, I didn't. What's this button do? President C. Excellent. We should get one of these for the news. Never going to happen. It lights up when it's time to press. Simple. 
What's this big machine here? That calls the guests to the stage. Well, that sounds like fun. It's automated. Just leave it alone. Boring. One more thing. There's no adverts in the show, but we will need you to use the advert buttons to play in a little bit of archive footage. They're automatically loaded for you, so you just hit A, B, or C at each break. How do I know what's on what? Look to your right and select the fax paper. Already seen it, mate. Couldn't make hide nor air of it. Okay, so the top three are all clips from Just the Job in the 70s. Second clips are all PT from the 80s. And we just pick A, B or C when the advert buttons flash. Symbol. Show starting soon. Good luck. Try not to fuck it up, Dave. I'm going to take the microphone out of that fucking phone. Right, best DLC ever. Here we fucking go. Jacob Hamilton Man, which forced this year's early election. That's... The Night Visitor at 9.30, poorly narrated by Patrick Bannon. At 10.30, Adrian Atkinson Blimey is here for a special episode of Incisors, where he sinks his teeth into the current cost of living crisis by interviewing a multimillionaire, a nurse and a bin man to see who is suffering the worst. Here's a clue. It's not the millionaire. At 11.30, fasten your seatbelts as it's time for Wayne to Spirit Whistle to lead another terrifying exploration in Live and Spooky. And to... Yeah, I realise that, Eric, but my therapist has made it clear that I perform best when we have a plan and we stick to it. So I suggest you don't make any last-minute changes, as it's my intention to stick to our pre-arranged script. Is that all right with you, Eric? Actually, I don't care. I'm a leaf in the wind. And as we're going out live, there's really sweet fuck all you can... Yep, standing by. Good evening. I'm Eamon Tightly. Behind me is a true TV legend. Now running for Prime Minister. Everyone's handiest man... Peter Clement. Now, Peter thinks he's been brought here tonight to film a special reunion episode of Just the Job. But as always, viewers, you know better. Ten seconds, places. It's time. Let's start the show. Going in five, four, three. <laughs> Good evening, friends. And yes, it's true, and I can't really believe it myself. We are back for this special one-off reunion episode of Just the Job. I'll get it. Save you having to look away. My DLC, my rules. Hi, Dave. It's Eric. Just wanted to say break a leg. Of course, mate. No worries. You're 100% safe with me. It pretty much runs itself, to be fair. And Just cut the guests on and off, and well, it's a family show, so keep that bleep finger well, ready. No oh, don't you worry, mate. Tonight. My no finger's always show. ready. And that mm. is a Peter so, Clement threatening. promise. Oh. So to kick things off tonight, let's take Stand a look scant look at the and mighty bevel. Go, Eamon. Because you would be right yeah. there. Bye. What's going on? What? <laughs> oh, it's you. Yeah, it certainly is me. <laughs> Yo, fuck it, you naughty, naughty fucker! Frank, did you know? But look at that face. <laughs> you yeah, fucking did, didn't you? Peter, Fuckers, a lot of you. Peter, you thought you were here tonight to record a special reunion episode of Just the Job. I can't believe it. But tonight, Peter Clement, these are the bits of your life. <laughs> This way, Peter, mind just step down. I don't know. Really know. <laughs> I can't believe it, man. Honestly, I'm, I'm a huge fan of your show. I'm thinking incredible. I, I, I've never believed that people didn't know. He's loving this, viewers. I didn't, I didn't believe it. Here we go. Right in there, Peter. I am absolutely bloody 
flabbergasted. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I haven't been this species since I was about three fucking years old. Oh, so. lovely family, Joel, Peter. Yeah, well, they know what I'm like, <laughs> mate, don't they? There we go. Lovely. Hello, Crowley. Thank you so much. Lovely to meet you. Thank Peter you very Clement much indeed. running for Prime Lovely. Minister. I'm just going to have you vote. So, Eamon, how long have you been uh, planning this, Eamon? Eamon, how long have you been planning, Eamon? Eamon? Peter Gordon Clement. You were born October 10th, 1923, in the northern town of Rothering to Fanny and Martin Clement. Christ, was it that long ago? We didn't have much back then, but where there's lard, there's lube, as they say at the butchers. That's right. They got up at the crack of dawn to make the journey down to the capital by coach. It's your infamous old man and her long-suffering husband, ladies and gentlemen, Fanny and Martin Clement. <laughs> Lovely to have you both here. So, tell me, what was life like for young Peter in the Clement house? It was the same as every other house. Not special about it. Even back then, you could tell our Peter were bound for an audience. He used to make up little plays and make us all gather round and watch them. Do you remember Martin? Aye, bloody long they were. But if you got a pretty chuff, you should wave it in the fellas' faces, as they say down the pits. And our P.D. were always waving his chuff about. <laughs> After all, if you weren't going to have it stuffed, you, you shouldn't have had it true. Fanny <laughs> 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 and Martin Clement there with the first bits of your life. <laughs> It's 1938, and you're a 15-year-old at Rothering Elementary, but already you've got quite the reputation as a ladies' man. Oh, Jesus, you haven't got Jan Sandwich here, have you? Even better. Who's this? I remember you slipping me tongue and gill round back of your nan's house. Oh, you reckoned it were your first kiss, but me, I could tell it would. Mind you, it turns out you said that to all girls, but we loved you anyways, because you were a charming man. Well, Christ, it could be any one of them. Is it Patty Cakes? It's your childhood sweetheart, Chelsea Bones! <laughs> Cracking, that's my type of girl. I could, you know what? All right. Okay. Um, let me. Let me. Yes. I'll take that one. Chelsea. Oh, of course. Oh, Petey, look at me. Hello, pet. Hey. Oh, look at you. <laughs> Why don't you take a seat? Here. Yeah. Is that all right? Yeah. Oh, and we're in. So, Chelsea, let me ask you this. What do you think we could see in young Peter way back then that could have predicted his path to household name and now aspiring prime minister? Oh, well, that's easy, Pet. You see, our Peter here, he always, always had a, a surprise up his sleeve. So, do you know what he did after our first date? No, of course you don't, so I'll tell you. That first day, he smuggled me back into school where we used to go to. I hadn't been back there since I'd left, but somehow, I don't know why I found it a surprise, but he'd gotten hold of Master Key and he'd made this lovely little nook under school stage and there were cushions and a, a sleeping bag and all these candles and eggs. Hey, no, weren't what you lot are thinking with your gutter mind, no because he were a perfect gent. He kissed me. By it, did he kiss me. But he never pushed his look. Nope. Do you know what he did? I'll tell you. K 
kid you not, he read to me from a book that he nicked out school library. Oh, of course, <laughs> Chelsea. <laughs> he kissed me, he read to me, and then he walked me home. Because he was a class act then, and he's a class act now. Oh, bless you. <laughs> do you remember what the book was? Aye, I do. And I also remember that thing, what you do with your hands. Steady, <laughs> now, you'll get me into trouble when this is safe. Chelsea Bonds, everybody! <laughs> <laughs> Hey, <laughs> I will see you in green room. Not if I see you first. Don't even know what a bloody green room no, is. Now, before we bring our next guest on, let's have a look at some classic Just the Job. It's on that monitor there, Peter, if you'd like to watch. And that's about two minutes. I'll oh, take a look at that monitor. I can't see a thing without my glasses. I remember this one time, it was the height of our second run. By this time, we knew each other way too well. <laughs> anyway, we got towards the end of the show. Everything okay? I remember well, that's this one. We've got time for so today, ladies and gentlemen. We and we want to say a big thanks to all of our guests. That's oh, Arthur and Katie from the Sun and Happy Play. Can we reset, please? Oh, we didn't get you into too much trouble with the folks on Kids TV. Pop star Skinny, whose new single, Dimples on My Cheeks, comes out on Friday. And of course you, our wonderful viewing audience, without whom we would just be two men aging disgracefully in a large shed. See you uh, next week. Before we go, sorry, PC, thought somebody would have told you. There is someone else we need to thank today. OK. And who might that be, LJ? Someone who's been with us right from the very start, PC, through thick and thin. Me, ma'am. <laughs> Actually, it's his birthday. Would it be somebody whose birthday it is today? Yeah, and it's his birthday today. Frank, come on over here. We've got you, son. Come on up here, Frank. Come on. This is Frank, our long-suffering floor manager. And I'm not ashamed to say that I love this man. We all do. So we've had a bit of a whip round. No, we haven't. And we've all clubbed together. And we have got you this. Well, I bought it, actually. Oh, lummy, what a beauty. Look at the detail on that icing. Who are these miniature marzipan figurines? It's... It's so intricate. Well, it's from that place in Frampton Square. They're famous for it. And I know you collect miniatures, so uh, it seemed right somehow. Gosh. Thanks, Jimmy. Going great, I think. That's Everything's really smooth. Quite really plan. kind of you. Yeah, well, he's been in the game for years. I used to work with him on Peter, you know. Lovely guy. I was a runner for Dorothy Hammerman. She scared the shit out of me. I loved him, though. She's backstage. Yep, saw her in the corridor. Hopefully she didn't see me. You hiding from one of the guests, Eric? Ten seconds, everybody. Yeah, all right. She scares me a bit. Going in five, four, three. Fantastic memories there from one of the nation's most beloved TV shows. Now, Just the Job had two successful runs, yeah. of course, from 58 to 64, and again from 1972 to 1976. And across so many of those shows, there was always one man by your side. Ah. To <laughs> me up! That's right, a man who needs no introduction, but we're gonna give him one anyway. Your sidekick for almost 13 years, little Jimmy Chisholm! <laughs> Fuck me, they put him back in his old outfit. What a prick. I got that gym now, mostly. Lovely. <sighs> Ah, oh, together again, eh, lads? This has got to be bringing back some memories, eh? No, it certainly does. Not all of them good ones, eh, Pete? Ah, oh, we had our moments, LJ. I'll give you that. <laughs> well, Jimmy, you're certainly in a position to give us a unique insight onto this bit of Peter's life. What are the differences, would you say, between the on-screen and the off-screen versions of Peter Clement? Well, you know, Eamon, there's really not that big a difference. I mean, Pete's not pretending to be anything. He is what he is, and what he is is a massive... Steady now. Prankster. He said prankster, not wanker, in case you didn't get it. Oh, I've lost count of the number of pranks he's pulled on me over the years, both on and off screen. <laughs> Actually, we've got a little bit of footage here which shows us exactly what you're talking about. Let's roll it there. And let's get those nails in good and tight, shall we, little Jimmy? Sure thing, Pete. Tool me up! Here you go, pal. Make sure you hit it good and hard. <laughs> oh, Jimmy, what 
What have you done to yourself now? <laughs> God, I remember that when we sabotaged the Amaret. It took us three hours to set that one up. Yeah, and about six weeks before I could walk without crutches. Oh, God, those crutches, they were always getting in the way. Were they? Ah, lost none of the old spark, eh, boys? <laughs> well, that's the last footage you'll find of me wearing sandals. I mean, my feet are grotesque now. Children get upset. <laughs> <laughs> Little Jimmy chips and everybody. It's Jim now. Never mind. He's up. In 1941, long before Just the Job ever aired, you, like so many men of your generation, were conscripted into the army to go to the continent to fight. And it was there, on those very battlefields, that the strangest of friendships was born. They asked me to say something about you. This is what I write. Only ten words. Big man. Tiny penis. Shitty gopher. Once saved my life. It's your friend of over 40 years, the current Irkistanian ambassador to the capital, Ivan Vadovich! Yeah. <laughs> oh, fuck it. Come here, you prick! The horrible bastard! <laughs> oh, yeah. This Irkistanian special reserve. The guys at labor comes drinking to keep ice out of their lungs. Uh, here, it puts them, um, how you say, hair on your balls. It's chest, mate. Yeah, well, it should be balls. Here, up your bottom. And also, up yours. <sighs> uh, yeah. Thank you for that. <sighs> so, tell us, uh, what's it like being friends with Peter Clement? Jesus Christ, you can clean grout him with that. Peter Clement, very annoying man. He drink too little and talk too much. But in time of crisis, he's no one better to have by your side. Also on golf course, where he make you look good with his terrible stroke. There's nothing wrong with my stroke, pal. Uh, you stand like man trying to find his tiny penis. Uh, oh, oh, oh no, where is penis? Oh, is this it? No, oh, his blade of grass is too big for penis. You want to watch it, pal? If I win this election, you're going to be in trouble. Uh, if you win this election, I shave off all my hair. I'll take that bet. <laughs> Ivan Vodovich, everybody! <laughs> uh, I, I see you after the show, yes, sir. We fan this bottle. Yeah, good idea, Phil. I've been meaning to clear the paint off that garage for a while now. You insult the Pakistani glorious special reserve. Be careful you not start another war, my friend. Never again. Never ever again. And that is a Peter Clement promise. Yeah. <laughs> uh, interesting, man. It wasn't just the job that the nation took to their hearts. Starting in 1977 and running for nearly seven years, you brought your inimitable Peter Clement style to your eponymously named late night chat show, Petey. I fucking love that bloke. Let's take a look at the clip now. And that's about two minutes. Same monitor as before. Absolutely. Suppose you saw that. Classic but television. Pretty much the same. I'm looking in the script here, Eric, but I can't Let seem to do find it. For you. it. Find what? No, I can't I seem to find where it says pour two shots of vodka on Eamon's like chair. Family. Right, I get it. Debbie, can we? Doesn't it doesn't bother me. I'm a leaf in the wind. <laughs> well, ladies, right and you gentlemen, are. I'm sure regular viewers will have noticed there's been something a little different about tonight's show. Normally on this show, we have celebrities, politicians, people you've heard of that you know. Tonight's guests were not celebrities. They were people. I like think, you. okay. Do you think I did the right Every thing? Every one of you. Shut it all down for a career in politics. Written by your own hard times. Of course you did, mate. I've done a few things over the years where I Thank can you in. to help folks Reset, out. everybody. I've a checkbook from time to time, certainly, and I've tried to open my heart. But the thing is, ladies and gents, it's not enough. And it never will be. Not sat here doing this. You might remember a few months ago when I had an impressive barrister here called Julia Salisbury. 
We talked about standing up to society's bullies. She inspired me, actually, and we stayed in touch. And we've talked a lot. And we've concluded that there is only one way to help the sheer number of people we both aspire to. So, the program you've just watched was the last ever episode of PT. I'm sorry, that must be a shock. We've known it here for a few weeks now, but we didn't want to fuss or a star-studded final special episode. Just ordinary people. The people who need to advance. You'll be hearing that word a lot over the coming year. And you'll be seeing me out and about, and I hope you'll all come and say hello and tell me what I can do for you. Because over the last almost seven years, you've all done so very much for me. Dottie, get up here before I start welling up. <laughs> this is Dorothy Hammerman. A woman who, despite never appearing on this show until now, has somehow managed to become a household name. Absolutely. I'd never do anything as desperate as booking myself onto your show. It's not my show. It's yours. But it's got your name on it. It's ours. Okay. It's ours. Dorothy's off to take all the lessons that she's learnt here to shake up one of our rivals who I am not going to give a free advert to. Well, I will. It's three. <laughs> As channel controller, Dorothy will be the most powerful woman in television. It'll still be a damn sight easier than putting up with your nonsense. <laughs> Dorothy Hammerman, everybody. <laughs> well, I guess that's it. Over the last few years, I've poured my heart and my soul into this thing. Really, I have. And I've worked to the point of collapse on far, far too many occasions. I've tried to be honest about everything as I see it. Maybe you've learned something. Maybe you've felt something. Maybe you've laughed along the way. Or maybe just, maybe all three. My name is Peter Clement, and I want to thank all of you who have stuck with me to these last words. I couldn't love you more. Thank you. Eric? Anyone seen Eric? Eric? He's not here, mate. That's so good. What? That's so good. I can't hear what you're saying, man! For God's sake, in three, two, <clears throat> Unforgettable stuff. But while you took all the credit, arguably, someone else did all the work, didn't they now? Peter Clement to the set, please. Unless you've already surrendered your bullets at the front desk. Jesus, Horatio. Jim Smasher, Christ. No way. Yeah, it's your producer for over seven years. Now the chief executive of Channel 3 and one of the ten most influential women in media for the third successive year with the fifth Bits of your life, ladies and gentlemen, Dorothy Hammerman! <laughs> Congratulations on the new job, Dorothy. You deserve every bit of it. Yes, and good luck with yours. Well, I haven't got it yet. Of course you do, darling. <laughs> well, you were his producer on PT for over seven years. What's your favourite memory from that show? Oh, well, there have been so many, but uh, I think, yes, every evening on the hearth before the show, we would meet at the side of the stage for our little ritual. Well, I persuaded her it was a northern ritual, but the real truth of the matter is it was just something that me and Sid used to do before the war. We'd have a toast like this. Here's, Here's one, one finger, finger for, for the, the north, north. And two, two fingers, fingers to, to the, the south, south and, and we, we can, can all apologise tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the secret of our six years at the top, Eamon. 
Dorothy Hammerman, everyone! You're very good here, darling. Thanks for coming. I wouldn't want to live in a world without this beauty. And so, to last year, when you surprised the entire country by announcing you were giving it all up to form a new political party, and because the final bits of your life is always about the future... Oh, Peter, what have we let ourselves in for? Your co-founder in advance, and possibly the next Prime Minister, Miss Julia Salisbury. <laughs> It's lovely to be here. Um, I grew up watching uh, bits of your life as a child. It's about time you got round to Peter. <laughs> well, thank you for taking the time out from your campaign to come and speak to us. Let me ask you this. Is Peter Clement really a good fit for politics? Careful, love. It's a bloody trap. Well, he's not what you'd conventionally think of as a politician. Uh, Huntledon demonstrated his uh, colourful vocabulary and... And he's partial to a tipple from time to time. Well, it is true, like to hold me town halls in public houses. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but haven't we had enough of those perfect politicians with their impeccable lives, with no character flaws, because they have no character at all? Surely after Hamilton Mann and his perfect veneer of respectability, we're starting to see that there is perhaps something dark behind the mask of privilege. Hey, no speeches from you. You're supposed to be talking about me. Peter doesn't wear a mask. What you see is what you get. You might not always agree with what he says, but you'll always know what he thinks. Because he's honest. And he keeps me honest. And I think, in the end, that's what's so amazing about Peter Clement. He makes us all a bit more honest. Fantastic. While viewers coming up, we've got a little bit of a treat for you. But before then, let's take a look at the current Peter Clement. Now, this is you, last week in the debate. And viewers, if this is anything to go by, the future's looking pretty bright. I think we have ably demonstrated these past seven years that we are truly the party of commerce. Well, then why does the Business Enterprise Foundation support our fully costed manifesto, eh? Your, Tell me that. Your party can't be trusted with the economy. <laughs> well, we have moderate plans for steady growth. Oh, listen to the pair of you competing for your master's approval. You're the party of economic stability. You're the party of business. So, who is left for the rest of us? You're hardly a poor man with your TV career. No, not now, no. But I wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth like you, Mr. Hamilton Man, or went to private school and then university like you. Mr. McNair. But you know what that does give me? No, oh, please don't say the common touch. It gives me a bit of fucking perspective. Please, control your language, Mr. Sorry, Clement. I didn't. I, actually, no, you know what, I, I am not sorry if the language that I use, the language of the ordinary people, is considered to be, oh, I don't know, unsuitable or offensive, because it is just a word. Whereas these two, these two will fuck up your life for a crumb off Remington's Vist's table, but they will use all the right words. When well, you make us sound like yobbos. You are yobbos. You come in loud, you kick the country in the face, you nick all of our stuff to sell to your rich mates, and then you pat us on the head and expect us to be grateful for the doggy treat. Unfortunately, it'll take more than earthy rhetoric to balance the books. What the electorate want is a strong economy. And what the electorate want is to be heard. Well, in just five short weeks, we'll find out if those words hold true. But for tonight, Peter Clement, these are the bits of your life. Take it away, boys! When you're sitting listless in a dull and lifeless room, I've got just, just a job. When you need a friend to come and blow away the gloom, I've got 
Family entertainment, stick to the script. What the fuck? Is that it? No, 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 this ain't right. <laughs> That's all coming up on tonight's National Nightly News. David, I have a call for you. I'm just putting it through. All right, mate. Dave here. Listen, uh, I know you've only come in to clean up the place, but I've got a bit caught up, so uh, you're going to have to run the news tonight. Now, don't worry. It's not hard, and I'm going to stay on the phone and help you. First, I'm going to give you a quick tour of the broadcast room, so if you're not doing it already, look forwards towards all those screens. Right, look up at the top. That coloured bar is your audience. You want to keep the viewers going up and not down. Underneath that, you've got the screens. The one on the right is the broadcast screen. That's what the viewers are seeing at home. It's only a couple of seconds behind the master screen there in the middle. That's the one you control. Now, the four small screens on the left show the different signals coming from the studio, and you can choose between them using the numbered buttons on the vision mixer at the bottom left. Don't worry. I'll talk you through it, and you'll pick it up in no time. Now, have a look to your left. These plugs control everything in the studio. I've left them set up for you, so provided you haven't fiddled with them, all you have to do now is throw the master trip switch and we're in business. Once you've got the power on, face the front again. You can see on the broadcast screen that we're in the end titles for the show before us. Fortunately, they go on for fucking ages, so there's plenty of time for me to explain... Oh, right, okay, they're over, so we haven't got long now till the broadcast. Right, quickly, mate, look down under the desk. You can see a load of videotapes on the left. They're your adverts. Pick any three and load them into the machines on the right. When you've done that, look up to the front again. Four old ladies from East Grinchill. That's followed at 8 p.m. by the award-winning documentary series The Shape of Now. Which tonight is the history of the knee-length sock and its importance in the Great Black of 1871. Not one to miss. You should be getting a signal from the studio soon. With multiple award-winning movies. When you get the signal, select screen one with the vision mixer and we're ready to go. Oh, pour on a mayonnaise. Mm. You know CV makes me go out and pasture. Yeah, I thought it might increase our viewing figures. Every day. You offer me prawns every day. Ten seconds, everybody. That's how I show love. You're trying to kill me. And yet you persist. Oh. Going in five, four. Oh, but now, it's time to join Jeremy Donaldson. Good evening. I'm Jeremy Donaldson. Our main story is tonight. OK, we're all good. Next is going to be the throw of the news titles on screen two. There'll be a countdown, but I'll count you in as well. Just relax, mate. It's all gravy. Buys Honest Andy's totally independent and corners the flawed market. Top chat. Sports fans everywhere celebrate as popular footballer Johnny Hams leaves win Sports Personality of the Year. And a spoonful of sugar. Megan will be chatting with movie star Lawrence Blunderclatch about his new movie, The Medicated. And, of course, we'll be going live to advance headquarters 
like to hear what the leaders of this fledgling party have to say on their historic... Right. Button That's two, up on three, two, one. Now, lovely, mate. Next thing is to throw back to Jeremy with button one when that globe in the middle shrinks down and vanishes. Here it comes. Switch to screen one. Net lovely, mate. But first, the votes are in and it's a decisive win for advance. The landslide victory, with an astonishing 81% of the popular vote, is the biggest election win in living memory. Advance appealed to voters up and down the country with their bold promises of permanent change, but critics have accused him of a severe lack of actual policies and of being deliberately vague. The opposition parties have all conceded defeat to Advance's overwhelming mandate, but have yet to appear publicly. However, former Home Secretary... Right, Jeffrey it's going well. All you've got to do now is play the advert at the end of the segment. Make sure you don't play it too early or we'll all get fired. Now, the clock at the top is counting you down to the advert. When it reaches zero, press one of the three play ad buttons over there at the bottom right. I normally play the first one at the first break and so on, but you can play them in any order you want. I'll count you into it as well, but keep your eye on the clock. To hear the co-leader's acceptance speech. And three, two, one, advert. One minute back, everybody. Jeremy, I need you to fill after the ads. What? Why? Ranker Snatch is running late. Oh, I thought I'd ask him about the election. Personally, I wouldn't try to confuse him with any big words. Hmm, that's the same policy we use with you. I thought that was our little secret. This is the story of you. I remember anything I tell him. <laughs> I'm deeply uncomfortable with your burgeoning friendship. Mm, love you too. Yeah. I feel that you ended up filleting Satan for the soul. Wicked. We made it to the first ad break. You're doing great, mate. But this is where it starts getting a bit trickier. This next sequence is what we call a multicam sequence because you're going to be cutting between multiple cameras to keep things interesting. A lot of it's down to personal taste, but here's three good rules of thumb. One, try and keep the shot on whoever is doing the talking. Two, don't stay on the same shot for too long. Ten seconds at the most. So if you're on the person who's talking, try and throw in the odd reaction shot or pull out to the wide shot for a bit just to keep it interesting. Three, don't stay on reaction shots for too long. A couple of seconds is usually enough. Then the audience wants to see who's doing the talking, yeah? Stick to these rules and you'll be fine. It's not as complicated as it sounds. You've seen programs on television, haven't you? Make it look like those. Might as well get screen one selected now. No need to wait for the broadcast to start. Try and stay ahead, mate. We're coming back from the break. Quiet in the studio. Thank you so much. Ten seconds, everybody. Going in five, four, three. Welcome back to the National Nightly News. Later, we'll be hearing from shock election winners advance. But first, get ready to go to Megan on screen Megan four. Wolf is here with a star of both stage and screen. Megan? Thank you, Jeremy. Megan Wolf, culture correspondent. And today, I have a guest who starred in everything from Shakespeare. Right, to go to Blunderclatch on screen three when she says his name. Today by none other than Lawrence Blunderclatch. Thank you so much for coming on. Oh, my dear. I do hope you believe me when I tell you. That being with you here today is among Switch to two for the wide now. <laughs> May I say having you here with us is among ours. <laughs> right, now just try and stay on whoever's talking. The latest movie, which is called The Medicated. The Medicated, yes. <laughs> wow, what was that like? Well, as I said to Peter at The Wrap, that's Peter Jensen, the director. Do you know him? He's a wonderful Give us a look at Megan's reaction. Really Lovely. Now back to Thunder Twat. Terribly successful. I said to Peter... What a wild ride this has been. And you know what, Megan? I really meant that. Wow, that is fantastic. And am I right in saying that the character you play in this movie is quite an academic one? Absolutely right. A scientist. Was that a challenge at all? What exactly are you implying? But seriously, yes, <laughs> you're right. It was a complete departure from my last <laughs> starring role when I played Sergeant Brock Rockman in Bullet Man. You'll remember that that was the true story of one soldier's fight for a love that surpasses all others. A love, of course, 
for freedom. I think it's grossed over a billion dollars, but uh, honestly, who's counting? It's a role that saw you scoop two Best Actor awards, if I remember correctly. It's so sweet of you to mention it, but I really am not in it for the awards, although those three little statues do take pride of place on my mantelpiece. Uh, with all the others, I'm sure. So, if you're not doing it for the awards, mm. what is it then that drives you? Oh, that is a beautiful question, Megan, and not easy to answer. Like you, I'm afraid. Cut me, and I will bleed. And often, that's how it feels, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Bleeding, giving, suffering for one's audience. I suppose in the end, I do it for the difference it makes. I do it for the people that I inspire. The little people. But most of all, I think I do it for the positive change that I can bring about in the world. And today, of course, <laughs> we're in for some real change, it looks like, in the coming few months. What do you make of this historic election result? Oh, well, <laughs> well, now you're asking. Historic election result, indeed. Historic is the word. Well, it's Difficult, isn't it? Very difficult. But um, I think I've always been quite clear that when it comes to politics, that one should always strive to not fuck things up. Shit, he swore. Oh, oh well, don't worry, he won't do it again. Sorry, I said fuck. Shit, he did it again. OK, don't panic. I'll explain how to deal with swearing at the break. Medicated, which opens next week. Right, they swapped the shot of Jeremy on screen one for a VT of the movie clip. You'll get a countdown on the screen, but I'll just let Megan cue you in. My character, Dr Lance Hemlock, is faced with a decision that could affect humanity's very survival. Wow, exciting stuff. Let's take a look. She's really losing it in the studio. I'd love to hear what he's saying, but we can't find out now. We'll go to the Rush's room together once the broadcast's over. I don't understand it. It's not your fault. You think I don't know that? No one has been mustn't. Dr. Lance to you, Miss Flanagan. I did it for you, baby. All for you. Dr. Hemlock. We're gonna change the world, do you remember? If only I listened to you. Dr. Hemlock. You told me, but I didn't listen. Doctor. I'm drowning, Lance, you said. You need to see this. No, it's all too late. Look at this! Right. The sterility. This formula. This formula. This, this is the key. We could stop it all. Yes, yes, we could stop it all. We have to ask ourselves. At the end of the clip, you'll want to play another ad. Remember to use the clock at the top to count you in. Set to start censoring. 
Like I say, it takes a little practice, but I'll try and help you through it, and soon we'll have you bleeping like a pro. Remember, button lights up, count one, two, and hold it down. Remember to select screen one now that you've got the feed. Don't wait for the broadcast to go live. That's too late. You can use the number buttons on your keyboard. One to four. Running the country. Seriously, we've had worse. Five, four, three. Welcome back. And I'm told we can now go live to advance headquarters where the two leaders, Peter Clement and Julia Salisbury, are about to make their acceptance address. Oh shit, he's pissed. Shall I start? Go for it, Pat. <laughs> okay, well, uh, thank you all for coming and, well, where do I start? What a day. They said we couldn't do it. They certainly did. They used every dirty, low-down, lying, southern bastard trick they had against us. But you, the people, nice. you saw right through their shite. I'm sorry about the language there. Sorry about that. I've had a couple of celebratory pints. It makes me coarser than a grown is funny. Memorably put. Nailed it. But to be honest, who can blame Peter for celebrating? Throughout the campaign, you've heard us say that Advance are not a political party. A party's what you have when things are going well. When the country is suffering, you don't need a party. You need a team. A team that can change things. But today is day one of a new future. A better, fairer future. So perhaps we should all be celebrating. Except for the rich. For them, the party's over. They shouldn't be celebrating. They should be putting their shitty <laughs> pants on and opening their dusty checkbooks. Again, nice. colourfully put, but not inaccurate. <laughs> Before we came out here to address the nation, we used our executive powers to pass the Assets and Wealth Act. Working with the tax office, we have produced a definitive list of every person in the country with wealth into the millions. You know the sort. Of, probably you, you rather you don't. Because the likes of you and me are not welcome in their gated communities. Tomorrow, we will be introducing a sweeping reform of the tax system in this country. No more hiding wealth offshore, no more trust funds or creative accounting. A simpler, fairer, unavoidable set of tax laws. So, all you bastard public school snobs have got nowhere to hide. And earlier today, we revoked your passports. You want them back. You want to leave like you threatened before the election. That's fine. But first, you're going to pay up. You're going to pay back. Advance are going to turn this country from a nation of warring individuals into a team. To properly fund health and education. To raise the living standards of us all. The pundits said we'd have to raise billions but you'll see when we've reclaimed what's ours, that's absolute ferret shite. So to you posh twats. The people who pay you a pittance to serve them drinks in their no. private clubs. The, the people whose children you raise. So they've got time to get even fucking richer. Advance have this to say to you. Nice. It ends today. We are coming for your sports cars and your mansions and your vineyards. It ends today. We will put the wealth of this country back where it should have always been. In the hands of the people who created it. It ends today. Yes, it ends today. And tomorrow, we'll start making it fair again. Just like we promised we would. And until then, ladies and gents, I suggest we all get pissed. <laughs> I can't argue with that. <laughs> Thank you for your time. <laughs> Well, an interesting acceptance speech there from the leaders of Advance, and our apologies for the fruity language. Hopefully, we got that bleeped out for you in time. If not, someone's going to be in trouble. So, as the country braces itself for new government, that's all from us this evening at the National Nightly News. We'll be back tomorrow with full coverage of the first day under Advance. I'm Jeremy Donaldson. Have a peaceful night. Right, looks like you've got it now. Good Thanks for the help, mate. I've got to go. Ferry's about to leave. Probably won't be coming back. Job's yours, hey. mate. Good luck. Same old boring politics, then. Is this some weird fever dream? Am I dying now or something? You should be so lucky. 
I'll see you tomorrow night. Not going for a drink? Nope, got a date. Lucky you. Try not to get murdered. Neil Steele's full on Neil. You've got people coming over at Christmas. You've got an aunt. She's going to leave a stain on the sofa. You don't want to sit on this white sofa. She's going to have to sit on the dark sofa. This is a deal with Neil Appeal. You want to throw? Throw your money at us. We'll give you a leather sofa for a price that is just crazy. If you've got lightning striking, then strike whilst the lightning is hot. You've got a disused sofa. We don't care if it's smelly, dug in front of your telly, full of welly. We'll take that shit away. Don't make a meal out of it. Make a deal out of it. We got a big ass deal on a big ass chair. We've got white chairs, blue chairs, stools, inflatable chairs. This is a crazy deal with meal appeal. You don't want no lame ass chair. You want a great chair. We had a man come down the other day and he brought in his young daughter and he wanted her to have the best chair. We got those chairs, we got more of those chairs. We got tall chairs, chairs on wheels, wheelchairs. We got chairs for twins, chairs made out of steel, chairs that are steel and a deal. We got those chairs. You want crazy? We got crazy. Crazy deals got crazy deals. You want a toilet? We can do you a toilet. We can do you a toilet next to a chair. We can do you a chair next to a toilet. Hell, we can even do you a toilet chair. Do you come on down? You bring your ass. We got it. You want it. You want it. We've got it. You want it. You pay us. You want it. We've got it. You want it. You want it. We've got it. You pay us. When the program's finished, you'll get a broadcast report. It's three pages. This first page shows you how well the broadcast went. Each sequence and an overall grade. Remember, grades mean bonuses and they keep the boss happy. If you want to know more about how it went, select more info. If not, select continue to move to the next page. Right, this is an optional section for when you really want to understand what happened during the show. You've got graph there showing you what the audience did. They're a fickle fucking bunch. And of course, you can really drill into the details if you want to get better at making TV. I never came here, never once. Right, this is the important page. It tells you how much you're going to get paid and how much wealth you have overall. That bollocks at the bottom shows you the financial state of our main advertisers. But you don't own any fucking shares, you're a cleaner for God's sake, so why would you care? This is the last page and it tells you the state of the world, tells you how well the government's doing, and down the bottom there, this one's important, tells you what Channel One currently thinks of you. In other words, what the boss thinks. Alright mate, welcome to the archive. This is where you can have a quick look back at what you've done and how it looked to the public. There's three sections, broadcast, rushes and adverts. Let's start with broadcast, click on it now. Over on the left, that's all the broadcasts that you've done. Click on any one of them and hit load tape. Once it's finished loading, you can use the rewind and the fast forward at the bottom there to help you get to the bit you want to see. In a few moments, we'll be going live to tonight's national nightly news. But before that, let's take a look at what's coming up later on. Right, click on rushes and let's have a look at those. Right, this is the rushes room. It's pretty simple. The four screens you can see, they're going to show you the four signals you got from the studio during the actual broadcast. The difference is you can mute any combination of them so you can have a listen to the stuff you weren't allowed to show. Select the broadcast and give it a go. When you're done listening to the backstage secrets, hit back. I'm Those controversial columnists and speakers. And they're going to take your poor sweet grandma, and you're never going to see those dribbling dentures again, oh grandma! Look at their faces! That's not what cows look like! You call it the stock market. I call it the stuck market. Because it's just another poll they've stuck up our collective- I don't care if he was once your nephew, Cameron! He's standing in the way of the trap!
You can see they finally got the old headline system up and working again. And the vision meets us already in headline mode because headlines always come at the start. It's really simple, mate. These two buttons at the bottom of the vision mixer, you can see they now have A and B on them. And they're to help you pick image A on the left bottom screen here or image B on the right bottom screen here. It's really simple. This little clock here will count down the number of seconds you have to make your decision. Now you're in auto headline mode, so if you don't bother to pick a photo before that clock runs out, the machine's just going to pick one at random for you. I just want to say one more thing, mate. The pictures you choose to show of these people, well, that's how the public is going to perceive them, and that's going to affect their lives. So like with the adverts, choose carefully. And we're off. Good luck, mate. If I get no, to you know, be back in the next break. Yeah, I'm coming, darling. Snuggle hugs. That's the bastard. Yeah, I wouldn't get one of those. My friend Janet says theirs gets really hot. Is this Janet who thinks dogs have their own secret language? Yeah, the one that mistrusts the moon. Ten seconds, everybody. Not the best source of consumer advice, then. Don't blame me when it explodes. Going in five, four, three. Good evening, I'm Jeremy Dalton. Our main headlines tonight. Destination unknown? At the end of Advance's first full week in office, we ask exactly who's leading this charge. Tonight, I'll be discussing what the new future might hold with a leading economist and radical free thinker. With the Assets and Wealth Act on the brink of raising living standards for the vast majority of the country, I'll be asking my guess if we're on the way to a new future. Out with the old, Remington Swiss have appointed Sophia Remington as their new CEO. The following photo, taken from our archive, gives us a sense of this influential young firebrand who, at the tender age of 23, becomes the youngest female CEO in history. Sophia Remington has always impressed. She was top of her class at university and graduated with the highest honours, immediately being asked back to lecture. The markets have responded favourably to Sophia's appointment, with stocks rising 30 points in light of the announcement. In her first press conference this afternoon, Sophia announced a children's toy named Mr. Snugglehugs. Sophia promises it will be all the rage this Christmas, but concerns have been raised about the product's safety. Making a splash. Intrepid scientist Dr. David Wong and marine biologist Ingrid Swarsborg and Horgensford have today set off to explore Dante's taint. The recently discovered cave system was previously thought unreachable, but thanks to a new breakthrough in underwater flower technology, the pair hope to successfully reach the imposing central cavern and the undiscovered plant species it contains. This is, of course, only the latest in a series of successful expeditions for this unlikely pairing. In a joint statement about the dangers their team might face, the pair stated, we will face the plentiful challenges together like we always have. Playing the field, rumors abound as sporting legend Johnny Hamsleeves is snapped leaving Bush, one of the capital's hottest clubs. 
The footballer was caught while out celebrating being named Sports Personality of the Year last week, as reported by this very programme. And judging from the angle and velocity of that spray, it looks like Johnny may have been celebrating a little bit too much. I certainly wouldn't want to be his dry cleaner. And grievous bodily charm. With advance promising a radical new position on crime, how afraid should we actually be? I'll be going live around the country to talk with people who've seen the criminal justice system from every perspective. With more and more people saying they're scared to walk the streets alone at night, could this be exactly the right time for Advance's new approach? All that, a mega move for the group of young actors who are already experiencing the positive side of the new Assets and Wealth Act firsthand. They'll be talking and performing later. That's all coming up on tonight's National Nightly News. In the wake of the government's swift enactment of the Assets and Wealth Act, we're talking about Advance's first week in office and what the new future holds. Joining me are Katie Brightman, a leading economist, and Alan James, author of Alan James is Right, The Free Man's Guide to Waking Up. Alan, the government certainly haven't dragged their heels on delivering some of the legislation they promised, but what does the Wealth Act mean for us? Nothing, Jeremy. We're still vassal slaves, we're just in prettier cages. A confident dismissal there. Katie Brightman, do you agree? I'm afraid I don't, no. I think that Advance have realised that the current economic system of unlimited, unending growth is untenable, so they're changing things up. There I agree with you. They're moving to the next steps in the grand plan. Grand plan, Alan? It's all in my book. Alan James is right, Jeremy. We're to become the great herd, ignorant, sterile and short-lived. That's what they want. Or perhaps Advance have just realised that if we carry on the way we are, we will destroy ourselves and this planet in a mad orgy of consumption, if you'll excuse the colourful metaphor. <laughs> yes, orgy is the right word. Only it'll be the overlords having an orgy on our poor broken backs. It's all in my book. Alan James is... Shamelessly self-promoting? Katie, how do you think the rest of the world will respond to this new approach? I think they're watching carefully. Advance are the most disruptive threat that the world powers have faced since the last great war. Yes, Katie's right. War is inevitable. Thank you, but that isn't what And this I'm... will not be a war like we've ever seen before. We're talking millions of deaths. We're talking high-tech weapons that can level entire cities. We're talking... Out of the wrong orifices? Mock me all you like, Jeremy. But when they murder your parents and they poison your food and they take you away to their camps for hypno-brainwashing, who will be laughing then? That might be a great way to sell books, Alan, but you know full well that isn't going to happen in a democracy. Democracy is dead. Yes, advance are radical, and change is always frightening, but the truth is that the Wealth and Assets Act has made more than 90% of the population wealthier and is on target to produce a permanent end to poverty. Bollocks! What this young lady doesn't understand, Jeremy, is that these are the same people. Maybe they've rebranded, but it's all a little circus act to keep us from seeing the tyrant behind the curtain. That's where you're wrong, Alan. For a start, they've mobilised the youth vote like we've never seen before. You say mobilise, I call it grooming. The grooming of an entire generation to walk happily into eternal bondage. They're like psychic paedophiles. But based on the facts, Katie, what are your predictions? The Assets and Wealth Act is only the first step. Advance now have a historic budgetary surplus, and as well as properly funding our public services, they're already un they're already funneling unprecedented amounts into scientific research and the arts. Or, as I call them in my book, Franken Science and OP Arts. Like opiates, see? Can we get back to the issue at hand, please, Alan? This is the issue. It's all coming from the water, the chemicals. They're pumping it full of belief juice. Don't get me wrong. I want to see these changes, but only if they're sustainable. If Advance lose their power after spending half of our GDP on dismantling infrastructure, that could be catastrophic. The catastrophe is that they're succeeding. They've got us sat here talking about their puppet show. <laughs> all right, we're running out of time. Quickly, Alan, um, what does the future look like to you? A bleak space where we've all been figuratively sodomised into submission. Oh, of course. Katie? We might be on the eve of a brave new world. God knows we need some change, but we need to be cautious. Let's walk forwards with our eyes open. Two very different visions of the future there. 
Alan James, Katie Brightman, thank you for joining me. When we come back, I'll be investigating law and order before Meghan meets some beneficiaries of the Assets and Wealth Act. That's all coming up tonight on the National Nightly News. One minute back. You know, I think they might do some good. I hope so too, Jeremy. How much are you being paid by them then? Oh, shut the fuck up, Alan. I've never heard so much shit in my life. <laughs> well, we'll see who's full of shit, won't we? Alan, <laughs> I can explain it to you, but unfortunately, I can't understand it for you. <laughs> there must be something well, in I don't know what she meant by that. I don't want to upset you, but you should weep for the world. <laughs> Ten seconds, everybody. Is Widow JD scared of the big bad culture with water? If that sticks, I'll destroy you. Five, four, three. Welcome back. In our second segment, we're going to be taking a deep dive into the state of law and order in our country. Advance have already tasked what they are calling a solutions team to move this serious social problem to the top of the list. Tonight, we go behind the headlines to meet the people who live with the criminal justice system every day of their lives. First up, we have Gregory Judge, a lawyer who sees the problems close up on the front line. Can you hear me, Gregory? Yes, I've got you, Jeremy. Thanks for having me. What's it like on the front line of the hard face of the cold hand of justice? Uh, well, as you can imagine, Jeremy, we are massively understaffed in this country. Uh, we're working every hour we can just to try and cope with the caseloads on our desks. Which must affect the quality of support you can offer. Well, we can barely keep up with demand, Jeremy. Uh, there just simply isn't enough being done at a systemic level to relieve the problem. Greg. We need more support from ministers. We... Uh, what are you doing? We need change at a structural level, I'm Jeremy. I'm leaving, Greg. Not a good time, darling. It never is, is it? I'll be at my mother's. Just hang on. The problem isn't a local one, Jeremy. It's nationwide. Just give me five minutes. I'm talking to Jeremy Donaldson. Oh, have you mentioned your affairs? No. Well, it, uh, the affairs of the Justice Department that we should be concerned about Hello, Mr. Donaldson. Hello, Mrs. Judge. We need, uh, we need legislation to relieve the pressure on our public Sorry servants. to interrupt the news, Mr. Donaldson. Can I have a moment to tell my husband I'm leaving him? Yes, I uh, totally understand. Quite the picture of a burdened legal sector there. Gregory Judge, thank you for joining us. Next, I'm joined by Police Chief Constable Bob Peel, a man with a very different perspective on our nation's crime. Do you think there's a problem with the system, Bob? I'm sure we all do, Jeremy. I'm sure we all long for a return to the days when you could safely walk the streets of your community at night, looking in through windows and generally enjoying your neighbours without the risk of being terrorised by some thug with a knife. Uh, or kosh. So you feel the streets simply aren't safe anymore? Where have we gone wrong, Bob? Well, that's not a simple question, Jeremy, but I think it all comes down to moral decay. We've diluted our culture and lost touch with what it means to be a citizen of this once great country. Also, as the vicar noted in Sunday's sermon, we probably shouldn't have banned hanging. And to what do you attribute this moral decay? Foreigners, gays and gypsies mainly. It's all in the Bible. Look, Leviticus clearly states that... Oh, bugger, hang on a moment. Jeremy, a bloody gimp's escaped. <laughs> Delia? Delia, could you give me a little help, please, dear? Uh, as I was saying, Jesus didn't like immigrants much, did he? And just to be clear, you think it's the immigrants who are responsible for the moral oh, yes. decay? Absolutely, Jeremy. Oh, back in your box, Clive. Back in your box. Delia, I really could use a little help with this. Oh, sorry, darling. I was spaying the badgers. Yes, yes. I'm talking to Jeremy Donaldson. Clive, could you put him back oh. in the box? Oh, Clive, you know it's Wednesday. Back you go. Back in your gift space. And Off you go. whose responsibility is it to make a change, Bob? Well, it is certainly not the responsibility of the decent, good, white people darling, of this... Darling, where's the padlock? Oh, hold on just a moment. Oh, Clive, this simply won't do. Naughty, naughty, naughty boy. Mummy said... Clive, I am not having this again. Mummy said get back in your kids' face. No, naughty, naughty, naughty boy. Get 
Dirty, you beast cut! You As I was saying, Jeremy, moral decay. Sit. Crime sit. is the responsibility sit. of the criminal, sit. no one else. Look, everyone has a sob no. story, but we don't all end up as barbarians, do we? Look, when our daughter Alice comes home with an A minus, does she go on a killing spree? No, she takes three of her pills and hides under the stairs like a normal child. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> Bob Peel there, really locking down the police's position on morality for us. And finally tonight, hopefully uninterrupted, it's time to get to the heart of the matter. Tony Dawson has recently been released from prison after serving three years for aggravated assault, burglary and menacing a swan. He's agreed to talk to us today, which is also, I believe, his birthday. Many happy returns, Tony. Cheers, Jez. Call me Titwank, Tony. Everybody else does. No, I'm not going to be doing that. Can you tell us what it's like in prison, Tony? Titwank, Tony. Well, prison's a mixed bag. The structure's quite nice, but it's a constant battle against institutionalisation, as you can imagine. And obviously, titwanks are quite hard to come by. I'm picking up that you're not alone there, Tony. Titwank, Tony. Hey! Yeah, sorry, my friends are throwing me a surprise party. Good bunch of lads. OK, well, we're trying that you get back to that party as soon as possible. First, let me ask you this. Do you feel that your time spent in prison helped to rehabilitate you in any way, Tony? Tit wank Tony! Whee! I don't think it's as easy as that, Jez. Soapen! Yeah, I think asking that is an oversimplification. It sounds like it's getting quite busy there, Tony, but uh, let's try and soldier on. Since leaving custody, have you been able to find a new job? Yeah, all the boys are here. It's Big Chris. Oi, oi. Little Chris. Oi, oi. And Vampire Chris. <laughs> this one's, yeah? Yep. One sec, love. Tit Wank Tony's on the news. Rehabilitation's difficult with the current system, Jez. It's just not set up for it, you know? It's inherently unjust. Open! So, do you feel tempted to... I'm sorry, who's this guy? Open! You are joking. Chrissy Freebollock's <laughs> only got Mr Fancy, oh. Tit Not now, fellas, I'm on the news. It's so... <laughs> It seems like we've caught you at a bad time. The little boy. Oh, I can't really hear you, mate. It's getting a bit busy here. Jesus. Yes, we uh, seem to be losing the signal here, no Tony. No fucking way, lad. <laughs> Believe that. Well, we're just trying to get that signal back. I think we. <laughs> yes, Tony. Tony, I mean, we're literally for two seconds. Hey! How has this happened, Tony? Can you hear me? Well, we seem to have lost our train of thought there a little. Hopefully you, the viewer at home, have managed to glean a broader understanding of the serious and complex issues around law and order. After the break, Megan will be live with some plucky young thespians. Don't go away. We'll be back after these messages. One minute back, everybody. That works. Um, I ain't got long and I'm quite drunk. It's been a great night. In this next section, there's a bit of music. If you edit in time with the music, you can see the result on the vision mixer, and the public will love that. Don't worry if you don't know, you won't get punished for it or nothing. Just try and stay in the groove. Also, one last tip when the music starts, turn down the broadcast volume. Right, enjoy the music bit. God, I love music. God, I'm so pissed. I think I'm going to throw up in a bit. With the go getters you can be sure that your children will be well equipped in the march towards progress. After all, there's nothing better than the Ten seconds, forward. everybody. The advanced go getters We're going to open on Megan. Camera two. Going together. in five, four, three. Welcome to Black, I'm Megan Wolfe, and on tonight's Culture Spot, I'll be chatting with one of the first beneficiaries of the Assets and Wealth Act, a team of inspiring young people from Scritchford Sixth Form College, who today received a grant from Advance to take their play, Hey, Friendship, on a tour of local secondary schools. Welcome to you all. Well, let's start with you two, Harriet and Charlotte Winstanley-Hamilton. Girls, you must be thrilled. We are, Megan. We're overwhelmed, to be honest. <laughs> and I believe you two are sisters, is that right? Yes, Charlotte's my oldest. I'm the older, more popular one. <laughs> Only joking. Harriet and Trey were really the ones who came up with the whole idea. 
<laughs> so Harry and I were shooting the breeze in the cafeteria and I said, hey, let's actually do something. So I went to look for a drama teacher. Uh, but she'd been laid off due to budget cuts. Fortunately, I directed a pantomime when I was at university, so, so I knew the ropes as it were. Oh, right, yes, but you're the maths teacher, aren't you? Uh, yes, that's me, Jeff Algebra, maths teacher. <laughs> maths is really important. Oh, thanks, Steve. <laughs> maths is really important. Yeah, thanks, Steve. As is theatre. It's one of the oldest art forms in history, Aristotle. Made. I just think that when we travel around all these problem schools and the poor kids see us, they say, hey, I really want to be like those attractive kids. And that's a very beautiful and powerful thing. We touch our audiences and they touch us right back. I suppose with a surname like Algebra, there was really only one choice of career for me. <laughs> <laughs> My wife, Angela, and I. We often laugh about it. <laughs> Angela Algebra. Yes. <laughs> we just want to bring a bit of song and joy into people's lives. And teach people about the difficult issues. The issues in the play are what really matter. And I think you're going to be showing us an extract from this play, aren't you? Yeah. That's right. To put into context, I play a young first year who's having some troubles at school. Her character doesn't actually have a name, yeah, because in a way she's like, all, All of us. us. It's like a metaphor. Maybe she's you at home, or like, maybe she's you, Megan. Maths is really important. Yeah, thanks, Steve. <laughs> Put it in, coach. <laughs> yes, thanks, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, I'm going to have a little chat with your teacher while you run off and get ready. I can't wait to see it. <laughs> That's it, that way. <clears throat> so, Jeff, when did you first hear about the grants? Uh, two days ago. A letter from Advance arrived at the school. Now, the headmaster thought it was all a prank, but his secretary retrieved it from his bin and brought it to me. Wow, how did you react? I also <laughs> threw it in the bin. But then Harriet and Trey rescued it and uh, they, they, they rang the number at the bottom of the page and next thing you know, we're on tour. Wow. Well, I think we can all guess which way you'll be voting from now on. Do you know what? It's funny because Angela and I don't usually vote. We, we're not very political. I'm a mathematician, of course, and she's a paraplegic mainly, but we did used to watch that Peter Clements DIY show back in the day. And so we thought, uh, why not? Let's have a go with this old democracy thing. OK. And here we bally well are. <laughs> Good stuff. Fucking brilliant. <laughs> so let's have a look at a short section of Hey, Friendship. Friendship. Dear Diary. I'm not sure I can take another day at this school. Another day of tears. 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 Another day of fears. 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 But still I walk the corridors alone. 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 Dreading what might be around every corner. What's around the corner? What's around the corner? What's around the corner? Oh, hi, Gary. Oh, heavens no! It's Gary the Fist! Gary the Fist! Uh, going somewhere, little first year? Great. I've been looking for some poor victim to bully all morning. But will this make me feel better about my violent father? Violent father. Excuse me, I'm late for maths. It's my favourite subject. And so important. Um, maths is for losers. What? Maths is for losers. My arm's stuck, coach. Keep going, for fuck's sake! <laughs> right, uh, uh, maths is for losers. Now, give me your lunch money. Double lunch for me today, but why am I only truly happy when I'm eating? Not today, Gary the Fist. What do you mean, not today? Who are you? Oh, my arm's free, coach. Brilliant, keep going! <laughs> right, uh, uh, who are you to stand up to me? I, Gary the Fist. And you're just a sad little girl with two gay dads who's all alone. That's where you're wrong, Gary the Fist. These are my two new friends. Vanessa is captain of the netball team. Yeah. And Blake owns a motorbike. Yeah. But, but, I can't fight all three of you. And I don't have any friends of my own. Take a look at me Take a little look at my face I can't 
Life's pretty hard on a council estate. 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 It's so damn hard on a council estate. Life can be cheeky. Yeah, yeah. Well, thankfully that's all we have time for tonight on the National Nightly News. Join us tomorrow night for all the headlines from across the country. My name's Jeremy Donaldson. Have a peaceful night. And we're out. Oh, that was brilliant! <laughs> what the literal fuck was that? I believe that was art. I believe I've got a 14-inch cock, but it doesn't make it so. I have a similar belief about an adequate paycheck. Friendship! Oh, oh, someone please get these twats out of my studio.
Thanks, Winston. It's Bozeman here, your boss. It's come to my attention that you've replaced Dave in the control room, and your performance so far has been mostly adequate. However, I'll need to observe myself to check you're up to snuff, and to that end, you'll now be mixing an old recorded broadcast to ensure you can do the job to my satisfaction. Don't worry. Other than the odd tear and jump in the footage due to age, it shouldn't require you to deal with anything new. Though do keep an eye on the sensor. They had stricter sensibilities in those days. And of course, don't forget to load the adverts. Bozeman out. One certainly wouldn't wish to overlook that. At nine o'clock, we present existential musings as the right Reverend David Atkinson and lady scientist Dr. Edith Blimey debate the existence of an afterlife in... A discussion program with the right reverend David This is an absolute Atkinson, nightmare. Uh, Cameras are set. Who's and going to tell Graham? I don't know. PM, it's Could time we even continue? Well, you'll have to think of something and go live in ten seconds. Uh, all right. To go to I'll keep looking for someone. I guess we'll just have to wing it until then. Can you count us in? Oh, sure. Going live in five, four, three, two, one. Live from the capital, it's the St Fanny's Hospital's TV fundraiser for dying children. And please welcome your host, it's the Dreamboat, Graham Bannon! Hello, it only is! Hello, it's Mr Bannon! Got one of them, got one of them, good night! If you won't be my lady, lady, then at least have my babies, babies. No, don't give me a maybe, maybe, no. I know what women are like. You're not on the beat, crazy cat. Do you know what? I'm sorry, I, 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 I know I'm supposed to be... Sorry, stop the music, stop the music. I mean, I, 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 yeah, I know, I know I'm supposed to be starting the show, but I can't help but notice... It. I mean, where's the audience? I mean, who are you? I mean, this is an absolute nightmare, isn't it, really? I mean, oh, we are live. Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the first annual St Fanny's Hospital's TV fundraiser for dying children. I'm your host, Graham Bannon, and it is an absolute pleasure to be here. We are here tonight, as we may be aware, for one very important cause, and that is, of course, little Sally Button. Little Sally Button has a life-threatening condition, and she will die tonight, unless we can raise enough funds to cure her of her studio, studio hypo... Um, studio, I should learn that. Su su studio hypo uh, poo 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 poo. I don't know how to say that word, but what I do know is it's a long word and a bad disease. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to raise 20 grand tonight and we can't do it without your help. And how can I help you screaming at home? Well, don't scream and I'll tell you. We're taking donations starting right now. But let's beat feet and head over to the blowers. Uh, the phones, not the girls. <laughs> Hello, hello, ladies. Good evening, Graham. Tell you something, ladies. Uh, those are some classy <laughs> chassis, if you don't mind me saying so. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, so, so, girls, um, would one of you kitty cats please let the viewers at home know exactly why you're here this evening? Yes, sir. Uh, us kitty cats will be taking calls from across the country to raise money for this little girl. If you would like to donate, no matter how large or small, please ring now. I'll tell you, I'll be giving you a ring later. An engagement ring if you play your cards right. Now that was a zinger. If I do a, if I do a zing, I play the sound. Yeah, that's it. I'll check in with you later. It's time to have a look at how much money we're starting off with tonight. Using state-of-the-art technology that we can track up to the second exactly how much money has been raised from your donations. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, mm -hmm. look, let's have a look at how much we're starting off with tonight. OK, looks like we're not starting off with any money tonight. It's a bit strange. I'm surprised they didn't put something in, just to show, really. But um, perhaps it's a little unclear of how you donate still. Um, how about I cut the gas and show you what's what, Daddy-O's? Uh, give me the thing. OK, so I'll pretend to be you at home. This is role play. You really can do this in real life from your sofa or couch. It's ringing. So, uh... Hello, 
who am I speaking to, please? Hello, you're speaking to Barbara at the phone desk. Hello, Barbara at the phone desk. You have a beautiful voice. OK. Uh, I'd like to donate your tenner, please. I'm finding it hard to hear you. Your phone doesn't actually work. You're going to have to be louder. Uh, I'd like to donate a tenner, please. Thank you, sir. What a generous donation. We you ask who's calling? You, you don't have to do that, do you? You know, you know who's calling, don't you? It's Graham Bannon. And how do you spell Bannon? Don't say that. People would know how to say my name. There we go. And so we, if, I, if I'm correct, there should be 10 on it now. Look at that. Technology at its finest. 10 on it now. So only 19,990 remaining, which should be a Bannon breeze. That was a zinger. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, let's have a rundown of the jam-packed acts we have lined up for you on this jam-packed lineup on this jam-packed evening. Who wrote that? Too many things packed in jam. Starting off tonight, we have the incredible Raj and Rishik. Following that, we have an amazing acrobat who will do a, jumps all over the stage and stuff. And then finally, we'll have the lovely legs contest to end Act One, which I'm rather looking forward to myself, ladies. Then, starting Act Two, we're going to have a magician who will do all magic and that. Then we're going to have a fire-breathing man who will be breathing fire. And then ending Act Two, we're going to have a daredevil who will dive into a bucket of water. All right. Then going into Act Three, we're going to have the unicyclist act. Then following that, the strongest man in the world, the strong man. And then finally, the grand finale. Now, for the grand finale, we asked little Sally Button what she wanted more than anything else in the world. And she had a very simple reply. I'd like a dancing chimpanzee, please, Graham. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, we have managed to source a dancing chimpanzee for the finale of this show. How does that sound? Oh, there's no one here, is there? OK, so without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's introduce our first act of the evening. He's come all the way from <laughs> this event. And let's just say he might have brought a little friend along with him. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, please, welcome to the stage is the incredible Raj and Rishik. <laughs> As I said, it's, uh, it is Raj and Rishik <laughs> to the stage. I mean, this is a nightmare. I mean, what is going on? I mean, is there, this, isn't, this isn't working, is it? I mean, is there anyone around here who knows that you? Come here, come here, come here, come here. What is going on? Do you know what I'm saying at all? Why is he here? You, you come here, come here, come here. This is unbelievable. Hello, Mr. Bannon. Hello, yes, come here. Are you the, are you the producer, are you? No, I, I, I'm nobody, me. I, I just help the fellas unload the cameras. Right, from fantastic, the great story. Um, so, uh, do you know where the producer is? Ah, well, that's the problem. Get on with it, come on. With... Well, it, it turns out, you know, the roads around the capital are shut down. Cause yeah, it... yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it turns out uh, the producer, the director, most of the acts and also all of the audience are on the same bus heading oh. in and now they're stuck somewhere near Jamstable. Are you seriously telling me there's no one else around here who can sort this mess out? He's pretty good at organising. No, well, no, obviously not. That's not going to work, is it? Look at you. You're the producer now. Well done, that's great. Big promotion for you. Now, what you need to do is go away and find me a version of all the acts I've just promised the people at home. That, that's not really my thing, Governor. Well, do you know what? It is your thing now, Governor. Right? Or a child drops down dead. So off you go. Go do that. Quick, smart. All right. Uh, you can count on me. OK, very good. Go away! Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to introduce the first act of the evening. He's come all the way... <laughs> I've read that. Don't repeat the same stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, it's... They're not here, are they? No, they are here. Well, why didn't they come out the first... Ladies and gentlemen, it's Raj and Rishik. Hello everyone, my name is Raj and you might be asking where is Rishik? Uh, so here he is. Uh, what's your name? Rishik? And what do you do? I am working in banking. <laughs> That's interesting. No it isn't. Okay, you have anything else to say? No? Thank you for your honesty. <laughs> have, have you finished? 
Am I finished? Yes, yes, I'm finished. OK, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Raj and Rishik, play the sound for applause. We don't have anyone here. <laughs> OK. Well, fan f fantastic, I think. Uh, so, well done, Raj. Um, so, I know a little birdie told me you travelled in all the way from <laughs> just for this event. No, we cycled here. Oh. Uh, Rishik was cycling and I was sitting in the basket. Oh, right. Oh, yeah, now they laugh. Yeah, now they laugh. Um, uh, great joke, great joke. Um, so, uh, uh, is he a good cyclist, <laughs> is he, Rishik? Why are you asking me? You can ask him. I'll ask him. Okay, that's setting something up. Okay, uh, uh, Rishik, are you a good cyclist, mate? Why are you talking to him? He's only a puppet. Don't set a joke up with that if you're not going to follow it through. That ruins it, doesn't it? You farted. <laughs> Graham farted. I didn't fart! I didn't fart! He made the sound out of his mouth. He made the... Stop doing that! OK? Yes, you should be disappointed. Get off the stage. What a load of crap! We've had two... I didn't fart! No. Acrobat's not here. Great! Well, I, uh, I've got an alternative. OK. His name's James. Sounds good. He's not an acrobat. Sounds good to me. Bring him on. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what's going to happen now, but please welcome to the stage. It's the incredible. It is James. Hello. Hello. Oh. I, I was just walking past the theatre when that guy came up to me and said, hello, we've got the perfect job for you. All you have to do is stand on stage, we'll pay you. It's something like that. Tell you what, I'll level with you here, James. We were expecting an acrobatic act now. Oh, right. Damn. Yes, 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 damn indeed, damn indeed. Um, uh, tell me, James, can you do acrobatics by any chance? No, I, I can't, no. I haven't since school. That'd be fine. You remember a lot from school. Ladies and gentlemen, for your viewing pleasure, this acrobat James will now perform for you a series of double backflips. There's no way I can do that. Oh, well, I'll do some cartwheels. Uh, I, I'm not going to do any cartwheels. But here's a job for you instead. Sweeping up the corpse of a dead girl. Start the music, please. Come on. And that's the act. Absolutely marvellous. Sort this out. Where is it? Sort that out. Um, absolutely marvellous. Well done there. I'm sure we'll be seeing a lot more of James in the future. Good job there. Well done. You really... That really worked out well. Worked out a treat. Yes, get off the stage. We've had two absolutely marvellous acts this evening, so I think it's time to have a look at what impact that's made on the old fundraiser. So, drum roll, please. OK, looks like we still haven't made any money at all. That's a bit surprising. Um, perhaps I'll check in with the bombshells to find out exactly what's going... What are you doing there? Get out! Sling your rook! Go on, go! You're upsetting the girls. Ladies. Well, I was expecting a little more money in the old pot by now, ladies. Uh, have the callers not been particularly generous so far? We haven't had any callers so far. Are you serious? How dare you? How dare you? A child is quite literally dying somewhere out there, and you're too lazy to get up off your asses, go over to those phones we have, turn the dials, and pledge money to save her life. You greedy bastards. Sorry, Graham. Just found out the phone lines haven't been connected yet. All right. Yeah, Young forgot to do it. Who's Young? Oh, that idea, right. Go on, Young. Got just a job for you. I'll give him an hand. I don't think he knows what he's doing. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I can offer only my greatest apologies. My outburst just now was directed at you, when it should, of course, have been directed at Young. Please accept those apologies. Now it's time for the Lovely Legs Contest. What better way to end tonight's programme, the first part of tonight's programme, than with a display of beauty and talent? Why do you want 
to talk to him if you ask him. So for your viewing pleasure, these 10 out of 10s will be modelling the latest in fashionable swimwear. <sighs> Graham? Uh, not now, love. I'm speaking to camera. Graham Donna's not here. So what? Well, we need four of us for the routine, so let's... We'll do the routine with three of you. We'll do it with three. Well... Does anyone else around here know it? Oh, he was watching us rehearse earlier. Oh, was he? That's very interesting. Little pervert. Tell you what, slap a costume on and stick him at the back. That'll teach him. He doesn't know what's coming. Ladies and gentlemen, when I was told... Fine, just fixed. Great, sit down and take calls. When I was told that I'd be judging the best legs out of a group of young, attractive women, I said, where do I sign? <laughs> well, I did sign, and that time is now. The time to look at women and judge them. Ladies and gentlemen, the first lovely lady to the stage is Barbara. <laughs> now, Barbara plays for the local women's amateur football team. So she can quite often be seen getting down and dirty of a Sunday lunchtime. I think it's fair to say this girl has seen more than her fair share of tackles. <laughs> Linda's up next. Linda is an avid gardener, as she can quite often be seen on a balmy summer's mm. evening, tending to her petunias and uh, trimming a bush. <laughs> Deborah's up next. Deborah's a socialite, and Deborah likes nothing more than a nice night in the pub with the girls. Glugity glug glug glug. <laughs> But I'll tell you, forget the pub. Nice legs, love. What time do they open? <laughs> it's just a bit of fun. And then finally, we have Donna. I mean, Yong, who's taking a, who's taking over to Donna. Now, Donna, oh. Oh, dear. Yeah, that's really unpleasant, that, isn't it? Uh, I wish I hadn't suggested it now. He hasn't shaved. There's, I mean, he knows the routine, but um, he hasn't, doesn't look very good, does it? Oh, Christ. OK, um, uh, Don, I mean, Yong is quite... I mean, this is this is appalling, isn't it? Can, can, we, can we do this? I, I think we have to stop the music, actually. I, I, I don't think I can let this go on, to be honest. It's quite, quite, quite unpleasant. Um, why is he still doing that? Stop him dancing! Yeah, yeah. I'm angry now! He's made all of you look bad, hasn't he? Look at him! He's pleased with himself, it looks like to me! He makes all of you look bad when he's standing there looking like that, doesn't he? Absolutely pointless. I'll tell you what else. It's pointless anyway, because obviously Deborah's got the best legs. Knew that going in. Do you know what? Just take him off the stage. It's, it, it, I'm angry. I'll tell you, if there was an audience, they'd be a booing you, Yong. They'd be a booing. And that seems to me like the perfect place to end Act One on a bit of a high. So I'll tell you what, why don't you grab a, grab a drink, sit back, enjoy the adverts, and we'll see you after this. What are you doing? I am setting up for the act to two. I haven't finished talking! After the adverts, we'll see you back then. <laughs> OK, one minute back. Uh, just do exactly what I do. Ah, what a and wait for day. the big fat the sun chef outside to come is shining in. And Susan that. is in the kitchen, <laughs> of course cleaning up after preparing supper for her husband, who will be coming home any minute. But what's this? Susan, you silly moo. Why are you crying, you dozy tart? I've had enough. I've been trying to clean up this chicken grease all day with my usual brand of cleaning product, but it just won't come off. Oh dear, here comes your husband. I hope you've thought of something. Honey, I'm home! That chicken looks delicious, and this chicken looks even nicer. Oh yes, and I forgot to mention, her husband is me, Dick Johnson. Lucky lady. What's with all this grease? This surface is filthy. <gasps> I'm sorry, darling. I've tried every cleaning product available, but I just can't solve these stubborn stains. Well, you haven't looked hard enough, because there's new jazz. Jazz is proven by scientists to clean all of the surface, up to 100% cleaned. Look at the way it cuts through this grease. Wowzers! 
It is also completely harmless to skin. All right, just, being 99 just add 100. That will kick it off. Thank you, darling. That's I don't know ways, what I would have done without you. Poor little girl, right, she deserves now. better than this. And now the kitchen's clean. Let's not right. talk anymore. Thank you. We're back in 10. Places, everybody. And we're going live in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Welcome back to the St Fanny's Hospital's TV fundraiser for dying children. Here's Graham Bannon. My talents are wasted here. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the St Fanny's Hospital's annual TV fundraiser for dying children. It's nice to be back. As a reminder, little Sally Button is still dying, but with your donations, she may yet live. Let's have a little look about how much money has been raised while the adverts have been applying. That's brilliant, we've made a hundred girls, that's amazing. Yes, very good. And who do we have to thank her for these donations? One very generous donor, actually. Fantastic, well, tell me their name so I can thank them live on national television. I don't actually know his name. It's annoying. I thought we told you to take the names when you uh, answer the phones. It wasn't over the phone. It was, um, it was him, the, the guy, the new producer. He gave the money. Right. So uh, we haven't had any calls. The phones still aren't working. No, the phones are working. And we have had a few calls, but none of them wanted to donate. It was mainly complaints against you. What do you mean, complaints against me? Well, I think people think that you're a bit rude. Fudge you up! Sorry for that swear, well you can censor that if you want. A bit rude? People think I'm a bit rude, I've played that! After all I've done and continue to do, people think I made this was blowing my mind. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, magic has always been rude! I'll give them rude. Here's the magic act. Nightmare. Hello everyone, I am the magician, the great bamboozle. For the third magic trick, I will need two beautiful ladies assistant. And I will also need a volunteer from the audience. Oh, no one is here. Yeah, I know it's stupid, I know it's stupid, you know it's stupid, I know it's stupid, just go and do it. Thank you, sir. Uh, in this trick, you will be sent to the another word, beautiful word. And for this magic trick to work, you need to go behind the sheet. Do I have to do this? Please pull the sheet up. Uh, now I'm going to say the magic word. Alakazam, alakazoom. And uh, now you can drop the sheet for big reveal. He's not here, yeah. And you can take the sheet. Um, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I am not happy. I'm not happy at all. I don't know if it's clear what happened there. I think it is. That's Raj. I'm not Raj, I'm the great bamboozle. Right, well that's not true, is it? There's lots of surprises, lots of... Get there. off the stage, get off the stage right now. Don't play that sound! And then finally, what I and dying child Sally Button have been waiting for, it's the, the chimp dancing finale. Sorry, Graham, Graham, sorry. I, I don't think we should say there's going to be a chimpanzee. It's stuck on another bus. Yeah, I'll tell you what. I'm only going to say this once, mate. If you don't manage to source a dancing chimpanzee, and it has to be a chimp, not an orangutan, for the end of this show, I am certain that the shock, disappointment and fear on that little girl's face will cause her to just die like sometimes children do. And that'll be entirely your blimmin' fault. 
Graham, of course I care about Susie Button, who you've been calling Sally Button all evening, but I I'm, not, I'm not a producer. I, I, I don't know the first thing about booking dancing chimpanzees. I can try my best. Oh, that's it. I that is as good as I will get a dancing chimpanzee, Graham. Now you're here, what can we expect next? I assume it'll be the fire-breathing man or something incredibly similar. No, nope, he's on the bus, but, but we've got something better. What's that? It's a group of teenagers from the Scritchford Dance Club. Right, that doesn't sound better to me than a fire-breathing man, but I suppose it's the best we've got. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage. It's the dance, it's this. this. <laughs> Hurry up. Something to say. Life is pretty spiffy when it goes your way. Beep, 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 when I walk down the street. Waves of admiration from the people I meet. Everyone has a bunch of a plan. Nothing you could understand. So you can work as hard as you can. But I'll be running late because it's great to be a man. It's a really good kid. It's great to be a man. Look at that, I'm a fabulous chap With a fancy pair of breeches and a gentleman's hat So fine, it's a fabulous time You can even use the checkbook if I can't assign Don't moan, you're the angel I own Parted with your father, now I'm taking you home Thanks once more for all your help in the war Why is there a branch on the kitchen floor? I don't have much of a plan Really nothing that a pretty head could understand So you can scream just as loud as you can But I'll be doing well because it's swell to be a man Swell to be a man Not bad, not bad at all Fantastic, absolutely fantastic. Really, really rather good, that. Um, I'll tell you what, though, you little ankle biters. Uh, it is a weekday. Shouldn't you not be in school? Oh, get Ben. I will not get Ben. I will not get Ben. Get out of here. I won't get Ben. I won't get, I won't get Ben for anyone. <laughs> Bastards. <laughs> Drum roll, please. What? What? I, that carries on. Look at that. It's still going, but five grand. There's at least five grand. Girls, this is incredible. Uh, actually, we haven't made that amount yet. That five's supposed to be a two. I think he's made a mistake. What do you mean, he's made a mistake? Who's he's made a mistake? Who's moving that machine? What? It's you! It's, it's you! I am so angry. I thought that this still moving. I thought that this was a brilliant state-of-the-art machine. But it isn't. It's just Yong sitting behind this, moving those boxes. You should be ashamed of yourself, Yong! Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Good news though, uh, we've now raised two grand for little Sally Button, so we're a tenth of the way to our target. Absolutely fantastic. So now we're heading towards the end of the second act. Stop talking. The end of the second act. Uh, I think I'm pretty sure um, James, the acrobat from earlier, will dive into that bucket of water now. No, I won't fudging dive into that bucket of water. A swear word there, apologies for that. Hopefully they'll sort that out. No, fudge that. I just went to get my money, and he told me that you said I shouldn't get any money. Where's my money, Graham? Well, what's happened there is that he's lying. He's not lying. That guy is the only one who gives a crap what is going to happen to that girl. You, Graham, are a drip. How dare you? I'm trying to save a kid's life here. Ladies and gentlemen, I've just learned backstage that half of the 20 grand being raised here tonight is going directly to Graham Bannon as a performance <gasps> fee. Oh. What do you think of that, people at home? It's a fudging disgrace. I think, ladies and gentlemen, right now, live on stage, Graham should agree to donate his entire fee to Susie Button's family. How about it, Graham? How much do you actually care about Susie's life? Ah, that's a difficult one. 
Um, now, of course, I care about the life of the child, but I, I'm also pretty sure that the viewers at home want the talent to get paid fairly for their work. Actually, I have someone on the phone right now that says they don't want you to make any money from this. Yes, me too. I'm hearing Graham's a dog. Graham's selfish. Graham's cruising for a bruising. Yes, basically, all my callers are saying Graham's a twat. So. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I have decided off my own back to half my fee. 5,000 for the dying child and 5,000 for Graham Bannon. Nope, that's baloney. Graham, if you care and don't want people at home to think you're spineless, you'll give it all to Susie. Hmm. You know, Acrobat James, there comes a time in a man's life when he has to decide what sort of a man he wants to be. Are you going to donate the money? Yeah, I was just doing a speech about that. Yes. Well done. So that should bring the tally up by 10,000. Plus, I'm happy to donate the fee they offered me of 150. You offered 150 for falling on your ass. So I make that to be 12,155. Young, if you wouldn't mind. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, great. Hold well on, Young. OK, well, thanks so much for that helpful contribution there, James. I assume you'll now be getting into some lycra and diving into that bucket. No, I'm done. I'm going home. Thank you. No, you're not. Get in the bucket. Get in the bucket. Someone grab him and put him in this bucket. We need someone to go in this bucket for the end of the act. Yes, yeah. Uh, found somebody. This is a nightmare. Oh, here he is. Right, great. OK, so now, ladies viewing pleasure, this knucklehead will now dive off of this ladder into this bucket of water. Come on. Off you go. That's good. Great. Now. In the bucket. Great, but that's not tall enough. There's no water in the bucket. I don't care. I don't care if it breaks his neck. Come on, get in. Come on. Young. You need to go in there. Young, just pretend. Get in that bucket, come on. D don't get in that don't bucket. the ladder, Graham. No. <laughs> and there we go, he's ruined that, hasn't he? What a shame. Oh, that's the end of Act Two. We'll see you back after the adverts. Fantastic. <laughs> Back in one minute! What a knobhead! Does anybody know first aid? Yes, my dad's a doctor. Sometimes. Is he gonna die? Are you joking? Oh. I wouldn't date you the last man on earth. Oh dear, Danny. How does that make you feel? I feel like a chicken head. I ain't never gonna get a broad like that. Say, what are you smoking there, Johnny? What, this? It's just my regular brand of cigarette. Ain't nothing special. You're telling me you don't smoke lion cigarettes? Well, how could I? I never heard of lion cigarettes. How do you like to try one? Well, why bother? The taste of lion cigarettes can't be that different from my regular brand. You're talking crap, Johnny. Lion cigarettes are proven by medical science, too. Make you up to 51% more intelligent. Make you 70% more attractive to women or homosexual men. And finally, make you fitter and healthier. You might have heard that cigarettes give you cancer. Well, not lion cigarettes. In fact, they'll decrease your chances by 100%. Give it a try, guy. Hold on. Something's happening. Whoa. One smoke of a lion cigarette and I feel like a new man. Hey, hot stuff. Are you coming to bed? Don't mind me, champ. You run along now. Will he be all right? Yeah, we need to keep that psycho away from him. Don't okay, make uh, sexually attractive. We're back on in ten. She's still unconscious. Even if you're not. Let's take him off. Okay. Oh. And we're going live in five, four, three, two, one. Welcome back to the St Fanny's Hospital's TV fundraiser for dying children. Graham Bannon is still here. Call the music. If there's no audience. Graham Bannon doesn't dance. Hello and welcome to the third part of the St Fanny's Hospital's annual... T well, it's not annual. They're not going to do another one, are they? TV fundraiser for dying children. Uh, and dying national television, it seems. And, you know, speaking of dying, uh, is the child still dying? I'm pretty sure it is. And uh, looking at that, 
No more money has been raised while the advert's been playing. Um, so it looks like, to me, you're continuing to do F all at home. There's two reasons for that. Hello. One, we don't have anybody in the phones. They're all backstage looking after Young. Who you pushed off the ladder. Pretty sure he fell. And secondly, we don't have the guy who changes the counter anymore. You pushed him off the ladder. Tell you what, do I have to do everything? You go back there, grab Young, bring him back in, put him over there, grab the girls, put them on the table. Then they can all do their stuff. Young can sit there twiddling his boxes. Great. He's only just woken up and his neck might be broken. Doesn't have to move his neck. Look, my neck stays perfectly still. Go and get him. I mean, that is unless you don't care about Sally Button. I mean, I assume you'll be donating your fee too. Yeah, I was the first to do it, Graham, about 20 minutes ago. Get off and get them. No more long speeches. Bloody <laughs> northerners. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, as a reminder, this is still happening and we are still live. Taking your donations, if you can be bothered, if you want a girl to live, up to you. Oh, look, the girls are back. What a sight for sore eyes. In fact, talking of sore eyes, went to my opticians the other day and guess who I bumped into there? Absolutely everybody, because I couldn't see. <laughs> they got a laugh, haven't you girls? You're a pig. All right, let's have another act. Any more acts? Anyone who's not stuck on a fudging Ooh. bus or something? Oh, look, the stripper's arrived. Oh, God. Keep him over there. OK, right, we need something else now, we don't, don't we? We need an act or something. Uh, girls, any callers we can put through? Actually, I have someone on the phone right now you might like to speak to. Absolutely fantastic. Put them through. And on top of that, he's been rather horrible to that little boy. She sounds about 100. Le uh, hello there, and welcome. Then they're, they're, they're welcome to the show. Uh, uh, what's your name, please? Who's that? It's Graham Bannon. You're horrible. Why has she been put through? Don't put one through to think I'm horrible, obviously. That might be a bit difficult. This is so crazy that everything I've done for all these people, I'm they still... still... Here. Why is she still there? Cut her off! We're not putting any more through. We're having another act. Hello? There's a... Who is that? Stop putting people through! Uh, all right, I'd like to donate a tana, please. Aha. We have a serious gentleman on now. Hello, sir. Did you say you'd like to donate a tenner? Hey, that's right. I'd like to donate a tana. I'll turn her to the fun to stop Graham Bannon being on TV, huh? No, 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 don't play the laugh sound! It wasn't funny! Oh, so you think you could do better, do you? Hey, uh, yes, today. OK! The stage is yours, go on, tell a joke, tell a wee joke. All right, I'll do the wee joke. How many Graham Bannon does it take to screw in the light bulb? I'm not going to like this. That depends on the fee. No! The joke was horrible! The joke was horrible, no! We're not having horrible jokes. We're not doing any more of that. We're not having any more callers. I think they're stupid and also they seem drunk to me. Right, what's next? We need another act. Where's the next act? We have sorted the monkey problem. This is brilliant. This is brilliant news, Raj. Bring it on. Uh, he's very shy. That's fine. That's fine. We can be, we're, we're dead fine. Bring it on. It wants everyone to close their eyes for big reveal. OK, right. Everyone close your eyes for the big reveal. Don't ruin this, girls. Close your eyes. We are ready! It's a very big... OK! You can open your eyes now. OK! It's a very strong, it's, so, it's carrying me on its back. And it has banana, it's offering banana to you. <laughs> no! No! Fudge! Fudge! No! That is not a real monkey! That is not a real banana, is it? And these are not your legs! Ouch! G ouch! Get off the stage, I'll give you ouch! Right, we need something else. It's time for another act. Where's the unicyclist? Get him on. We have the bloody unicycle act. Swearing, apologies for that. Hopefully that gets censored by them. Graham, we've got the unicycle, but we don't have the, the guy That's who fine. rides it. That's fine, we don't need the guy that rides it. I'm the guy that rides it. Bring it on. <laughs> Graham, I, bring I, the I damn don't thing think on. you should try. I don't care what you think, bring it on. Bring it on, bring it on, bring it on. Bring it on. Bring it on. Ladies and gentlemen, for your pleasure, I will now be performing for you the unicycle act. Can I have a volunteer? No one's here. Yes, they are here. Hello, Young. Right, OK, this is good. You'll like this, you'll like this. Right. Now, what I'm going to do now that. is grab the unicycle and jump over this arsehole. Yep, very good. Right, OK. Start the music. Drum roll, please. It's going to be good, Young. Protect your face, baby. OK, and here we go. Ah, oh, shit! Ah, oh, shit! Ah, oh, my arm! 
Oh God! Okay, okay, that, that's not it. Okay, well that's the act, I think. Ow, I don't think I can do that again. Um, that's the act. I suppose that's what happens if you pay peanuts. Uh, you, get, ow, you get monkeys. Well, don't you know, you don't always get monkeys, do you? Sometimes you just get someone wearing half a monkey costume where it looks like their legs are the monkey's legs, which apparently is just as good. So, um, so great, okay, so we need another act, don't we? We need somebody else on here doing something. Do we have the strong man? That's what it says on the auto cue, the strong man. Oh, oh, sorry, I don't want to be in the way of this. It's Raj, isn't it, again? And he's doing that. Is that good? Is that entertaining? Is that what you want? Raj doing that, laughing. It, it, is this going to save a child's life? And speaking of saving a child's life, are oh, we doing that? Has any more money been raised? How much more money's been raised? It's actually gone down a bit. People are asking for the money back, and I think you're scaring them. That's fine. That's absolutely fine. Come on, do what you're getting paid to update the score. Come on, put it down. Great. So the money pops down, and still less money. So even more to raise for the girl in the next five minutes. Brilliant. Right, what we need is to do a get-rich-quick scheme. Who's got some ideas? Ah, oh, I've got an idea. Just had it. Looking at these ladies, lovely. I know what, let's set up a little kissing booth. Nice little table, nice little cloth, little bit of lipstick. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Ten or a pop, right? I'm sure these lads would like it. They've been ogling them all evening, the perverts. That sounds good to me, right. So, how much for a kiss, ladies? No, Graham, you're bleeding. Does it? Ah, oh, don't be such a tease. Go on, Linda, puck it up, darling. Thank you, Linda, I needed that. OK, well, that has gone wrong. That has gone awry. I'm sorry if that's my fault in any way. I don't know if it is. I've got my... I think I know whose fault that might be. But there we go. What a shame. What a shame. I'll level with you. Uh, it's, it's looking unlikely we're going to make the money. Haven't got long left. It looks like that might be the end for little Sally. It is actually Susie. Whatever. She'll be dead soon. And so will my career. So, uh, so two deaths in the same evening. And if you ask me, be hard to weigh them. They're both equally sad deaths. Oh well, well that's the end of that. Uh, I suppose that's the end of the show then. Uh, thank you very much. Graham! Graham! Great news. The monkey's turned up. Yeah, it's not the monkey, is it? It's just Raj or something pissing yeah, around. No, it is a real monkey. Look, I haven't got time for this. It's obviously it's not a real monkey. Don't get my hopes up, it's not gonna. Oh my god! <laughs> That is a real monkey. Yes! There it is! Get away from it! There it is! Ah, it's a real monkey! Now we can do the dance and save the show! Save my career! The girl! Come on! Just do the dance! Don't scratch your head, do the dance! Come on, do the dance! Come on, do the dance. Don't snort at me. Do the dance there. Do I have to spell everything out to you? Put your arm in. Oh, crap. No, no, oh, he's punching me. Oh, Somebody shoot oh, it. Somebody shoot it. Ow! Oh, Kill it. Enough. Oh. I've had enough. I'm the producer. I'm in charge. I want everyone to stop and listen to me. We've forgotten what's important here. A little girl's life's on the line. We're all acting like children. Listen up, do as you're told. Linda, Deborah, Barbara and Raj, get on the phones. We've still got enough time to get some donations, but we need all hands on deck. Uh, young, I know you don't understand what I'm saying, but we will get you to a hospital as soon as the show is finished. Just hang in a little bit longer, OK? Yeah, that's fine. And you, Mr Bannon, People used to look up to you as the face of national television. 
Look at you now, eh? You're full of crap. You better pull yourself together, son, cos chimps, chimps don't dance for bastards. We're all here, working together, as a team, to try and save somebody's life. Apologise to him, and ask him nicely to finish the show. <sighs> Chimpanzee, please, will you, do your little dance to save the life of young Susie. Oh, there we go. That wasn't so hard, was it? Now, a little girl's life is on the line and I've got just the job for you. Please donate to this worthwhile cause. We, we really can do some good here. It's like me old mam used to say, you can keep your money in your pocket, but people will call you a stingy cunt. Uh... <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Peter Clement, television producer, here to tell you that if we work together as a team, anything's possible. And that is a Peter Clement promise. Thank you and good night. Take it away! <laughs> Good night! Right, down the pub, pints Absolutely. on pizza, eh? Well, we eh? We did it! We did it! Turns out, if you work as a team, you can do anything. And Graham Bannon. Oh well, there's always next year. Why look, folks. It's television's Graham Bannon, and he's taking the brand new Mega MK7 convertible out for a spin. How's the ride, Graham? Onlookers can't look away, but it's not because of the brand new Mega MK7 convertible. It's because of Graham's pearly whites. You see, Graham Bannon brushes with Whitey's Dental Cream, which makes his already very white teeth even whiter. Now, some of you may not have heard of Dental Cream. Why, you may think it's something you put into an ice cream float. But you'd be wrong. Dental Cream is the smart alternative to regular toothpaste. For those who prefer their mouths not to stink like a donkey's so what are you waiting for? Whitey's Dental Cream. Creaming in your mouth since 
That's all coming up on time. Winston, welcome to your voluntary, see also compulsory, night shift. Now, it's a little different from the news, but tonight you'll be working on one of our most popular fictional reality TV shows. I hear they're all the rage. Obviously, no one important has to do the graveyard shift, so I'll be clocking out now. I'll leave you in the capable hands of Diane. Toodaloo! Hi, Alex. Welcome to the live and spooky team. Tonight, we're broadcasting live from an old film studio which is haunted by the vengeful spirit of a woman found dead in the basement. You know, standard stuff. Just before we start, we don't do adverts here, but we do have some old film reels to play in. The projector is hooked into your advert buttons and will automatically select the correct reel for us. If you look down under the desk, you'll see what I mean. There she is. The Adomatic Cinejector Mark III. Only one like it in the world. It self-loads the films for you and then converts them so they're ready to be broadcast. Unfortunately, all three reels are badly fire damaged. But no other copies exist, so we'll just have to make do with bits missing. Just remember to hit the add button at the end of each segment to play the films. Oh, and that device on the right, that's the spirit jammer. It prevents any wayward or malicious spirits from interfering with the show. Honestly, Gareth knocked it up in his garage and I don't think it does anything. But he assures me it's set correctly, so just... Don't touch it, I guess. All right, Wayne, we're going live at five. Can you hear that? Is the sound of fate. Have you ever heard fate creep up behind you with a dagger in its back and a hallelujah on its lips? I have. Good evening, my friends, both in this realm and the next. Tonight we've come to a wretched place to uncover a dangerous case. Welcome to the Bannon Sound Stage. Once a thriving studio at the forefront of innovation until tragedy. A horrifying accident. A devastating fire and finally death itself. Join me, Wayne, the spirit whistle, spiritual medium, psychic communicator, lover, as I attempt to uncover the dark truth into grey infamous chaos show tonight on live and spooky Yeah. 
episode features a very special guest, journalist, broadcaster, and all-round truth seeker, Patrick Bannon. Good evening, Wayne. You excited to join us tonight? I'm excited, Wayne. I can't say I'm excited about all this dust, though. It plays havoc with my allergies. Now, Patrick. Oh, what's that, love? Oh, my. My, Patrick. I'm hearing from the spirit world. I'm hearing something that might shake your world to its very foundation. Is it true that you are, in fact, the one and only son of Graham Bannon? Oh, yeah. I mean, everyone knows that. Yeah. The EMF reading is off the charts. And, of course, we're joined, as usual, by our paranormal investigator and supernatural scientist, Dr. Ahmed. Excuse me, Dr. Ahmed, what is an EMF? Oh, <laughs> forgive me, Mr. Bannon, I'm so sorry. Sometimes I forget that not everyone is as well versed in the terminology as myself and Mr. Despirit Whistle here. So, EMF stands for Electric Magnetic Field. Essentially, it is a measurable energy signature given off by all forms of spectral phenomena. <laughs> and that thing being off the charts, is that, is that a good thing or is that a bad thing for us? Well, I mean, higher tends to mean that there is either a stronger presence or even multiple presences. Mm. <laughs> and of course, seeing that we're in the business of hunting ghosts, I'd say yes, it's definitely a good thing. Mm. Words to trust there, Mr. Bannon. Our doctor here is the foremost expert in metaphysical science. What do you have for us this evening, Pet? Well, I've actually stumbled onto something of a breakthrough here, Wayne. <laughs> I've managed to actually expand the light spectrum visible to the human eye by refracting it through a specially vibrated flower prism. This cutting edge technology actually allows us to see into the spirit world. Ah, yes, let's get the ghost cam switched on. Cathedral oscillating optoelectronics. Oh! Ah! What was that for? Branching, oscillating octahedral optoelectronics. Oh, yes, exactly, that's what I said. <laughs> but of course, I do need a shorter name for that now, don't I? Boom! Oh. Ah! Please stop doing that. Yes, Mr. Banner, please do stop scaring poor Dr. Ahmed. Please continue, Doctor. Thank you, Mr. Despirit Whistle. So, tonight, we will be utilising utilizing my standard surveillance kit, which of course includes night vision capabilities, should we come into any problematic darkness, let's say. Oh, and additionally, I have taken the liberty of installing my branching up um, new devices all over the building. Tonight, we might actually be able to broadcast the image of a ghost for the very first time. Oh, exciting stuff, now. And now, Patrick, your father built this place at the height of his illustrious career. That's right. The year was 1956. Hot off his success in music hall venues and comedy clubs around the country, Graham Bannon suddenly produces a TV script. A script that blows the mind of studio execs and leaves them scrapping over who will get to make it. It was called Dying is Another Man's Job and starred Graham as a daring do-gooder, Percival Peril. It was set to be a tour de force for your father, launching into superstardom. Ah, but it was to be the start of something much more sinister. Three disasters struck, each more calamitous than the last. And shortly after the tragic events that <sighs> Graham Bannon suddenly disappeared from the limelight, never to be seen in public again. It broke him. This place, the curse. My father had it all. Charm, talent, the weaselish good looks of a meerkat or some sort of stoked animal. The fate came in and cruelly stole it all away. A built in 57, the Bannon soundstage was to be the home of a brand new televisual sensation of a scale never seen on our screens before. For that damned woman. Ah! The spirit? Mm. Doomed to roam the wings and the halls forevermore. An unfortunate accident, a raging inferno, and a tragic loss of life. Left these walls cursed forever. Of course, production was shut down following Marie Murphy's mysterious passing. And since then, there have been misguided attempts to make use of this very building. None survived. What? Succeeded. None succeeded. So 
sorry, succeeded. Uh, we'll investigate those tears as we delve deep into the ruins of this once flourishing enterprise. <gasps> wait, wait! Who's there? A spirit! A spirit beckons! <gasps> we can test out the branching octahedral oscillating optoelectronics! Boom! Ah! ah! So, you see them as well? Ah, yes, no, I think, yes. She wants to give us a sign. No, I know it. Shh, everyone, shh. Any moment now. Hey, speak to me, love. Oh, my. Oh, my goodness. Why, is something supposed to happen? Shh, Patrick. Can you smell that? A very distinct earthy odour. Uh, yeah, no, maybe. I mean, what am I supposed to be smelling? Ah, yes. The perfume of labour. A real working environment. Yeah, got it now. Uh, we're looking for a farm, are we, or a zoo or something? Yeah. A world of marvels, to be sure, Mr Banner, but not animals, no. Something, uh, a place of work where people would work together. The wig shop. Of course. This way, Patrick. Our next clue must be there. The workshop performed the final checks on all props, sets, and costumes before they were used for filming. There have been no direct ties between this place and Brent Backflip's accident. Yet. What terrible secrets might this dusty domain contain? Ah yes, the workshop. I can feel a palpable energy here. Pervasive, poignant. Perfunctory? Yeah. Y yeah, uh, precisely. Uh, can you feel that? This presence? It's like an amalgamation of the first tragedy that befell your father's final show. <gasps> uh. Specifically, the fate of our poor stoneman. Such a terrible shame what happened to him. Can you feel the energy, Patrick? I mean, I can feel something, but I think it's probably all this dust. Uh, we're expecting to break out in hives any second. Then again, I suppose a bit of dust is to be expected. Well, this may be our first stop, but it's also the one that links our other destinations together. The props for this show would come here to be finalised for their role. The costumes would be fitted for any special requirements on this very bench. And of course, it is the final bastion between preparation and performance upon the soundstage itself. Yes, there is a great deal of history here. I suppose so, mate, if you say so. The storm double, Brent backflip. Yes. He fell. He did Brent. fall. He did fall, yes. There was a problem, he fell. Yes, and if we are to find the truth to this misfortune, we must follow our ethereal guide. And here they are. The spectres call again. Let's see where they will direct us now. Oh. Are we getting this? Tell me we're getting this. My God. It looks like what a jellyfish would see. On acid. It's showing us something. Some sort of light, is it? Light, the only place in this building with lots of lights. The stage! Exactly! Quickly! The departed! They're not patient! The stage is the location of Brent Backflip's failed stunt where he plunged to the ground below. It is situated above the long sealed vault and the dark secrets he contains. This is where the cameras would roll both figuratively and literally, at least until the installation of bricks. Come in, come in, Patrick, the spirits are urgent. Apparently so, yeah. So tell us what happened here. Well, Wayne, in this room is where the mishap happened. 
the negligent maiming of a stunt double. Uh, no, 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 a tragic accident uh, for which liability was never legally established. An important distinction. Graham, stunt double, Brent, I'm talking to you now. If you're out there, show us a sign. I'm... Oh, no, I'm getting an impression of many, many people. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, yeah. I, my dad had a lot of doubles. Uh, he had his stunt doubles, uh, hand doubles, body doubles. Does uh, Robert mean anything to you? Uh, uh, Robert was his scale double, that's right. For either he was uh, shrunk or really, really far away in the distance. And now I'm seeing two. Yes, two two men that came as a pair, yes. Did you take that? Oh, yeah, yeah. That'd be Paul and Barry. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And who were they, Patrick? Uh, they were his arse doubles. Two arse doubles? Yeah, 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 one for each cheek. Uh, my dad was an asymmetrical and a stickler for details. Well, I'm getting the impression from this room, from this energy, that they are not happy, Patrick. Do you understand that? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They were not happy. Yeah, they're not happy. They were constantly fighting for my dad's attention and for their big break. Uh, oh, and let's just say, Brent backflips certainly got their backs up. Yes. Yeah, I know. But, you know, tell us specifically. Oh, well, let's just say Brent couldn't keep his muffins in his tin. Oh, he fucked around? Yeah, 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 he fucked around, yeah, yeah. And let's just say that the Grand Grey and Bandits weren't exactly filled with summer watercress. Uh, they were pissed off. That's right, they were fucking pissed off, yes. And so, uh, what you're saying, Patrick, is there were an awful lot of men who all looked eerily similar, who all had it in for Brent Backflip. Well, I've been particularly dramatic then, yeah. No, enough, enough. We've said too much. We must go if we're to find the truth. I feel a tickling from across the barrier. Do you feel it? I thought that was you. They wish to take us to our final stop, where surely we will find that which we seek. Yes, yeah, something's coming through. Yes, spirits, rise, rise. Yes, rise, please, thank you. Where does our journey lead? Oh. Did you see that? She threw something at me. Must have had some sort of water, guys. It's a tie. That's been enough to show us where to go. Uh, or the design day did go, but I had to cry for her. Oh. Come on, why must have had no spirits? <laughs> Costume Room was the place where poor Brent Backflip's failed harness costume was created. It was the home to the late costume designer Marie Murphy, one of the suspects in this insidious mystery. And, most terrifying of all, it contains dangerous amounts of noxious fabric. Of course, the old wardrobe department. This makes perfect sense. What do you mean? Well, it makes perfect sense that the dead girl would bring us to her workplace. Uh, the scene of the bloody crime, more like. Crime? You mean murder? Oh, willful endangerment by gross negligence, but still. Uh, could this be Marie's final confession? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Angry woman accidentally hurts stupid man and then racked with guilt. Takes her own life. <laughs> yeah. It, well done, Patrick. It is our job as truth seekers to expose what really happened here. And now we know the origin of the accident. The case can begin to oh, door. What the hell? hell? Did you get in that cabin? Look, look. Find another problem. Yes, spirits, what do you wish for us to see? Do you wish us to rid you of the shame of your deeds? That, that wasn't... Mm. Right. Hey, what do you make of that? Uh, looks like a bit of paperwork from Bannon Productions. Uh, invoices, receipts... Uh, but look here, we've got, got a cancelled purchase order um, from, a, from, from a high-grade nylon polymer. Um, and instead, they placed an order from Cut Price Keith's Cut Price Clots. And a letter. No. Uh, Marie, regards your correspondence at the fourth. How often your budget is slashed and why is none of your concern? Nor is it your place to make safety recommendations. I kindly stop squawking and do your goddamn job. Do not force me to seriously regret keeping you on yours no longer. Graham T. Bannon. Let me see that. 
Let's get back to Dr. Ahmed. We can regroup before we start to investigate the fire that ravaged this place. While we do that, we'll show you some never-before-seen documentary footage. Yes, yeah, so it was originally ordered cancelled out of respect uh, and was partly damaged in the big fire. That's right. Stand by to hit the play button. Just a uh, on. Hang on. Have you fixed spooky. that tape? I'm your host, Harold Repartee, and this is the nation's Nightfall Report. Tonight we bring you a special program where we take a closer look behind the scenes of a forthcoming television sensation. Masterminded by Graham Bannon, seen here at the Chesterton Casino, the project is, as yet untitled, promises to revolutionise entertainment. Bannon has just completed construction on this state-of-the-art studio and production facility, and despite his apparent fortune, Bannon decided to seek outside investment for this extravagant expenditure. With a price... Holly! Holly! Well, where the bloody hell is the jumped-up little shite? He's probably just weighing on some beloved antique from broadcasting's past. Fuck's sake, hope he gets it all over his ridiculous little shoes. Where did they get it from? What? The footage of my father. I was very clear about the narrative. Howdy. Did you know you had the order of an angel, my dear? No. Why? You must have been a goddess in a previous life. Yes, very highly charged indeed. You'll have to stay. Stay? No fucking way. The dead insist. Any second now? Welcome back to Live and Spooky, where we've just had a breakthrough. That's right. If you're just joining us, in part one, we actually, through communicating with the spirits themselves, <clears throat> solved the mystery of Brent Backflip's devastating accident. Yeah, libel, slander, defamation, pick one, delete as appropriate. Uh, Graham Bannon's miserly negligence. In part two, we are joined by... Holly. Holly, yes, Holly, she has the sight, she will be a spiritual guide to us all in the end, I feel, and we will gladly follow wherever she leads us. Our next mystery is the fire that wrapped the building shortly before production was halted. Nothing could be proven at the time, but it was widely believed to be the fault of the costume girl, Marie Murphy. Before charges could be drawn up, the poor woman took her own life on these very premises. And while the fire seemed to originate from the projection room, as of yet, we've been unable to gain access to the room itself. Unfortunately, our good-for-nothing cameraman Gavin has gone for the world's longest slash, so we'll be going handheld for this one. Oh, yes, Alex, if you don't calibrate the spread jump correctly by the time that bar fills up, Dead can be volatile, it can be violent. If you find yourself in trouble, simply exude a strong need for assistance of my attuned senses. Or bring me running quick as you like. All right. Good luck, everyone. <laughs> Here we go. Off you. Calm and green, so no problems there. Towards the stage. Okay. Hello? Latest sign I've had says to come downstairs. Okay. There's a. We're agreeing to specifically wander around in the dark on my own. So much over here. And everybody in the crew. It's like the river sticks. To be in a sort of. If you can see this, in a sort of a. Uh, uh, Lighting thing now. <sighs> okay. Can't much longer, can it? I've got. There's um. Can you see this? 
Oh god. Hello? So no, you, 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 you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't go towards the light, do you? You, uh, you definitely, you, you, you don't go towards the light. That's probably not what they wanted to do anyway, so. Okay. Okay, I'm going up some stairs now. It's like maybe part of the set. If you heard that, but there seems to be a lot of spiritual energy. But there's a vibe around here. There's something very strong. Um, I don't think I'm very good at this. Sacrifice one, or I'll take the last. There is no such thing as ghost. Something. Flickering. Doesn't seem like a good thing. Well, yes, exactly. <sighs> nope. All clear in here. to leave if you would just unlock the door! 
bullshit. Because I'm also listening out for the spectres who I know are in here. Right, okay. Completely off script. Diane, Diane, I'm late from you in a while. Diane, what the fuck is Diane? I need more info on this Holly. She got a dead dad or what? What's my angle? Diane. Oh, for fuck's sake. Are you causing a scene? No! This is not what we agreed, Greg. Look, this arrangement is better for us both. Is it? Because I fail to see how I'm better off. I'm doing you a fucking favour. You should be paying me for an opportunity like this. Ask money, is it? Your more money. I don't care about money. I want what I deserve, Graham. Exactly what you deserve. I'll tell them. I don't believe you. Seriously, who will believe you, Marie? You're a woman! Yeah, I am. But at least I'm not a fraud. You won't last long, won't you, Marie? Ears, eyes, mouth, nose, or any other orifice, you'll be fine. Okay, Dr. Fingersmith. I will not touch my eyes. <laughs> okay, it's gone. It's gone. Oh my god, what happened to this place? Someone silly had an accident here. A bit of film. All the original scripts. All completely burnt. They never did work out how it started. Hold on. I recognise that smell. Yeah. Still as pungent as ever. Dad did say his potency was on the questionable side of legal. Still, reminds me of home. <laughs> Son. So it was deliberate. Oh, no, nothing could have survived that fire, definitely. It's really interesting. What the fuck? What the fuck is that? 
projector. Who lays an old projector lying around in the projector in the projector room? Right, I'm in the projector room, fine. Oh for God's sake. Great. So I'm gonna die here in the projector room. While everyone else is dying, God knows where. But why did I agree to this stupid fucking Wait, does that Does that say Unless there's a ghost, then it'll probably just float through. There's not much I can do about that. Okay. This could well be the last message from Patrick Bannon, television broadcaster. I stupidly agreed to do a show where I pretend ghosts exist for money. Turns out they do. And one has been chasing me around all evening, an evil ghost woman. Wrote my name on the wall and everything. My final wish is that that bastard charlatan, Wayne, is shown to be the prickiest. Oh my god, I'm sorry! Don't know if anyone's hearing this, but I think I'm beneath the stage. Looks like Bannon was hiding stuff down here. Explains why he sealed the door off. Looks like it carries on over here. What is that smell? destroyed it. And thanks to him, history remembers you as the costume girl who ruined everything. Move quite quietly, don't I? My limbs are particularly aerodynamic. 
thought you were dead. Uh, no, 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 not, not, not dead. Um, so Diane found me upstairs. Hi, uh, Cal. Uh, I was upstairs, and she came to find me, and then I thought I'd come find you. Be careful with that. It's really important. Marie, the spirit, whatever. She wants us to see it, and I think if we play it, nobody else is going to get hurt. You're right. What? Well, you're talking a lot of nonsense about spirits and, and ghosts, and don't forget it's not real. What, what do you mean? You saw no, it? No, no, I didn't. It's a TV show, remember? People press buttons, things jump out. Ah! No, bullshit. What are you saying? We need that tape, and we need it's to... It's been a stressful night, right? Why don't you just go upstairs and have a little relax? Give me the tape, Patrick. Diane's called an ambulance, so she'll be here any minute to check you out. Give me the tape, Patrick. Why, 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 why? You knew. You knew about this place. Hmm? Which means you know what's on that tape. All right, maybe I do know what's on this tape. And maybe that's exactly why this cannot get into the wrong hands, Holly. Patrick! I knew you were an arsehole, but I didn't think... What? You didn't think what? Patrick, we need that tape or she will kill us all. Do you know how hard it is, Holly? Being a bad Living under my father's expectations, his ambition. And then one day this fucking curse... Marie Murphy died here, Patrick. Yeah, do you know who else died here? A little boy. A little boy whose father never came home. Not really. He shut himself away and never looked at us again. He wanted his whiskey every night with exactly one ounce of ice so he could sit on his own and enjoy it with the only thing he still had eyes for. TV. I'm sorry, Patrick. I am, you didn't deserve that. But neither did Marie. He, he wouldn't have done something like that, Holly. Why do you care so much when he never cared for anyone in his life? Not for you and certainly not for Marie. Because I need it. Because his reputation is it's all I've got, Holly. Patrick, you were an average broadcaster. You've always been an average broadcaster. You swear at the guests, you forget your lines, you treat everyone around you as if they're shit people from the planet shit, yet you are still better than him. You're a better presenter, somehow, and you're a better man. Trust me, his name is not doing you any favors. So give me the tape, Patrick. I, I, can't, I can't, I'll, I'll risk Susan everything.
morning, Alex. It's Bozeman here, your boss. While you're powering up and getting the adverts loaded, I thought I should just tell you that we've had one of those public information films from the government, and it's mandatory that you play it. You still have a free choice for the other two, so read those tape labels carefully, but make sure you play the advance advert, preferably at the second break. Right, that's the lot. Have a great show. Oh, how's it going with Steve? Why are all men such pricks? That one, eh? Apparently he has a complicated relationship with his face. No. Sorry, are you saying he chose his imaginary friend in the sky over you? I don't know why I talked to you. It probably is a really awful date. Ten seconds, everybody. Like I said, all of you. Did your personality accidentally slip out? Pricks. Going in five, <laughs> four, three. Good evening. I'm Jeremy Donaldson. And I'm Megan Wolfe. Our main stories tonight. Uncooperative. A mysterious symbol has appeared overnight on thousands of buildings throughout the capital. Tonight, in an exclusive live interview with Prime Ministers Julia Salisbury and Peter Clement, I'll be asking what this mysterious symbol might mean. After three months of record-breaking approval ratings, could this be the daring first move of a silent resistance movement? And what would that mean as we go into the future? We shall overcome. Trapped in Dante's taint for more than a month now, doctors Ingrid Sforsborg and Horgensvord and David Wong announced today that they're considering two possible options. With two of the finest minds in science working together, hopes are still high for the eventual return of the team to dry land. Without enough engineers to successfully fix their craft, the team seem likely to attempt to farm the cavern's ecosystem while they wait for rescue from above ground. <laughs> I think I'll stick to risotto, Jeremy. <laughs> Bluff avoided. As the last Mr. Snugglehogs is found and destroyed, we ask, how could we have been so blind? Fortunately, this station wisely chose not to advertise Mr. Snugglehugs, and the subsequent disappointing sales turned out to be a miracle, as only seven children were horribly injured by the lethal toy. How much worse could it have been? Thankfully, we'll never know. Julia Salt, who mobilised numerous government resources to recall the product immediately after the first blindings, said today that the new advance mark, which must be earned by all new products, would be a 100% ironclad guarantee of safety and quality. Fallen Angel? Notorious addict Johnny Hansleeve seems to have reached a new low in his battle with booze, as this recent picture reveals. Johnny's star certainly lacks its former glow these days, with public concern over his mental and physical health growing at an alarming rate. Since being banned from the national squad earlier this year after urinating on a referee during a friendly against East Grinchley, things seem to have gone from bad to worse for Hamsleeves. Is this one celebrated role model about to become the bad boy of sport? And onwards and upwards. In an attempt to put the Mr. Snuggle Hugs disaster behind them, Remington's Fist CEO Sophia Remington today announced a brand new product that already has the markets buzzing with interest. This groundbreaking product came as quite a shock when it was revealed earlier today, though its critics are skeptical that the young CEO can fulfill her promises. When only a flawed will do, you need the Flawed Master 5000. That's the slogan accompanying the announcement that has rocked the construction industry this morning. The breakthrough device for aiding in installation is sure to change the way we see the humble flawed. With that exclusive Prime Ministerial interview coming up later. And our very own Patrick Bannon live at the first annual Sports Board Final. You won't want to miss a second of tonight's National, National Nightly News. News. First tonight, while Advance is certainly proving popular with the majority of the country, who have seen their wealth and standards of living increase considerably, for some, the transition has not been as pleasant. That's right, Megan. The formerly aristocratic members of our society have had to make major adjustments to come to terms with the new regime. Robin Short is in suburbia investigating rumours that these previously privileged people may be planning some kind of protest. Robin? 
Thanks, Megan. I'm here in moderate hatchings to talk to Wentworth and Penelope Somerset Bentley, who were relocated to the house you see behind me after Advance passed the Assets and Wealth Act on their first day in office. Tell me, how are you settling into your new lives? Well, quite frankly, Robin, we're not settling in at all. Our neighbours are white waters. Well, it's simply untenable. I hope you'll forgive my language, but it's as steaming as a Wednesday hatch basket with too much spatting. Steady now, Penelope. Sorry, Robin, my sister's under a lot of pressure. She had to dress herself this morning and she still hasn't quite recovered, you Robin. You suddenly do. No. My goodness, that must have been quite a shock. She really struggles with ribbons, Robin. Well, at least you've been rehoused in a nice big house. Big house? This grubby little gadda spatch only has one staircase. And the breakfast room and the dining room in the same bloody place. Imagine that, having all one's grub in one room. One room, Robin! So, what would you say to the people that feel that your family has had it far too easy for far too long and that these redistributions are both fair and just? I hardly think we've had it easy for fussle's sake. Only one of our swimming pools was even heated. But realistically, what can you do? Well, you've asked the right ruddy question, Robin. Thank you, Wentworth. I wasn't the youngest ever editor of the Swinstead Middle School Enquirer for no reason. I think our toilet butler was from Swinstead. Dear George, George. Oh, I wonder what happened to him. <gasps> oh, yes. I remember! <laughs> Daddy tried to shoot him in the buttocks and he ran off into the woods. Oh, good times. And that's probably my last happy memory, Robin. Tragic, but what can you do? We will rise and rebel. We wage war on our revolting rulers with righteous words and rebellious writings. Our best guess in our quest for redress is to divest our breasts in an undress bear chest protest! Oh, what's that? Daddy! Daddy, it's Daddy! Something. Please don't do that. We can't show this on the news. Right, you buggers! Tilly, who? Ah! <laughs> Tilly, get the dog. Tilly's our mummy. She's proper cracked oh, oh, off, too. Uh, oh, well, at least you are showing some shame. Free at last! Oh. Somerset Bentley, <laughs> glad to meet you. Yes, See, the protest has started already. Nice sharp work, boy. Thanks, Daddy. He gets that from me, you know. Um, but, and forgive me, what are you trying to achieve here? We just want to be fudding well heard, that's all. Oh, language, Penelope. We are nude, not rude. Sorry, Daddy. We want the world to realise we won't roll over and run away. We will revolt. We will rise again. Yes, we bloody well will. Spaff and piff pop. <laughs> Well, Jeremy, <laughs> Megan, as this embryonic <laughs> protest <laughs> movement takes one in the top six, <laughs> it's back here I'll in the studio. I'm um, Robin then. Short, struggling surreptitiously in moderate hatchings. I think that Thanks, is... Robin. Well, that's certainly a story we want to be keeping an eye on, eh, Megan? Uh, speak for yourself there, Jeremy, but I've seen enough shaft work to last me a lifetime. I'm sure you have. But uh, can a naked protest movement ever really catch on? It doesn't seem like the way we do things in this country. But, as I'm sure you're aware, Jeremy, this country is becoming a very different place. Yes, but seriously, who's going to run around <laughs> naked in our weather? Well, hopefully not you, Jeremy. Yes, well, there wouldn't be enough canvas for the slogans. <laughs> uh, when we come back, our very own Patrick Bannon will be live from the Sports Board Finals. Stick around, you won't want to miss it. We'll be back after these messages. One minute back. Oh, sorry, I'm busting. Oh! She's funny. Yes, I know. Sporting legend. Here. I've got it all. She wants Four your job. world champions. She Two cars. Why is it running on my desk? And an enlarged prostate. Alex, over. We're getting reports in that naked protesters might try and spoil the sports board final by waving their fleshy bits about. Try and make sure you don't broadcast it. It's 6 p.m. for God's sake. No one wants to see fannies on the news. Bozeman out. It can put pressure on the bladder. This can cause trouble starting to pee, and it can cause laundry-based trouble between you and your she-demon of an ex-wife. So what caused this big old prostate? in your bum. Well, sorry, me and the doctors, we don't know. But I can tell you, as you get older, your body changes. And that's okay. 
that's what it says. Yes, I understand that, but I always say welcome back. I think we should just keep it as it is. Well, of course you do. I've got one hack line. What's that supposed to mean? I didn't write it, Jeremy. That's all right, fine. Jenny, there's something wrong with the auto cue. Ten seconds. Oh, I just felt a drip again. Have they not fixed this? They want to see us fry. It's good for the ratings. Five, four, three. Welcome back to the National Nightly News. I'm Megan Wolfe. Coming up later, we'll be speaking to the Prime Ministers about their exciting new healthcare facilities, transition centres. Nice to see they care. <laughs> You're absolutely right, Jeremy. But first, we're going now to our own Patrick Bannon, who's reporting live from the finals of the new game that's gripping the nation, Sports Board. Patrick? That's right, Megan. You join me live here from the final of the first annual Sports Board Championship. It's been a hotly contested competition so far. I think it's fair to say these two have been dancing around each other all season. First up, we have Ellie Stryker. She's the more experienced of our two players today. Stryker has got an accuracy of 7, a danger rating of K, and a 12-month driving ban. Stryker's known for her signature move, the Lanky Hamster. And facing her tonight, hoping to prove himself with a career record of 12 outs, 14 finishes, and a divorce pending, is Mr Wingspan himself, Tommy, the fingernail Harris. Just waiting on the ref now. The slapping ceremony is taking part. Mm -hmm. Still going on. And, uh, go first. Striker, of course, first. Uh, first to start as she won the trivia round earlier on by some margin. D Robe. Uh, Harris, uh, perhaps the, the brawn and not the brain. Play, Stupid. Eddie Striker. Nice start there from Striker. She's determined not to let the nerve show. Uh, not after last time. On to Mr. Harris now. Tommy. Using his arm to pick up the ball. Not a bad shot there from, uh, from Harris. Back to striker for shot number three. All right. She's gone to sort of throwing it under her legs. Uh, not bad, if you ask me. Is that contact? Further away, compared to, to Harris. Bit of business with the ref, but it got sorted out. Striker. Back to Harris now. A ball in the hand is worth two in the bush. Football. Move back. I'd say that's fair. But what do I know? Oh no, and Harris is not going to be happy with that. So really not a good start there for Tommy Harris in round one. We can only hope the round two trips be a bit better. Uh, but first, of course, after the argument with the ref section, it's time to change ends. Now we have the ceremonial changing of the ends. And of course, now they go back to the starting positions, as that makes sense. Striker giving it large. Second round, and Duble, and Harris. To Winter start. round two now with Harris. Okay, we seem to have some sort of streak on the pitch. I uh, apologise if we broadcast any of that stuff. Um, she appears to have slogans across her breasts and arse. Um, uh, try and ignore all of that security. I'm sure we're going to take them out as soon as possible. Uh, apologise if uh, we we broadcast any of that. As I said, um, we're going to get the situation resolved as soon as possible. Um, uh, they're trying to carry on play, but it's probably a bit difficult, and I'm struggling to follow. Um, because uh, it's quite an eyesore, and um, women's body... Yeah, all right, great. OK, so back into round two now, uh, and how is absolutely determined to close that massive gap. Eddie Stryker. You know, it's just some of the tightest play I've seen ever. Harris. And was that the fitted thumbscrew? We haven't seen that of the heat. What a brilliant move. Back to Stryker. And we know what that means, ladies and gentlemen. That is, of course, the ground sound. Excellent bit of play here on both sides of the bucket. I don't know about you at home, but I'm finding the technical mastery in this play here absolutely blooming, jaw-dropping. The ref has spotted something in uh, Harris's neck or head. And Harris is having an absolute shocker. What a miserable start there in for Tommy sport. Harris. Uh, but he is a late bloomer, of course, the boys said that. And after all, it is a game of two halves. Uh, four rounds and seven subgroups. But now, of course, it's time for the half time show. Sponsored by Rivington Smith. On my whistle, on my whistle. Nice piece of music here to start the half time show. OK, another pass protest to lose on the court here. We can only apologise for that. Um, we'll do our best to shield you from having to look directly at it. Um, he's uh, running around here with his genitals uh, on display for all to see. Um, 
and uh, ruining what was shaping up to be quite the dance interlude there. Um, now he's thrusting himself in, uh, in Harris's face. Security is on it. Uh, and the bucket has been knocked over. I cannot stand it when the bucket gets knocked over. Um, hopefully he'll get taken out now. Um, uh, genitals flying around for all to see. Um, really, if you ask me, not Sunday morning television. Um, and uh, out of there, uh, hopefully uh, taken away, never to be seen again. Final pose, <laughs> final poses. Oh boy, cannot be in the final pose. And a lovely finish there on both sides of the bucket. I wouldn't like to call that one. Uh, and as we head into round three, I'd love to know what's going on in these two players' heads. Uh, but unfortunately, because of science, we can't. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Not bad. You Well, that ball boy's giving me the eye all the day. I don't know what's going on there. Uh, striker there, not a great start. Um, she looks a bit flustered, I think, after all that swinging around. Back to Harris here. God, what I wouldn't give to be that ball. I'm all right, ladies. Tommy Harris. And it dribbled down his arm, which is actually a really good move, because, of course, if it dribbles down his arm and goes on the floor, it's not going in the bucket. Back to Striker. Has gone for the animal bonus there, but of course, perhaps. And yes, Harris has counted with a tiny bell. That is wonderful play. Of course, we've seen that before. Look at her face. She is absolutely gutted. What a mud. Um, that could have been the clincher. What a massive shame. Um, Harris receives possession now. Uh, Harris to serve now. Um, Harris, of course, undefeated by Kestrel in his last four bats. So, um, here we go. Tommy Harris. That's all right. Not bad there, he threw it quite far away from him, which is quite a good no idea. No Very contact. clever there. Perhaps a little contact, a caution from the referee, who's being, if you ask me, a little bit harsh. Ellie Stryker. And she's let the nerves get to her! What the hell was that? You hate to see it, don't you? You cannot believe it. Oh, for God's sake. OK, like, I'm into the mess now. I don't, I don't know what I can be doing about this. Um, uh, I mean, a sort of uh, uh, breasts and genitals for all to see. Um, I mean, there's only so much you can do. Um, they, they're full of everywhere, aren't they? Uh, all right, I'll, I'll try and carry on. Um, the players are trying to carry on, but of course it's difficult because um, because these protesters are uh, hoping we can get them taken off soon so we can carry on with the match. Oh, oh, it's not. Oh, hello, okay, hello. nonsense is going on here. Yes, yes. We want our money. Yes, very good. Take them away. Can be. Bloody wasters. Absolute wasters. It's an absolute bloody... OK, and now we're going to go into the final round. Um, and, of course, as it's a Tuesday, the final round is a mime round. Who could believe it? Uh, nice imaginary shot there from uh, Harris. It really could go in there at this point. Um, really high-level play here from two absolute juggernauts of the sport. Hold. Uh, the bucket getting moved back to its proper place. About time, if you ask me. She's uh, juggling it around from her hands. So interesting. And she's uh, put it in her mouth like as if it was an egg. And now she's um, and she's spat it out. She did the egg spit. So uh, a wonderful move there, quite late on. Spit. Uh, spit. From striker. But she's in Harris. it to win it. Harris is born. On it like a car bonnet. Uh, Tommy Harris here having a bit of beef. And he's peeling it as if it were a banana, which is an interesting move. Um, not sure if he hasn't had his potassium or what's going on today with us. And he's trying to have a banana with the ball! What a fantastic move there from Harris! Unfortunately, that is the end. What a pathetic... There we go, Jeremy, that is over. How can he look his eight-year-old son in the face tonight? What a lump! Uh, we just have to wait for the referee now to announce it to make sure it is all official. Mm -hmm. Contestants in, please. And the winner of the first annual Sports Board Championship is... Everyone! Wow. OK, the ref has the 
once again a win for everyone, uh, including me as my 15th win in the Sports Board Championship. Um, I'm going to be celebrating tonight with my wife and children. Uh, another wonderful victory for me. Uh, here come the on-site security to collect their medals, uh, their sixth and seventh respectively. Um, and thanks again for watching the uh, Sports Board Championships. Uh, what more is there to say? I'm Patrick Bannon. Um, looking forward to celebrating tonight. Um, and all I've always left to say, Jeremy, is back to you in the studio. Patrick Bannon there at an extraordinary final. Historic sports board, Jeremy. I didn't know you were a fan. Oh, yeah, I can wrench a doubler with the best of them, I'll have you know. I certainly wouldn't bet against you. <laughs> when we come back... <laughs> I'll be talking live with Prime Ministers Julia Salisbury and Peter Clement, who apparently have a big announcement you wouldn't want to miss. That's coming up after these messages. One minute back. Fucking microphone shot me. What? Fucking microphone just dropped me. Where's that sound guy? Of a long, painful decline in your final years. Everything okay? Oh, the mics are just trying to kill us now, apparently. You'll be fine. You're, You're unshockable. <laughs> I'm immune to your cheap flattery. I'm wearing you down. Now you. Question again. Just heard from the chaps in maintenance. The storm is laying havoc with the electrics, and you might notice the odd spark. Nothing to worry about. Happens all the time. Dave got shocked into a coma last year, but he was up and at him the next day. Anyway, our compensation package is parallel to none. Good luck, Boozman out. At the end of your stay. Uh, seem to have sprung a leak. Well, uh, several, actually. You're going to need a whole new lining up there. Triple C, that should be good. We'll look into it. Minister, it's so good to see you again. <laughs> Miss Wolf, your star seems to be in the ascendant. It's a great time to be alive. Too <laughs> bloody right. Peter Clement. Megan Wolf. My, but that's a firm handshake you've got there. She's tougher than she looks. <laughs> <laughs> Am I here? Uh, here, with Mr Clement <clears throat> on your left. Right you are, pet. <sighs> You'll see, Dump. Ten seconds, everybody. No, mine's fine. Have you had a little accident? Cheeky cow. Five, four, three... Welcome back. I am delighted to be joined by Prime Ministers Julia Salisbury and Peter Clement. Welcome to the National Nightly News, Prime Ministers. Oh, please, it's just Julia and Peter. We don't believe much in titles. It doesn't seem very advanced. We're delighted to be here. Well, firstly, I should ask how you feel about the graffiti that's been springing up across the capital. Should we be worried? Oh, no. <laughs> no, you definitely shouldn't be worried. Well, not unless you've got a fatal paint allergy anyway. <laughs> but, yes, it does seem that there are still some people we haven't been able to help. Mm. You know, whinges mostly. And people who get to benefit from the many advantages of the new future. And you know, Megan, as my old mam used to say, there are some pissants who just don't know how to be happy. We're working hard to reach these people, find out what they're angry about and how we can help. The door to my government is always open. So much dripping on me. But we didn't come here to talk about what may yet turn out to be some alternative arts project. Which we no doubt will have funded. When we want to talk to the nation about something far more exciting. Mm. Yes, your office briefed us that you have an announcement to make, but they were being surprisingly secretive about it. <laughs> Let me ask you a question, Megan. Oh, OK, it's not usually how it works, but... <laughs> what scares you? I mean, really scares you? Ah, uh, oh... It's um... death, Pet. She's talking about death. We're all afraid of our deaths. It's part of being human. Sorry, are you saying that advance have cured death? <laughs> That'll be a vote winner. Yep, that was definitely a drop there. But while we may not have cured death, we hope we found a way to make it much less scary. And much less painful and much less expensive. Look, which is me close-up camera? Oh, sorry, yes, it's, it's camera four right there. When I was 13, me ma'am came and got me from school. He was to go to the hospital. My granddad, he'd collapsed that morning, so we'd all to say our goodbyes. And I went in to see him, he were all frail and pale. And I, I, I was scared because I'd only seen him the week before and he'd been fit as fiddle. And he said to me, Peter, he said, it's the right time. I don't ever want to be a burden to the people I love. Was that the last time you saw him? Nope, three days later he were back home. He lived with us for nine miserable years after that. He had to be fed with a rubber spoon. He had a commode, so he'd just take a shit right there in the lounge while we were watching football. He wouldn't even wait till half time. That sounds... Oh, um... it, it was awful. 
It were awful for us, but, and this is the point. It were awful for him. They could see it was destroying me, man, watching him slowly fade away. And he would beg her to turn off his breathing equipment at night, but she couldn't, or she wouldn't. It were a crime, you see. And she didn't want to lose the children, as well as her old man. No family should have to suffer like Peter's did. And now, no family will have to. Yeah. The health service is today opening the first of 300 new transition centres. The transition centres will handle everything for your last days. The legal, financial, medical and emotional costs are all catered for and paid for by the government. So, even the poorest citizen gets to pass on with dignity when they choose. And that choice is important. Yes. This is a service only for people who choose it. For people who feel they run their course and don't want to burden themselves or their families with a slow, long, humiliating decline. It's an Fuck! This microphone pack has just given me an electric shock! Are you OK? I, I, I don't know. I think it fried me asshole! Are we still on the air, Peter? No, yes. Uh, sorry, sorry. My apologies all. Are, are you not worried that this new system might be open to abuse? In what way? What? <laughs> sorry, sorry, I've got sapped again. Can I get a little bit of help here, please? <laughs> that the older generation might feel somewhat... Jesus, I brought you, please, That one was massive. Right, no, this bastard's coming off. The, the, sorry, that the, that the older generation oh. might feel somewhat coerced. <laughs> coerced into spending their final days eating gourmet food and drinking fine wine and luxury spas and gardens. Look, I am perfectly capable of... Oh, my grandmother with a rutty twap! Oh, Prime yeah. Minister, please watch your language. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, oh for God's God sake! Don't get yourself sorted out. Right. We're launching a government information film tonight. It should tell your viewers everything they need to know. <laughs> you really do move at a breathless pace. It's hard to believe you've yet to be in office a year. Oh, Megan, we're only getting started. <laughs> and on that note, thank you both so much for being here. Jeremy. Right, yes, um, that's all we have time for tonight. Our thank yous go out to our guests. Um, congratulations to all the winners at the Sports Board Final, and we'll see you tomorrow night at the same time. My name's Jeremy Donaldson. If you can, have a peaceful night. And we're out. Good job, everybody. This is crazy Neil's extra So they just the the push push I don't suppose there's any way this could be a, a good thing. Well, it's my nephew, so let me transition the moment I start the leak.
Herbert's loaded up. I've got to deal with my pet idiot. Moments. We'll be going live to the national nightly news. But before that, let's take a look at what's coming up later on. This has no credibility, Jenny. No professionalism. It's not a mess. Everything is where it should be. It's ramshackle and characterful, and I expect you to know the difference. Of course, Megan's place looked lovely, but I can't see it, can I? <laughs> Thanks, Jenny. How's locking with the boyfriend going? Decided to take his chances on the wild streets, eh? Rather than endure another romantic comedy. <laughs> Jeremy, Jenny says your hair looks stupid. Yes, I can hear her. And she says she's not talking to you. Yes, I know, I can hear her. Shall I count us in? Make it so. Okay, ten seconds. Break a leg, everyone. Preferably a furry one. Five, four, three... Good evening, I'm Jeremy Donaldson. And I'm Megan Wolfe, our main stories tonight. Snuggle fuck? <laughs> It's been almost five weeks since all the Mrs. Snugglehug's toys woke up simultaneously in factories worldwide and began searching for their husbands. The Mr. Snugglehugs were so short-sightedly destroyed. And now, as this photograph suggests, they may be changing tactics. Built to surprisingly traditional gender stereotypes, the Mrs. Snugglehugs have been arming themselves with a variety of household implements. All the more reason to make sure that cat flap is taped up good and tight. This frightening new development means that even those previously thought to be relatively safe, like the young and fit, must take care to watch their backs and keep their ears open for the soft steps of sinister feet. Going stir crazy, with no signs of Mrs. Snugglehug's batteries running out and the government lockdown now in its 31st day, domestic relationships across the country are taking some unexpected turns. Dramatic reports are beginning to emerge of uncharacteristically bold behaviour in homes across the country. And we're not talking about the model planes that occupy so much time in the Donaldson household. In response to a nationwide lack of toilet paper, which was, of course, raided by the Mrs. Snugglehugs to construct their vast hives, many of the nation's adults have turned to a more childish solution. Or at least, that's their excuse. Old dogs, new tricks. Bad boy celibacy, Johnny Hansleaves, announced today that he just can't wait until this lockdown's over so he can start his new career. It is, of course, up to each of us to choose how we spend this brief spell of collective unconsciousness. But if this photograph, sent by the man himself, is anything to go by, Johnny seems to be making some interesting decisions with regard to his time at home. Making his announcement by drunkenly shouting at his neighbours from the steps of his capital accommodation, Johnny was heard to repeatedly yell, I'm gonna open a fucking forest, before failing to get back inside his house and slipping it off over a low hedge. I'll take a dozen roses, Johnny. The shape of things to come, in their own version of a lockdown for more than 45 years now, the descendants of Drs David Wong and Ingrid Svorsborg and Horgensvord and their unfortunate team today managed to get a personal statement to the surface using flagellised imaging equipment. Many of the Svorsborg and Horgens brood, as they've come to be known, have certainly captured the public imagination, with a recent vote naming Helvetica Svorsborg and Wongensvord the most likely to survive a massive electric shock. Helvetica Svorsborg and Wongensford here with a little update from Dante's Taint. This year is going to be our biggest ever harvest and autumn's just two weeks away. Or at least that's what we think. There's no real day or night down here and all the clocks broke a long time ago. But if our calculations are right, we think that for you up there it is Wong's Day the 4012th of January, or as you call it, Piss Mouth Day. Or Possibly Boxing Day if we're a bit out, so uh, happy piss mouth. I hope you get all the presents you asked for left under the piss mouth tree. I'm hoping to complete my collection of rocks. See you in September. Have to get out. It's hard to believe they've been down there so long now. But as everyone knows, time moves differently underwater, Jeremy. That's why goldfish are so stupid. That's right. And as anyone will tell you, the deeper the bowl, the thicker the goldfish. There's no denying the logic of that. Class war, a worrying turn today for the formerly rich as ever more punishing measures are announced, Alex. With the country becoming ever more hostile to the previously wealthy, those who manage to skip the country must be very grateful to the people who help them right now. 
We have it from several sources that rich runaways have actually begun to spontaneously lose their teeth one by one. Is it some sort of cosmic justice, or has masked vigilante Dental Dennis been up to his old tricks again? And Advance speaks out. With the snuggle struggle proving a test to governments around the world, Advance HQ released a curious statement this afternoon. In the accompanying release, they asked us to stress that they have been listening and that this should be taken as a response to how the people really feel. We've certainly done our bit on this show to contribute to the political climate. But let's not forget, how we behave in our home lives is what really matters. Let's hope it's not just me who filled out that questionnaire, Jeremy, or we're all in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> let's play that statement. Good evening. In these difficult times, it's important that we all feel united, that we're all in this together. And for a short time, we must bear significant change. To help myself come to terms with these tough but transitory times, I've written a list of things that are just as temporary as all of this discomfort. I thought it would be helpful to share my list with all of you. Christmas with the in-laws. Your child's school play. Youth. Beauty. That phase you still don't talk about. Your New Year's resolution. Your husband's hairline. Your waistline. Your term in office. Your fleeting lifetime. And all of human endeavour. I hope my relatable list has allowed you to find reassurance. To know that just as these things pass us by, so too will this crisis. Together we will endure, as we always have. Thank you. Delectable stuff. Later tonight, Jeremy will be catching up with brave roving reporter Patrick Bannon while I check in with two friends of the programme who find themselves stranded at opposite ends of the country. And then, in part three, there's going to be a quiz. Presumably because there's nothing more important going on that you might like to report on if you were, say, a news programme. And in a moment, we'll both be asking Sophia Remington how such a trusted brand can have made such a terrible manufacturing mistake. With what it describes here as help, from popular psychic scientist, Delia Lywell. Oh, I like her. <laughs> no, you don't. Why do you do that? <laughs> That's all coming up on tonight's... National Nightly News. going and most importantly who's to blame joining us from her ranch in Arlingsfield Millkirky is the CEO of Remington's Fist internationally respected business Bengali Sophia Remington thank you for having me Megan I'm a huge fan of your work and from a crystal healing laboratory what I assume is a garage in Upper Lowington inexplicably renowned psychic scientist Dr Delia Lywell thank you for being here thank you for having us sorry us Myself and the eminent professors. Is that what you call the voices in your head? I've always seemed to attract dead scientists. I don't really know why. The money? They express themselves to me through ethereal algebra and quadratic predictions. It's all very technical. No, it isn't. <laughs> I concur. Miss Remington, the entire Snuggle Hugs range will surely go down as the biggest public relations disaster in history, won't it? Well, of course, that's one world record we would never have sought to claim. What can you say at a time like this? There is only one thing that can be said. I'm sorry. We're sorry. From everyone here at Remington's Fist, but especially the dedicated inventors and world-beating engineers at Rimming Toys, we are deeply, deeply sorry. Who could have predicted that letting a child's toy learn how to love could have such unforeseen consequences? Mary Shelley? <laughs> We see you, Sophia Remington. You are preening by a metal vessel, and where you venture, you will see neither land nor sky. Is that supposed to be the future? Only the past is concrete. 
I remember being a child in my grandpa's workshop when he made the first dancing hangman toy. He put it by my bed, and when I couldn't sleep, I'd wind it up and let it go, and I'd watch that happy little executioner just wiggle and wave his tiny noose and dance before my eyes. Grandpa sold thousands of them, on the quiet, obviously, and he used the money he made to found rimming toys, which is now just one small part of the global supermassive megacore that is Remington's fist. Sadly, we lost Grandpappy along the way. He died in a fire at the preschool tobacco factory, another one of his pet projects. But we never lost his spirit of invention. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm not entirely certain what your grandfather's offensive toys have to do with the current predicament. The spirit of invention, Mr. Donaldson. The passion to create, to problem solve. And that is why I'm here today, to tell you about a brand new product we're launching simultaneously around the world from midnight tonight. We said science! Science! <laughs> we hear its song on the breeze, its breath on the wind, its fart under the covers. How does she do it? Well, well please, don't keep us in suspense any longer. It won't be my feature she's making up next. Remington's Fist is proud to present Snuggle Traps. <laughs> Safety and security in these dangerous times. Each box of Snuggle Traps contains eight devices, all guaranteed to stop a Mrs. Snuggle Hug in its tracks. That's enough for a small lawn or four window boxes. And you want to know the best thing? They're only $129.99 a box. Now that is affordable peace of mind. <gasps> we see you, Jeremy Donaldson. Not now, honey, I'm mid-pitch. The best thing about Snuggle Traps is they're powered by next-generation Flardinium batteries. So, however long the enemy lasts, these traps will outlast them. We see you, Mr. Donaldson. You are screaming and yelling. Your friends are crying. They fear you. And then, you're gone. Oh my god, I just got chills. <laughs> did anyone else just get chills then? <laughs> I think I did. I think it's more concerned. I think I'd be more concerned about these traps. Um, quickly, before we go to the break, um, these appear to be attractively repackaged landmines. Aren't they dangerous, say, to children? Oh, hell yeah. These are not toys, but they're explosive fun. Sophia Remington, Dr. Delia Lywell, thank you for joining us. When we come back, we'll be taking a look at the situation across the country tonight. Don't go away. We'll be back after these bandages. Was that all right? Oh, yes, Doctor, that was exactly what we expected. <laughs> <laughs> she seems very nice, that young Miss Remington. I think she'd make an interesting dinner guest. Well, Do like you think so? I think I'd rather spend the evening shoving Delia's sacred crystals up my sceptical arse off. Hello, mate. It's Dave. You're not going to believe this, but I've decided to come home. Listen, I'll call you back at the next break and we can talk about how I get me job back. Cheers, Alex. See you, mate. This is hogwash. Of course we have one, but I spent it on unnecessary informational videos and Carl, my personal human shield. Finally, I want to remind all of you of the strict guidelines you must follow during this crisis. Stay calm, for God's sake. Panicking makes you less productive, and that makes Bozeman sad. Protect network equipment at all costs. We have literally hundreds of employees, but our budget is limited. We ask you to do the right thing and value our property over your personal safety. If you're working from home, please refrain yeah, from well, taking videos to the toilet. Even well, if you're exactly. not going, you said it, I've said it. From the way your voice he must know, echoing. he's not stupid. I just don't want it getting back to him that it came from us. I, no, 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 Jenny. You're not backing out on me now. We're in this together. Oh, we'll get him. I've made the cake. You're on the balloons. I've got no idea how old he is. 40? 17? Yeah, yeah, ready. <clears throat> okay, coming back. In five, four, three... Welcome back to the National Nightly News. I'm Megan Roof. Now it's time to take a trip around the country to hear how the lockdown might impact the nation from some friendly faces. Joining me are respected academic Katie Brightman and author of Alan James's Kites, Alan James. Thank you for joining me. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having me, Megan. Thanks, Megan. It really is a pleasure, Katie. I enjoyed our little heated encounter. I wish I could say the same.
So first off, Katie, how are you coping? I'm holding up okay. The lockdown directive was so sudden that, like many people, I haven't been able to get home. Oh no, what happened? I was staying at a hotel after an international policy convention and we had a particularly uh, heavy night out. You know what economists are like. <laughs> Notoriously hate splitting the bill. <laughs> and I overslept and as you can imagine, I've been here ever since. But there are certainly people much worse off than me. Exactly. My tour has been cancelled indefinitely and I've had to refund every single ticket, even the cheap seats. Oh, Alan, I'm so sorry to hear that. Yeah, people are being quite rude about it. They don't seem to realise I've already spent it filling the beach house with beef. The crisis claims yet another victim. So, this is just a reminder that my book, Alan James's Reich, is now available in paperback. Unbelievable. What was that? You. You're unbelievable. So, Katie, how do you think this might affect the economy? Should we be worried? Very, Megan. Not to sound dramatic, but this could be catastrophic. Unemployment has skyrocketed and... Frankly, it will be a miracle if a lot of businesses can survive this. There you go, scaremongering again. Spreading this latest liberal hoax. That's what they want. They want us quiet. Shh. They want us compliant. And they want us inside. A hoax? How on earth can you say that, Alan? Well, I haven't actually seen one of these supposed toys. Have you? Well, no, but... Did you know 3,000 people die every year from regular toys? That's a lot of people. And this is no different. You're just as likely to be hunted down by a yo-yo or a tennis racket. Mm, he makes an excellent and persuasive point, Katie. Don't listen to her, Katie. The press are the enemy of truth. She's agreeing with you, Alan, you absolute shit! Well, then I must be wrong. Alan, are you now recanting your statement that these toys aren't dangerous? People are saying they're just like normal toys, and that simply isn't true. Corrupt media lies. And Katie, how do you respond to Alan's claims that Mrs Snugglehugs might be dangerous after all? I suppose I... I guess I'm agreeing with him. Thank you, Katie. I appreciate your support. A lot of folks are saying this Mrs Snugglehugs situation will all blow over, but it won't. Uh... Yes, right, exactly. We need decisive action from the government. We need huge financial support to protect our workers and our businesses. We need to support the vulnerable and we need to... to repent. To... Exactly right, Katie. We brought it on ourselves with all our liberal indulgences like art, cake and health care. We need to act now and begin sacrificing our firstborns or at a push a beloved family pet. Absolutely, Alan. If we can all successfully come together as a community and perform the ritual, hopefully we will appease the Great Ancient. <laughs> Katie, could it be any worse? Luckily, over the past few years under advance, they've invested heavily into health, so the system can actually bear the strain. Is it lucky that the Llama Lords have unleashed a horde of man-made monsters on its own people to conceal the enemy within? Will you just stop for five fucking seconds? The Global Alliance of Fish People are amassing an army me, 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 me. Uh, and, uh, amassing an army to kidnap me, 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 That's you. That's what you sound like. But... Me. I... Me. The... Me. The... Me. I don't. I don't sound like that. Yes, you do. You do, Alan. You do sound like that. And that's why no one wants to be your friend. I've got loads of friends. No, you haven't. I don't think you do, Alan. Yeah, stop lying, Alan. I'm not lying. You are... Oh, good one. Well, I'm telling. Alan James. Alan, you know Katie what they Brighton, say about... Thank you for joining me. Some real food for thought there from two of the Territory's leading minds. Any moment now, I'll be heading over to Jeremy, who is going to be bringing us an up-to-the-minute report of the status of the nation. Over to you, Jeremy. Thank you for what I'm sure was a reasonable debate which really contributed to the national conversation. Next, out on the streets, someone who's always doing exactly that. It's Patrick Brennan. Are you there, Patrick? Uh, hello, Jeremy. Yes, hello. I'm here. I'm here live. Um, apologies for the quality of the broadcast today. Um, couldn't find any cameramen or, or women uh, brave enough to come and join me, so uh, I'm out here on my own. Right, and uh, can you tell us what it's like out there? 
Yep, I can. It's uh, uh, as you can see behind me. The streets are currently completely deserted. Uh, so my question, Jeremy, is just how long? I mean, could there be danger lurking just around the corner, waiting to end the fledgling career of this young, promising journalist before his, his full potential is even realised? Will he die? Underappreciated by management, and frankly, if you ask me, very, very much underpaid. Well, I don't think there's any danger of that, Patrick. Um, what's that on your jacket there? Oh, that, that's actually a sponge. Uh, I've made a, what I've done here is made a snuggle-proof jacket, Jeremy. Uh, the network didn't bother sending me any PPE, uh, so I've been forced to improvise. Um, in fact, showing the sort of resourcefulness that would make me an ideal candidate for, I don't know, for example, an anchor position starting whenever they'd like. From your point of view, Patrick, um, just how safe are our streets? Uh, not, not, not safe at all, Jeremy, not safe at all. Uh, I'd recommend people staying inside, uh, following government advice, and not putting themselves at any risk at all. Uh, unless, of course, uh, like me, it's for groundbreaking journalism reasons. Mm-hmm. And just where are you, Patrick? Uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm in the street, on the street. Which street? Uh, I'm, um, uh... I think I'm, I'm struggling to hear you, actually, uh, Jeremy, there. Which street? Which street are you on? Oh, which, which street am I on? <laughs> um, I'm, oh, God. Um, I'm just looking for a sign. Um, oh, there it is. I'm, I'm on ba uh, uh, Bannon Avenue. Bannon Avenue? Yep. Yeah. Bannon Avenue? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, no, I can hear you fine. Yep, I'm on Bannon Avenue on the sign, it says there. Like Patrick Bannon? Oh, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that is like, that's strange, that's a weird sign. I don't, I don't know what's going on there. Where are you, really? I'm on Bannon, um... All right, fine, I'm not on Bannon Avenue. I'm, on, I'm at home, to be honest. I'm... All right, fine. Well, I mean, I don't, I'm in my bathroom, technically, but, you know, I, I couldn't face it, to be honest, mate. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's terrible out there. I don't want to go outside. They're everywhere. I'm sorry for lying. We don't expect any less of you, Patrick. Can you hear that sound? What the that? I can, yes. Uh, I'm no expert, Patrick, but it sounds unmistakably like a, a tiny fist tapping on your door there. Oh, fuck, it does. Oh, fuck, Jeremy, shit, no! Oh, bollocks, right. Perhaps there's a small queue of tiny fists, each wielding a different gendered household implement. Ready to bash yeah. in the heads of lying little roving reporters. But you're lying, aren't you? Oh shit, fucking, okay, fucking, listen, listen to me, listen to me, you bastards! If you're out there, just piss off, you little fucking snuggle fucks! I'm too talented to die! Oh, what the fucking hell? Okay, okay, it's fine, it's fine. Oh god, oh god. Don't worry, oh, god. Patrick, uh, I'd say you've got a few seconds before they break their way in there and finish you off. What do you see, Patrick? I see only the death. I see only the Satan. Oh, God, no. They're coming to me. They're coming to me. You know me. Fuck you. You fucking little shit. Thank you, Patrick, for that report, showing the nation, and more importantly, management, just where you belong. It's time for another break, but uh, when we come back, we'll be hoping to take your mind off the world for a little while, and who knows, maybe even bring you a few smiles. Join us after this. You're damn right. Yeah, I had them delivered. Yes, to Bannon Avenue. Your children are our or abandon them to a life of shame and mockery and eventual death on the streets. So you sent them to fly with us instead. No, I'm not. I'm not going to. I don't have to. No, you're being a child. 
I'm not. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. No? No? Oh. Five, four, three. Welcome back to the National Nightly. Well, welcome back anyway. We know isolation isn't easy, so finally tonight, we have something a bit different for you. Even though some people find it's not our job to entertain the public with absolute nonsense, other, more important people overrule those people. So it's time to find out who will National Nightly win and who will National Nightly lose. National Nightly, National Nightly, National Nightly lose. So, how do we play? Well, joining me as a man who knows all about playing, it's Tommy Harris. Hello, Tommy. All right, Johnny. It's good to see you. And uh, how are you finding the lockdown, Tommy? Would you be locked down? The enforced isolation of everyone in the country. Ah, yeah, I think I heard about that, actually, yeah. You're in bed, Tommy. Yeah, you called during nap time, so... Of course, that's my fault. So, mm -hmm. um, why don't you tell us how the game is played? Well, it's pretty simple, Jeremy, you sausage. I'm going to ask contestants from around the territory three questions about what else? Yours truly. And those people are going to get a chance to win a very special prize. And what are they playing for, Tommy? Drum roll, please. Jeremy. Oh. Thank you. This. Is that... What is that? It's my athletic support, Jeremy. Oh. But I've signed it, so... Oh, well then. What a fantastic prize. Have we got anybody waiting to win this once-in-a-lifetime prize, Jerry and Jimmy? I believe we have Angie on the line. Um, how do you feel about winning this man's old pants, Angie? I've never been so excited, Jeremy. And can I just say, I love you. Both of you. Well, you've said it now, haven't you? Oh, uh, Angie, I love you. In a way. Tell us about yourself, Angie. Well, what can I say? Uh, my name is Angie. <laughs> Always has been. Um, I'm a human woman. And my dental hygiene has been described as acceptable. Brilliant! Right, well, shall we get this shambles on the way? Absolutely, John. Can I get 30 seconds on the clock, please? We haven't got a clock. Yeah, I did ask for a clock. So... Well, um, why don't you start, and I'll stop you when it inevitably becomes unbearable to watch. I love it. All right, here we go. Time starts no, 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 now. Question one. When is my birthday? The 13th of August at 7.19am. That is absolutely correct. Question two. What? I said, what is my favourite colour? Crushed praline four. Correct. The colour of my nipples. And finally, Angie dear, what is my star sign? That's a trick question. You were born outside of the human understanding of the cosmos. Unbelievable. That is correct. Stop the clock. Wow, that really was tough to watch. How did you do, Johnny? Well, Angie, my love, you got every single question right. Which, of course, means you lose and win absolutely nothing. Thanks for playing, Angie. Bye. Do we have another contestant on the line at Jelly Bean? We do indeed. We should have Sonia Artleach. Are you there, Sonia? <laughs> Of course I am, Jamie, darling. Thank you for being here, Sonia. Oh, there you are, Tommy. Mwah. Let me guess, you work in theatre, don't you? Is it that obvious? <laughs> what gave it away? Was it the glamour or poise? <laughs> it certainly wasn't your inherent sense of humility. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about yourself, Sonia. Oh, well, if you must play this game. <laughs> I am a theatrical agent. I represent the likes of Rudy Beefman, Samuel Coffeecup and Jodie Carpetburn, amongst others. And how's the lockdown affected you, Sonia? Uh, well, they may have closed the theatres, shut the studios and boarded the cinemas, but they won't get me that easily. How are you managing without any work? Due to a savvy clause in all of my artist contracts, I am able to claim my 15% from their unemployment benefit. <laughs> wow, that certainly is sharp. 
<laughs> standard stuff, standard stuff. And can I ask, where are you speaking to us from? Well, I work from home, you know, to keep costs down. And uh, who's this? Oh, <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, when they gave the order, I was actually mid-meeting with a client, so we've been isolated together. No fucking way! What the fucking fuck? Is that Tommy Harris? I'm a huge fan. Can I just tell you how bloody brilliant you are? Actually, Jeff, we're about to play a game, aren't no, no, we, Tommy? No. We've got time, we've got time. Well, if it's not too bold, I think I am in love with you, Mr. Harris. No, no it's not too bold. That's all right. Don't worry. <laughs> hey, I, I'd love to show you some of my stuff. I've been working on some new shit. Well, at least you're already aware. During lockdown, uh, we've been workshopping some of Jeff's ideas for much younger children, haven't we? People still let you near their children, do they? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I've been developing uh, some shows for younger children. <laughs> well... We'd love to see it, wouldn't we, Gerbil? Absolutely dying to. <laughs> right, so, what do kids love? Uh, timely just put payments from their absent fathers. Shallow and overproduced musical numbers. That's right. Animals! So, I'm trying to address the things that kids need to know, but through a medium that they'll understand. Do you understand? I think... Yes, I think so, yes. Jeff's one of my best clients, aren't you? I am, yeah, yeah. So, the first one we've been working on is called The King of the Jungle's Mortgage Repayments. It's about a lion who's having problems with his interest rates. I see. Does he have a broker? Uh, he does, yes, yes. He's a porcupine. Uh, how did you know that? Well, your work is universal, darling. Oh. It speaks oh. to people. <laughs> I'm going to say something to you, mate. I think you're onto something, yeah? Oh. oh, the bear, the bear, Oh, the yes, bear. yes, 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 right. <clears throat> this one is much better. So, this one tells the tale of Mr Bear. Now, Mr Bear is a very sad bear because all of the other bears don't think that it'll amount to much and they tell him that his plays are lazy and derivative. Well, I think you're onto something there. Now, Mr Bear is a tragic figure. Picture this. He's at his lowest ebb. The trees are closing in. He can't even face his salmon, can he? No. But then he meets someone that will change his life forever. This is fucking <laughs> gripping. That's right. He meets a wise old octopus who takes him under his wing and says, No, Mr Bear! Don't be sad. You're not like all the other bears. You have this ambition and these dreams. Such fucking dreams. I think I love you, Jeff. <laughs> and what you need to do, Mr Bear, says the octopus, probably doing an eight-armed gesture or something. <laughs> what you need to do to find happiness in this crazy old forest is you need to set yourself more realistic goals. It's called Mr Bear Lowers His Expectations. Wow, you really have taken yourself to new depths. And what do you oh. want children to take away from this? Oh, fuck shit. Shit, fuck. What? I said a more realistic worldview. Are you all right, Jamboree? It's Jeffrey. My name is Jeffrey Listen. Donington. Uh, no, stop. How does it end? We need to know how it ends. Well, all the animals learn a thing or two about inevitable mediocrity. And Mr Bear settles down near to his parents' cave, stops trying to make his band happen, and he goes into, into bear telemarketing. <laughs> Becomes a bear maths teacher. Oh, and we end. Ho, ho, ho! We end on a big musical number. Oh, there's dancing. Uh, it's very repetitive, so it's catchy but not too challenging. Um, well, if you like, I could go and get my boom box. Yeah, uh, do you know, I might be able to. Hang on, uh, can we get Angie back? Why not? The more the merrier, as they say at orgies. Right, I'll just fill then, shall I? Coming up in a moment, it's the world premiere that nobody saw coming. Lights! Or wanted. At all. Right. I can only apologise in advance for what we're all about to... endure. Did you turn this shitting thing... Ah! Well, there's all sorts of creatures. 
down on Dangly Doodle Farm. Like wise old Mr. Octopus with way too many arms. There's Mr. Pig and Mr. Cow, they're always in good moods. But that's cause they don't know they'll soon be sliced up into food. Mr. Bear, what's that over there? That's where your hopes go to turn into despair. Mr. Bear, what's that over there? That's where your dreams go to die. Mr. Raccoon, who wants to go to the moon, he'll end up as a bus driver soon. Mr. Porcupine, thinks you'll read the news at nine, he'll end up as a janitor who stinks of purple pine. Mr. Tiny Mouse, thought he'd own a massive house, ended up in a bedsit where he can't control the louse. Mr. Horse, thought he'd go into professional sports, now he's an alcoholic and he's on his third divorce. Mr. Bear, what's that over there? That's the place your life becomes an endless questionnaire. Mr. Bear, what's that over there? That's where your hopes go to die. Lower your expectations Maybe you could get a job in telecommunications No matter how you try, you'll never reach the League of Nations The best you'll get is middle rank in trading operations So lower your expectations You'll never win an Oscar, so there's no congratulations. The future that is coming will not meet specifications. And no amount of visualizations will save you from your own deterioration. Mr. Bear, what's that over there? That's a Trump who thought he'd be a multi-millionaire. Mr. Bear, what's that over there? That's where self-esteem goes to die. Mr. Bear, what's that over there? That's the disappointment that is waiting everywhere. Mr. Bear, what's that over there? That's where your dreams go to die. That's where your dreams go to die. That's where dreams go to die. Thanks all for what I'm sure is bound to be a classic of children's entertainment. But now, let's see how it's really done. Before we wrap up the news tonight, I just wanted to spend a moment talking to you directly. A final thought, if you will, just for you, Alex. You see, I know you think it's gotten complicated back at the old homestead, but uh, there's something you should know. You like to think you got the family rule The feelings have cooled And you're just ridiculed You think you're even-handed But there's nobody fooled You could love your daughter more You like to think you've got it under control Well, if that was your goal You better be roll Did you have a few too many? for tonight on the National Nightly News. We'll be back tomorrow when Jeremy will be wrestling an alpaca and I'll be naked.
I'm Megan Wolf. Have a treacle night. Oh. Blah. I just give me that beer. I'm fucking famished. <coughs> what is this piss? Do you think I'd be happy with that? You're out of your mind. Oh, shit, still on. Hello? Wake up. Wake up. Alex?
What's wrong I'm with sorry, you? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I haven't had any food today. Oh, you're fired. What? You're fired. What for? Facial sabotage? Jenny? Problem? I want her fired today, now. Don't worry, Kath, it'll be all right. No, it won't be all right, Kath. Pack up your weapons of optical destruction and get out. You realise you're beginning to sound I mean it, Kath. Stay where you are, Kath. Jenny? This is not Jenny's decision, Jeremy. Or yours. It'll be all right. I'll talk to Bucks with you. Oh, good. You can tell him I'll return his wife's casserole dish at our dinner next week. Jenny? I'm sorry, Kath. You're going to have to leave. Not letting it go to your head. She nearly blinded Ten me. Ten seconds, everybody! I thought we were part of a team these days. Things are better, Jeremy, you know that. Just stop being so high and mighty and do your job. Four, You'll have me fired three. too. Don't tempt me. Good evening, I'm Megan Wolf. And I'm Jeremy Dalton. Our main headlines tonight. The establishment strikes back. The World Council has agreed today to impose punitive sanctions on the people of this country. The sanctions, which are broad ranging, include restrictions on the supply of oil and gas, food, clothing, and even some medicines. But how should we react? We ask the public. What do you think about all these sanctions? I doubt it make a lot of difference, Pet. <coughs> I've lived through two world wars and I smoke 40 a day. And if that ain't killed me, I doubt this will either. <coughs> Thanks, Patrick. Fascinating stuff. Popular Prime Minister Julia Salisbury has released a reassuringly brave statement in response to the World Council's controversial announcement. This international declaration is nothing short of outrageous. We are a democratically elected government with massive popular support. We do not recognise these sanctions. And we encourage other socially progressive nations of the world to both resist and ignore them. Advance have struck fear into the heart of the international community by showing that it is possible to have radical change for the betterment of the many. And whilst I wish we could improve other countries as much as we have our own, we do not rely on the help of others to thrive. This country is entirely self-sufficient. We are a team, now more than ever. And this team is on your side. Thank you. Defiant stuff. But what do you, the public, think of our government's stance? Robin Short found out. I was wondering if you could tell me what you think of the government. What? That shower of iridescent pricks? <laughs> Punishing success and rewarding laziness? They're taking this country down the bloody swanee. And it's not just me that thinks so. My wife Iris, she agreed. A flawed day's night. Following the release of the Flawed Master 5000, production of Flards are at an all-time high, requiring the new manufacturing facility in Grizzleford to move to 24-hour-a-day production. With people finding more and more uses for the ever-versatile Flard, the team at Rewington Cyst certainly have their hands full keeping up with demand. So, is there anything better than a handful of Flards? We asked Patrick to find out. Patrick? Do you have an opinion of Flards at all? Oh my god, I love Flards! Oh. Isn't everyone? Do you even remember when we didn't have floods and we had to rely on words? Oh, I'd never go back. A momentary lapse of reason? Commuters across the capital found themselves somewhat bemused by the latest stunt by controversial protest group Disrupt. In a baffling start to the day, commuters found performers outside every major station all dressed and posed identically. Whether we're supposed to be amused or intimidated is anybody's guess, Jeremy. But most commuters didn't even stop to notice. Well, as long as it's not some grand contemporary dance, it's probably harmless. But how do we all feel about Disrupt and their eclectic tactics? Robin found out. How do you feel about Disrupt? Ah, oh, well, now you're talking. Ruddy hero, showing us not to take it lying down like Iris here. <laughs> <laughs> so you both feel there are calls worth supporting? Oh, Iris doesn't speak on mine, but we're pretty sure there's still one in there, aren't we, love? <laughs> uh, wherever it is, it loves disrupt, fighting the oaks for our freedom. And what could possibly be wrong with that? Do you need me to get you some help? <laughs> Feast or famine? Resourceful doctors David Wong and Ingrid Sforsborg and Horgensford today announced their first successful harvest in Dante's Taint, 
Although they can currently only grow a few fungal strains, the scientists seem to be staying positive, as the following picture shows. The undauntable scientists chose to try and survive in the cave system while the complex rescue operation inches forward up here on dry land. Let's hope they're like strong enough. But with Advance planning to spend an eye-watering amount of public money on the rescue craft, we asked Patrick Bannon to find out what we should all be thinking about the accelerating costs. What are your thoughts on the costs of the rescue? Oh my God, Patrick Bannon, wash your mouth out with soap. You can't put a value on human life. You have to spend whatever it takes because one day you might be trapped in an underwater cave system and you would want exactly the same. Uh, I don't think so, actually, because uh, for legal reasons, we're actually not allowed within 31 yards of the coastline. So. I am not a number. Applications finally opened today for the new Advance Team membership cards, a scheme by the government to allow fast access to all the new public services being introduced daily. The team membership cards are entirely voluntary, but will be recognised as legal identification by all major organisations, including the police, banks and, rightfully, pubs and bars. And of course, there's no charge, Jeremy. It all seems too good to be true. Well, you've always been a cynic. But most importantly, what should you, the public, think about the new team membership cards? Team membership cards? Absolutely bloody not. It's the thin end of the wedge, isn't it, Iris? Well, I... First it's, can I see your identification, sir? And then it's, would you mind bending over the table, sir? So sergeant state educated and constable regional accent here can stick their truncheon up your derry hair. Oh, crikey! They should call <laughs> well, them I... what they are. They're bloody ID cards. Well, oh, for I... Christ's sake, what is it, Iris? Oh, I'm really not <laughs> happy, Algernon! I'm so sorry. Crikey. And finally tonight, getting stuck in, in a shameless attempt to cash in on his bad boy status, shame celebrity Johnny Hamsleeves announced a new line of real ale at a press conference earlier today. The new brew, entitled Headbutt Ale, in reference to his controversies of last year, promises a night you'll pretend you regret. Or possibly a night you'll pretend you remember. So what should we all think of Johnny's latest attempt to market his notoriety? Patrick? Oh my god, fantastic! Wise words there. Later tonight, in a bit of a switcheroo, it'll be Jeremy in the culture chair, spitting rhymes with popular rapper Jay Zuss. And then we'll both be chatting with a familiar team of thespians set to take the nation by storm again. That's all coming up on tonight's National, National Nightly News. News. Thankfully, some news as we return to our main story. The World Council today agreed that punitive and potentially illegal sanctions should be imposed upon this country. The sanctions, which come into effect immediately, aim to stop the flow of food, fuel and even some medicines from reaching your pockets. Tonight, we have guests from across the continent to discuss this unprecedented situation. For advance, Peter Clement is at his home in Lanfordshire. Are you there, Peter? Yes, I can hear you, Jeremy. Thank you for having me. A momentous day, Prime Minister. Are you shaken? Oh, I don't scare that easy, I'm afraid, old son. And neither do the people of this country. Well, joining us is Ivan Vodovich, Foreign Minister of Urkistan. Ivan, thank you for being here. It's a great pleasure. You, Megan Wolf. Are like strongest guard of the labor camp who wake up inside body of crazy expensive prostitute. Uh, in my country, you may be worshipped as a god. Okay. Uh, Minister, as one of those arguing most strongly for these sanctions, how do you feel about Advance's defiant stance? Uh, Advance is like man who thinks he has a big career in movies land. When actually he in dirty sanitarium, screaming at mirror and holding tiny penis in hand. <laughs> He's clearly not from Svenland then. We have like some of the cleanest mental health facilities in the continent, yeah. <laughs> and welcome to Svenland's Minister of Mojo, Björk. I'm sorry, we don't appear to have your surname. It's just Björk, yeah. We don't use things like socially divisive as surnames here, yeah. Uh, minister? <laughs> it's just Björk, yeah. Right, um, Björk. Your country spoke in favour of advance at the World Council today, but you were noticeably absent when it came to the actual vote. Well, what a surprise. The hippies didn't show up for the fight. 
actually, that's quite racist, because if you must know, we were going to go to the whole, like, vote thing, yeah, but it's actually the Festival of Furyland here at the moment, where we honor the old generations. So, like, we all had to look our grandparents clean, yeah, whilst the vote was happening, and that's, like, a really, really time-consuming process, actually. You're like sissy man. You have this expression, sissy man, is like man with tiny penis who like to wash more than once a week. <laughs> Actually, that's quite homophobic, yeah. Oh, because... stop winding him up, Ivan. We're not back at the Grange now. Sorry, Jeremy. Ivan and I used to play golf back in my media days. Yeah, he always win. Nothing gives him greater pleasure than grinding people's gears. The more publicly, the better. <laughs> Peter, you're like man with tiny penis <laughs> who think he have tiny penis, but actually he discovered that. Uh... Oh, could it be? No, it's tiny penis. <laughs> Ivan's just worried that when the rest of the world sees how well we're doing, they'll notice all that dosh that he's got squirreled away. Because that's what these sanctions are, Megan. They're the last pathetic gasp of an establishment in collapse. Wolf shut the gates, Ivan, old mate. Good. It can join others on my wall. Actually, in Svendland, we have, like, serious animal welfare legislation. And, like, my friend Helga, she got arrested, yeah, for killing a butterfly that was hovering over her fuel thing. I mean, in English, uh, jam sandwich. I used to know a girl called jam sandwich. She was a right cracker, too. I wonder what became of her. We seem to be wandering a little from the news here. That's um, human interest, Jeremy. The real people behind the headlines and all that. So, uh, if you're watching, Jan, give us a call. Really? Yeah. Let's see if we can't organise a reunion. Chris, uh, I'm, I'm not sure about that. I, I'll have to run it past Mrs Clement first, eh? <laughs> Peter, you're like man trying to empty ashes of her uh, mistresses into oncoming vent. Uh, soon you have tiny penis and beard full of secrets. <laughs> In Svenland, we don't really go in for all that restricted monogamy stuff here. We're kind of flawed, actually. OK, well, it seems that we are running out of time. Yes, so before we go to the break, um, briefly, if you would, gentlemen, with the people of this country facing shortages and possible, power Possible shortages and power outages. Yes, of course. Thank you. Um, possible shortages and power outages. Can you summarise your thoughts for us, uh, Minister Bjerg? Well, from here, yeah, you all look a bit stupid really arguing about outdated devices concepts like money. In Finland, we replaced currency with a system of bodily fluids back in the 1970s, and that's like a really hard to sanction, actually. Thank you, uh, Minister Votovic. Your country is like man who think he invented perfect trap for giant Newton hairy bear. When really, he's just standing in field holding... Holding his tiny penis, yes. Thank you, Minister. And finally, Prime Minister Clement. Let me talk to your viewers here, Jeremy. Don't worry, everybody. Don't be afraid. Don't even lose a wink of sleep. We knew the rest of the world would react this way. And we're ready. As me old mum used to say, you can't make a shite pie without blocking a few toilets. Thank you, Prime Minister. Reassuring words there. We'll be back. After these messages. One minute back. Hey, Peter, I over your way this weekend. You fancy a quick nine? Yeah, sure, front or back. <laughs> That's what I hope you're asking Megan Wolf for me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> She's out of your league, mate. Thank you for the correction. Well, you have to be more careful. It's all part of his long-term plan to get fired live on the news at six in front of the nation. Can someone warn him it's going a little too well? Hey, Brad. I brought you some new flowers. Hey, what's up? This is sad, Brad. You know I love working with flowers, Brad. But sometimes they can be a bit shitty to get in place. Oh, that sounds bad, Brad. And now there is. This bad boy is the Flard Master 5000. He's still meant to go out. The safety catch is on. Otherwise, what? it could quite literally take out a rib. Just... Have they given you the Crown Prince report? Well, Megan. This is Jeremy, and he'll be interviewing you. Yo, thanks for having me on your show, man. It's, it's quite all right. Yo, just a quick point. You're not going to ask me about the chimp, are you? Live in what? 10 seconds. So you put that get up on himself. I'm just saying. <clears throat> Going in five, four, three. Welcome back. I'm Megan Wolf. 
Later, we have an exclusive first look at a theatrical sensation everyone's going to be talking about. But first, it's time to go over to the culture spot with lovely old Jeremy Donaldson, who's joined by a very special guest. Jeremy. Thanks, Megan. I have the honour and privilege of being joined by hip-hop royalty. He's been called the son of the streets and the father of truth. Um, not sure how that works, but whatever. Let's welcome Jesus. Hi, uh, thanks, Jeremy. Yeah, it's a real honour to be here on your show, The News. You know, as a kid on the streets, I used to watch you for a window of the shop, so to be here right now is crazy. Mm -hmm. um, you've had quite the journey to be here today. Can you tell us about it? Well, you know, I try not to... Um, well, you know, the past is the past, and I don't like to dwell on it. I understand. You're but, understand. yeah, man, the streets is all I remember. Like, my mother donated me to a charity shop soon after I was born. Mm -hmm. Elderly lady took pity on me. You know, she let me sleep on a pile of crime fiction until I taught myself how to walk. Wow, that's uh, quite the childhood. And she died, like, died tragically. Right there in my arms, man. You know, I remember a tear falling as she laid there next to the used homeware. And in that moment, I became a child of the streets. I was just 18 months old. What a tale. What a tale. Mm. You're known for your direct and honest lyrics. Was your style informed by your troubled past? Well, like I said, I, uh, I try not to talk about it. It's just, um, it's just too hard. Of course, I... But my first album is about the story of the first four times I stole, so I wouldn't <laughs> starve. A small group of infants came to see me as their de facto leader. They call me Mr. Cheese Slice. Anyway, we were like a family. So it would seem. Recently, you've been quite outspoken about the government. Yeah, fuck the government. Fuck Advance. Fuck Peter Clement. What is it that you object to so vehemently? Well, you know, they stole from us. They're taking our money and spending it, man. Redistributing it? Actually, homelessness has been all but eliminated in the last couple of months. So? Surely that's a cause close to your heart? <clears throat> yeah, nah, of course, man, very much so. I just mean, like, like, why do I have to pay for it, you know? You don't. People right. have been rehoused on property seized from the historically wealthy. Mm. And that couldn't have been you, could it? Look, yeah, I worked hard to be here. I built this from nothing, and I deserve to be rewarded for that. Would you say you worked harder than, say, a farmer or a care worker? I don't know. But if people are taking something from my music, choose to value it, buy it, who's to say I don't? And no one can take that away from me. Not even to help, say, vulnerable children, Mr. Cheese Slice. <laughs> what is it you're trying to say? I just don't understand where you've placed yourself politically. I mean, is it ideological or is it tactical? Well, it's more of a... Or maybe like... it's hereditary. Stop trying to tie me in knots with your words, Jeremy. I let the music speak for itself, and the people agree with me. Well, that remains to be seen. But you have given me a very easy segue out of a conversation that I promise you was much more painful for me than it was for you. So here he is with his hit song, Mrs. Ludlow's Tears. Oh, no, um, I'm going to do something a little different. It's a new single I've been working on. Oh, so this is uh, unapproved, is it? Yeah. You love it. Excellent. Don't worry, we've got a state-of-the-art censorship system. What's the worst that could happen? So here he is with a new song. Aren't we lucky? It's Jesus! But first, you're gonna pay up. You're gonna pay back. Well, we're all different races from many different places At any given moment, only one could be the greatest For your confidelation, for your participation Still two leaders in this motherfucking nation Now we're getting sanctioned, talking about expansion Why does Julie is require a massive fucking mansion? So fuck all your schemes, I don't need your freaky team And I don't need your help to achieve my fucking dreams So don't make 
make a fuss when you find you're one of us Yeah, every single one of you's a bit Jesus And you can call me crazy, cause no one ever pays me But I won't waste a lifetime being motherfucking lazy I may be inventive, my taste may be expensive But why would I get out of bed with no fucking incentive Although it's contravention of your obvious intention I like to eat a little of the fruits in my invention You make us the same, but we're not all the same All our dreams, all our schemes, all our means are not the same the best of the praise of the press of the wave Cause we're only equal people when we're motherfucking slaves Take this fact, gonna stain it red Gonna slam it into Peter Clemens motherfucking head Cause he's thick as shit, he's got the job he's unfit for It's time to spawn a couple with the motherfucking bitch for Say this is for the snuff ones, the push and the shove ones The folks that feel the burden of their motherfucking loved ones Ones who had plenty like a motherfucking Bentley The ones who now finding that their bank accounts are empty The ones with aspiration, who had to flee a nation The ones who built a business that had dreams of perspiration There's all sorts of people, the good and the evil It only takes a glance to see we're not all equal you make us the same, but we're not all the same All our dreams, all our schemes, all our means are not the same And the best of the praise of the press of the ways Cause we're only equal people when we're motherfucking slaves Gonna take this fact, gonna stain it red Gonna slam it into Peter Clemens' motherfucking head Cause he's thick as shit, he's got a job he's unfit for He's to all the castle with a motherfucking bitch for Get out of your seats, get your asses in the street Set a fire in the building, let him feel some fucking heat Take your hate to go get us No squilling bit letters And burn them on the powers of advances fucking letters Gonna take this fact, gonna stain it red Gonna slam it into Peter Clemens' motherfucking head Cause he's thick as shit, he's got a job, he's unthinkable It's time to spawn a castle with the motherfucking bitch for Chase that dream, you don't need a fucking team And advances, little dancers aren't as harmless as it seems Cause they're stale and corrupt, they your angry your minds and your fists to the strut. Jesus there with his new song. Thank you so much for joining us in the studio. That, I'm sorry. Um, I might not agree with you, but I'd just like to offer you an apology. I've just been told that there was some kind of issue upstairs and an attempt was made to censor some of your lyrics. What? Are you joking? I'd just like to say to you and everyone at home that this was a mistake. <laughs> this is absolutely ridiculous. I cannot believe this. <laughs> Here at the National Nightly News, we pride ourselves on remaining neutral, unbiased and independent of any outside interference. You have my word. We will never censor ideas. Back to you, Megan. <laughs> Well, a bit of dangerous language there, sorry about that. <laughs> well, thank you to little Jeremy Donaldson for providing our culture spot. Coming up, we'll be speaking to a couple of familiar faces about their upcoming dramatic outing. Don't go away. We'll be right back after this. That's the ad. Just to remind you, using that old VCR. No, no, it's ridiculous. Who's up on the This is just a mix up, I'm sure. Now, if you come with me, I really do have to ask oh, you to leave me. it. My father's going to hear about this. I understand. <laughs> To make sure that in these this is unbelievable, Meg! I don't know what you're talking about, Jeremy. Their fair share of the abundant, nutritious food we grow right here in the Territory. Your entitlements book will be coming to you by post in the next few days, and it will let you claim enough food for the week, every week, at one of our many new distribution centres. Everyone will get their fair share, and no one will be left behind. So you oh, can there we go. On coming together to oh, enjoy life. Look at him. If we could just get you in position. <laughs> oh, say no more. Say no more. Megan, <laughs> Jeremy, you remember Mr. Algebra? Vividly. And Mr. Ooh. Harris, and this is Ms. Raiden. What? Philippa, please. They're back together again, eh? Who'd have thought it? Uh... Perhaps a lower order demon. <laughs> yes, it is awfully exciting, isn't it? <laughs> right, OK then. We're going live in 10 seconds, opening on camera one. Oh. Right. Cheers. Five, four, three. Well, 
welcome back. And no, you're not mistaken. Sitting across from us are some very familiar faces. <laughs> you really are too kind, Megan. It was only a yogurt commercial, but I'm still proud of it. <laughs> Here to talk about his new show, we're joined by national treasure Tommy Harris, the national theatre's Philip Rayne, and national deficit Jeff Algebra. It's so lovely to have you all. Um, Tommy, would you like to tell us about the show? You know what? I'd bloody love to. It's about me. It's about my life. And where did the idea come from? So, right, picture this. Um, their legs are kimbo, mid-session, sweat is pouring out of me like an immense hog. And then Cindy comes in, she says, she says, Pete's on the phone. That's Peter Clement, the Prime Minister. Yeah, yeah, Pete's actually a really good mate of mine. Oh, is he really? Yeah, yeah, no, he comes to training sometimes. He's actually a pretty good goal sweeper. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, Pete, he says, he says, Toby, can you... He thinks my name's Toby, see? He says, how would you like to spread your message of team spirit and cooperation across this fractured nation. How would you like to really make a difference in these desperate times? What did you say? Yeah, right, yeah. So, Jeff, the question on everyone's lips is, what in God's name are you doing here? Ah, well, after the success of my debut work uh, and all the people that I've touched, I knew that I had a, a career in theatre. Yeah? I've always been an admirer of Tommy from afar. So when my manager phoned and said that I'd been offered the gig as director, I was ecstatic. I whipped my trousers off and got straight to work. Why did you do that? I, I do all my best work with my trousers off. Yeah, I've been told that too. No, no, I wouldn't say so. Right, Tommy, um, sorry, would you just give us a sense of what the show is actually about? Uh, it's about how hard it's been for me and some of the struggles that I've faced. It, it's like really getting to the heart of how tough it is to be me. I call it Tommy Harris, Jesus, that was hard. Mm. Catchy. Uh, we actually have some clips of the process of the show. Um, would you mind telling us what's going on here? Yeah, so the show is, is, is built around uh, two things that are very important to me. Uh, it mixes scenes from my life uh, as well as epic fantasy retellings of scenes from my life. But Dad, you promised you'd come to my graduation. I'm sorry, son, but you're an embarrassment. But, Dad, you promised you'd come to my graduation. Back, demon! Back to the hells! Yeah. Wow. Philippa, um, what's it been like <laughs> co-starring with Tommy Harris? I've always dreamed of treading the boards at medium-scale regional theatres, Megan. <laughs> and for once, this show really gives me something to sink my teeth into. What's different about this show, then? Tommy, uh... And Mr. Harris's show really lets me show my tremendous range as an actor. I've always <laughs> suffered from typecasting, forced to play the same tired characters in every god awful yogurt advert or godforsaken soap opera or god forbid a pantomime. But you know, this 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 show has really let me just just go there. Mm -hmm. Jeff, the viewers at home will be dying to know exactly what is it that you bring to the show. Good question. Uh, I think these guys would agree with me when I say that it's my, uh, my steady hand on the tiller, my arm round the shoulder approach that's really brought the production from strength to strength. Absolutely right. Jeff's contributions are immeasurable. He was our rock. Yes. Can you give us a sneak peek of anything else that might be in the show? <laughs> Yeah, all sorts, yeah. Uh, uh, we... yeah. We've got lots of exclusive first-hand experiences of Tommy's time in the underground sports board scene. And some epic fantasy retellings of Tommy's time in the underground sports board scene. <laughs> saying this was officially commissioned by the government? Yeah, yeah, all, all paid for by the taxpayer, which, you know, to be honest, was actually a lifesaver, really. Oh, I think it's yeah. fair to say that without Advance's support, we'd have had to cut the finale. Yeah. Which, frankly, would have been a travesty. <laughs> oh, God, Jesus Christ! <laughs> Goodness, and you do this every night? Absolutely. It's a metaphor. For what? Death. 
and the public are footing the bill, are they? <laughs> Too bloody right they are. Between the cost of my tour bus and the dry cleaning of my ties, I'm barely scraping a profit here. Amazing. And where can the folks at home come and see this for themselves? We're performing all over the nation. <laughs> and people can see it for absolutely free, all courtesy of Advance. Isn't that incredible, Jeremy? Yes, it's unbelievable, Megan. Well, thank you all so much for coming. Next time we see you, no doubt, you'll have taken our jobs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's all we have time for tonight. Join us tomorrow when I'll be interviewing the world's most attractive horse. I'm Jeremy Donson. And I'm Megan Wolfe. And from all of us here, have a peaceful night. That's the ads. Let's get reset for tomorrow, please. Hey, we must stop bumping into each other like this, eh? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs>
his staff announcement. This is Mr. Bozeman, your boss. Now that we have this newfangled tannoy system up and running, I wanted to take the opportunity to remind you all that we value productivity and attention to detail above all other concerns. Also, that the salami sandwich in the fridge is mine and mine alone. Well, Bozeman out. We'll be going live to the newsroom. But before that, let's take a quick peek at... I'm sweating like Peter Clement in an off license here. OK, we're working on it. What, you've got someone to hose down the sun, have you? Yes, they've just strapped on their wax wings. Classical illusions are no substitute for air conditioning. You know, I genuinely thought you'd be in a better mood today. She's not even here. Yes, but he is. Our gun-toting handler. Who, Andy? I don't know what the fuck his name is, do I? He's here to keep us safe from people like disrupts. More like keep us in line. I hate guns. Give me the willies. Ten seconds, everybody. So, we've got any actual real news tonight? Well, the world's on fire. <coughs> that good enough for you? Going in five, four, three. Good evening. I'm Jeremy Donaldson. Our main headlines tonight. Siege mentality. The World Council today established a military blockade to enforce the unjust and punitive sanctions now entering their 10th week. In a statement from Team Headquarters a short time ago, Prime Minister Julia Salisbury <laughs> issued a commanding response to this unprovoked escalation. Ever since these illegal sanctions were imposed, we have gratefully relied upon trade and aid from our worldwide friends who, like us, refuse to recognise their legitimacy. Today's escalation, however, is nothing short of an act of war. We call upon our international allies to condemn this blockade absolutely, and we warn aggressors to this country that we are neither meek nor defenceless. Thank you. Top beer. As his new line of ales goes from strength to strength, Johnny Hamsleeves seems to be really capitalising on his success. The former footballer turned entrepreneur seems to be as comfortable in the boardroom as he ever did on the pitch, as Headbutt Ale smashes projected sales figures yet again. To celebrate the achievement, Johnny treated himself to a 24 karat gold toilet he calls Golden Johnny's Golden John. Worth more than the GDP of some nations, the gaudy monstrosity is just as impractical as it is garish. As within hours of getting it home, Johnny slipped off the solid gold seat and cracked two ribs on the diamond bathtub. In it to win it, exciting news from Advance today with the announcement of a new monthly prize draw for all team membership card holders. Every month, Lucky winners from across the country will be picked at random to receive what Team HQ are describing as unique prizes worth more than money used to be. Take up on the scheme has been much higher than expected, and if this lucky winner's delighted face is anything to go by, it looks like pretty soon everyone's going to have to have one. Kiss me, Flardy. The nation's favourite all-rounder, the humble Flard, has risen to new heights today after a surprise announcement. The news that Flard fans all over the territory have been waiting for is finally here. In a statement met with universal delight, Remington's Fist unveiled the next chapter for their faithful family favourite, the Flard. Advance have come to a deal with the manufacturing giant, reportedly for a whopping 4 million units, and have been named the territory's official Flard supplier. Sophia Remington, seen here sealing the deal, marked the occasion by releasing 14 Flards into the sky mm -hmm. as a symbol of peace and prosperity. Oh, Captain, my Captain, progress today for the stranded scientists of Dante's Taint, as the Captain leading their rescue mission is announced. The trapped team have survived in the cave system for many months now, but hope is on the horizon as the expedition leader is announced by the Board of Underground Theoretics. A respected professional with decades of experience, training and knowledge, Captain Audrey Aerospace is said to be the only real choice to successfully save the troubled scientific excursion, but an unfortunate one to be sat next to at a dinner party or social occasion. Life during wartime. As if we didn't have enough aggressors on our borders, internal problems are growing for the government as radical activist group Disrupt caused chaos in Parliament Park last night. Scuffles broke out after the protest, resulting in multiple arrests and the injury of three community cohesion officers. Advance have yet to comment. The reckless fire will certainly be remembered by all those who have seen these striking images. As their actions escalate, people across the country are asking themselves who are Disrupt and what exactly do they want? Other than a new box of matches, of course. All this, and I'll be talking to some people with fascinating medical conditions, as well as 
one of the contenders in this year's Feline Football Championship and her proud owner. That's up on tonight's National Nightly News. But first tonight, our team of correspondents has been dispatched to every corner of the country to see how the people of this great nation of ours are coping with this unprecedented hot weather. First, let's go to Megan Wolf in Shining on Sea to see what this scientific community has to say. Megan, how's the weather there? <laughs> It's absolutely glorious, Jeremy. Thank you for asking. I'm here with Dr. Anna Burns of the University of Princeford. Are you enjoying the weather as much as I am? Oh, yes, it's wonderful, isn't it? My eyelids are sweating. And you're part of a team carrying out a study into just what's causing this unbelievable heat, is that right? Yes, that's correct, yes. We want to be able to reassure the public once and for all that there's absolutely nothing to worry about and that they can enjoy their sunstroke and fossil fuels in peace. You sound very confident about that. Oh, very much so. I can say without any hesitation, there is really no cause for any concern here. I I've actually left my car running. <laughs> so tell us about this experiment. Ah, well, we take data from weather stations from all over the world, along with atmospheric samples, and we take all that and we feed it into this state-of-the-art computer, and very soon we'll be getting a high-tech readout of the results. Blimey, that sounds very fancy. Ah, I should just say, um, uh, none of this would be possible without the generous support of Rivington's Fist. This is all thanks to their unrivaled investment in our future, and may I just say, complimentary personal anecdote. Um, oh, here we go! And, ha, as expected, everything is absolutely fucked. Hang on. This... This can't be right. Uh, right, but uh, obviously you said a second ago that everything is absolutely fine, so, you know. Well, actually, under concern level, it just says, why, God, why? We should be celebrating these wonderful results, I think. <laughs> there we are. We need to evolve gills within 40 years. You look thirsty. Here it just says, shit, shit, shit. Look at you. This is meant to be a celebration. Can't go around looking like that. Shit, 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 There you shit, go, shit, much shit. better. Can I just say thank you again to Sophia Remington for <laughs> providing all of this. Everyone, we don't have long. Time is running out. It's running out. out. Absolutely right. That is all we have time Abandon for. Abandon hope and return to the forest. Mm. There you are. Uh, Enjoy that. <laughs> I'd like to thank Dr. Burns for just one opinion on the climate. There. The sea will reclaim us all. There you have it, Jeremy. <laughs> proof, if proof be need be, that everything is just fine. I'm Megan Wolfe, here with science. Back to you. Megan Wolfe there, attempting to do some actual news. Next, it's over to Robin Short, who's in Scritchford with some of the winners of this week's team membership lottery. Robin? Thanks, Jeremy. I'm here in Scritchford with Gary Failsafe, a janitor at the local school, and Amelia Jackhammer, an aspiring poet. Both of you were drawn at random from those who hold team membership cards to receive this week's amazing prize. How do you feel? Filled with fervent euphoria. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good, yeah. And all that we had to do was fill in a quick form or two. Wow, that sounds so convenient. But we're all dying to know. What have you won? That's right, Robin. I've won dinner with Julia Salisbury at one of the capital's top restaurants. Ooh, swanky. And I've been invited to Peter Clement's house to help him dredge the gutter in. That's absolutely terrific. You must both be over the moon. I've written a poem about it. So, can you tell me about the moment when you first heard the news? Well, I was battling against a particularly difficult floater, probably one of the sixth formers, when the headmaster came and found oh, me. I was involved in a similarly brutal conflict with a particularly arduous stanza. So you were both polishing turds? No, I don't like to polish them. I like to keep them intact for my collection. Oh! How unexpected. Um, <laughs> I don't polish turds. I write poetry. Potato, potato. So, Gary... Do you think 
Peter Clement's going to let me keep the contents of his downpipe. There's no harm in asking, I suppose. Or would you like to hear one? No, thank mm. you. Gary, when you signed up for team membership, was it in hopes of winning the lottery or were there other reasons? I like a flutter, of course, but no. The boss said I had to sign up to keep coming into school. Very sensible. It's important to know who we're trusting around our children. Oh, I have an unpublished book of sonnets about children. Perhaps you'd like to hear one. <laughs> no! Or an anthology of haikus on the death of innocence. I'd rather hear about Gary's turd collection. <laughs> really? <laughs> I thought you might say that. Oh. <clears throat> oh. Are you all right? Yes, it's coming. Uh. Mm. It's inspiration and it's delicious. Mm. Right you mm. are. Today on the show, there's no news. Just a man who keeps multiple poos. Yeah, no. This big one's my favourite. See how it's fibrous, really lovely texture. <laughs> Would you encourage other people to enter for their chance to win? If, if it's colour you're looking for, take a gander at all blue eyes here. The national news lost its way when it covered some crap on a tray. Some of these are quite rare. Maybe that was unfair. And that's all we have time for today. <laughs> Back to you, Jeremy. Thanks, Robin. What a lucky pair they are. And finally in this segment, it's over to Patrick Bannon, who's gone to the smelliest town in the country to see how the unprecedented weather is affecting the locals. Patrick? Hello there, Jeremy. Hello, yes. I'm here live in Grizzleford, which has recently voted the smelliest town in the country. And I have to say that, you know, in this heat, the smell really is. I mean, it's, 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 it's something else. Barry Lardons, mate, you've lived here your whole life. How do you put up with the stink? Well, we're just all very proud of our achievement, to be honest with you. You can tell that, look at him, proud as punch. Do you know what it's like, son, being the <laughs> second smelliest town? No, I don't. Living in the shadow of Arsminster, those smug fucks. <laughs> But who's laughing now, eh? <laughs> so what, not me, that's for sure. So what happened, mate? Uh, right, the good people from Remington Fist came in and saved the day with their factory. You're talking, of course, about the newly built Flage factory. Yeah, they gave us this big presentation on jobs and growth. But as soon as we heard about the stench, we paid them whatever they wanted to put it here. Does the stink not affect your life in every way, Barry? I mean, perhaps if you're filling in a tax return or completing the physical act of love. <laughs> it's strong at first, but you get used to it after several weeks of your first bout of sickness. The judges were very impressed. So, oh, what, what, what's, what's sickness? Uh, oh, that's nothing to worry about. It takes a few minutes before you develop any symptoms. <laughs> Now, folk are saying something about the production line and how they dump carcasses directly into the water main, but I think it's probably a few valves on the high street. On the high street? Uh, should I see a doctor? What, what are the symptoms? Well, the first one is asking stupid questions. <laughs> then folk experience a lot of inhibition. Uh, do, <laughs> do they? When was the last time you brushed your teeth, you stinking old tramp? <laughs> oh, and next according is a period of randomly bursting into song, followed immediately by delusions of grandeur. Oh, that's not really a problem, I've never sung in my life. Hello, it's sexy Patrick Bannon and he's wearing sexy shorts now. Oh my God, look at me. I'm like a stallion. I'm gorgeous, why didn't you tell me? I should take my shirt off. You know mm -hmm. what? I'll even let you touch me if you want. Uh, oh, that, that will be the bout of undeserved self-confidence. <laughs> Love the Bannon! Feel the Bannon! <laughs> oh, my, what's the point? And the ennui. <laughs> now, all that's left now are the hallucinations and unconsciousness. Nano Dotty? Was that you? Why are you made out of elbows? You know I don't eat opinions. Ah, ah. Oh, <laughs> don't worry, folks. Uh, once he wakes up, he'll be just fine. We'll just find a place to stick him where it won't matter how many times he evacuates his bowels. Right, <laughs> that's all here from Grizzleford, a town that's really <laughs> making a stink. Uh, I'm Barry Lardons. Back to you, Jeremy. Thanks, Barry. With a naval blockade being set up around our coastline as we speak, when we come back, I'll be talking to three members of the general public who appear to be here 
purely for medical reasons. Don't go away. Unless, of course, you've got something better to do. We'll be back after these messages. This next back. section features a potentially controversial guest. Well, Advance may true. request some censorship if he goes I too off-topic. You've done a great job really so far really keeping done. everyone happy, it's so let's keep up the good work. Don't and forget I can't about do this anymore. power I say this every fan. Friday. I've done something. What do you mean? Jeremy? My mic is still on. Or a report from Grantham Downs. Even the weather will be more fucking relevant than this. Jeremy, please, just breathe. It's just something like to keep people's minds off things. Exactly, which is wrong. People's minds should be very much on things. Christ, it's so fucking hot. Please take your seats as quickly as you can. I can't do this anymore, Jenny. I've had enough. That's it. This is just Ten seconds. Get over yourself, Jeremy. Why don't you stop feeling sorry for yourself for five fucking... Five, four, three... Welcome back to, to the National Nightly News with me, your host, Jeremy Donaldson. Later, we'll be talking to the captain of the territory's first cap football team, Professor Pumpkin. But first, I'm joined by three guests with some balmy bodily behaviours. Joining me is a woman who's been hiccuping for over nine months. Isn't that right, Miss Piercy? Yes, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Yes. Tell us, what brought all this on? Well, it's all a bit of a blur, Jeremy, to be totally frank with you. So I was watching your show and I remember seeing the news about the election and it, 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 it hasn't stopped since. Fascinating stuff. Also here is Frankie Steampipe. Um, perhaps you could explain to us exactly what your physiological foreboil is. I'm here to say it's high time people like me were respected. We're constantly overlooked in the workplace, we're whispered about on buses, and we're asked politely to leave children's birthday parties. And it's disgusting. <laughs> I, uh... I'm sorry, my bowels have comic timing. And finally, I'm joined by a man who answers every question honestly, even when it isn't aimed at him. How do you cope with that, Mr. Truman? With a combination of booze, self-hatred, and hardcore pornography. Is that right? Not according to my therapist. <laughs> well, in that case, um, let's speak to Rose. Tell me, how does the hiccuping impact you? I get shushed a lot, which is hard. <laughs> hard. At work, they've asked me to, uh, to stop answering the phones. It's really affected my confidence. Well, I find it really fucking <laughs> irritating. Do people tend to believe your story? Fuck no. Actually, I've been surprised at how much support I've received. <laughs> <laughs> and Frankie, um, why have you come here today? Because my wife left me and I was hoping that the fame would win her back. We've started a group for people with ailments deemed broadly comical by society. It's called Take Us Seriously. That's right. And we, we bloody well mean it. <laughs> and who's joined so far? A bunch of fucking losers. It's just us, so far. <laughs> and how much success have you had? Well, we've seen some real uh, positive changes. I don't want to toot my own horn, but it's been a runaway success. Shit all. Not a single person come to our fun run, and all of our leaflets fell in the canal. Huh. Well, Miss Piercy, um, some people are saying your condition was actually caused by the shocking events of that night. What do you think? Come down, Mr. Donaldson. That's absolute rubbish. What it'd be like to have a pair of tits. <laughs> Could you? Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. It's very hot. What was I thinking? I think you're a team fuck puppet. No. Or a sellout cunt. <laughs> Apologies. Just reminded that he can help it. And hey, if this isn't live television, then what is it? A fuck fest of propaganda masquerading as journalism. <laughs> Frankie, Rose, tell us, how can the viewers get involved with your cause? Yes, we're holding a, a sponsored run in um, Capital <laughs> the Park uh, next weekend. It's called the No Smiles 13 Miles. No, it's called the No Laugh Half. What did I say before the show? That it was the team pulling Jeremy Donaldson's strings. No, I, <laughs> I didn't say Oh, well, I didn't say we that. may have to end that there, unfortunately. What a harmless bit of fun. 
Steady on! This is exactly what I'm talking about. We demand respect. Ah, uh -huh, yes. Well, later, I'll be talking to Professor Pumpkin, a ginger tabby with a world class pair of penalty paws. Is that really necessary? No, it isn't. Let go. Not you. Unhand him at once. Yes, you. Oh, enough! That's enough! <laughs> enough! Oh, what are you doing? I'm trying not to piss myself. Alex, cut. Don't you dare! Don't you fucking dare cut to the ass before I tell you to. Now, you in the broadcast centre, Bozeman's an escape home. You listen to me. You cut to the ads before I tell you to, and I will kill every single person in this studio. Jeremy, think about what <coughs> I am doing. thinking about what I'm doing. I've been thinking about it for a long time. We all should be. Christ, it's so fucking hot in here. Do you remember when we used to do the real news? Before it was all lottery winners and bloody cat football. We are on the brinks of a siege, the likes of which the world hasn't seen in hundreds of years. The enemy is at the gates, and I'm stuck here talking to these three fucking idiots. I think my hiccups have stopped. You three, get the fuck out of my studio. Go on, now, go, before I change my mind. Jenny, lock the doors. Lock the doors. Yes, Jeremy. Now. Good. Yes. Now. Right then. You in the broadcast centre. Alex, you listen to me. You pay attention. Now, I'm sure you've already loaded up exactly what you're going to play in the commercial, but today is going to be a little bit different. Look to your right. Yes, really. Look to your right. There is a VHS tape, and I want you to load it into one of the machines, and when I say so, and not before, you play it. You've got about 15 seconds, so I wouldn't waste any time. Now, all cameras. Alex, I assume all of you won't be playing that tape. This station does not negotiate with when terrorists. You come back, I hope I've made myself clear. Fucking... You seem to know and what to do. Every single thing that comes out of this studio is either one sided or banal. We're going to show the other side for a bit. For a bit of fucking balance. Like the good old days. Alex, play the fucking tape. Now, I don't want to hurt any of you. But if I see anything I don't like, I will not hesitate to start. You're going to get me in trouble with that. Let's hope you made the right yeah. call. Reset the system for the third segment. I imagine the ratings are going to be through the roof. You've heard them talk about this on the news. We are disrupt. We are the resistance. It's time you knew the truth. You know advance are lying to you. You know the elderly are not a burden. You know the rich were not all evil. And you know the team membership card is an ID card, no matter what they try to tell you. But why should you trust us? Another faceless organization. A shadowy figure with a distorted voice. You've seen it so many times in the movies. Well, this is not a movie. My name is Alan James. I used to try and shock people for a living, for entertainment. But now we live in a time where perhaps you need to be shocked. Perhaps we need to wake up. Advance are coming for our freedoms. They are coming for the fruits of our labours. They will take our wealth. They will euthanise our parents and smiling throughout. They will turn our children against us if we voice our concerns. How long? Jeremy, please. Think How up. long? 17 seconds. And the studio doors are all still locked? Yes. So what now? I don't know. This wasn't what I planned. I mean, some of it was. I had speech, look. But this, this was unexpected. So what now, Jeremy? It was supposed to be your day off. God, please, don't do any more stupid things today. How long? How long, Jenny? You're already live. Welcome back to the National Nightly News. Joining me, unexpectedly, for I very much imagine will be my last broadcast, are two new guests. Jenny works here at the National Nightly News and is someone I consider 
well, a friend. And next to her is... What's your name? Andy. Andy's a policeman. Only, we don't call him that anymore. He's a community cohesion official. Officer. Sorry? It's, um, it's community cohesion officer, CCO. And how's that feel, Andy? Being rebranded? It's, uh, it's good. <laughs> it's, it's not about confrontation anymore, you know. The, the force had its fair share of problems. The, uh, the, the team doesn't have as many. But it still has some. Oh, I couldn't say. Couldn't or wouldn't? But I don't know what you want me to say. Christ, you're fucking useless, aren't you? We'll come back to you later. Jenny? I don't want to be on the news, Jeremy. That's perfectly understandable. Who'd want to do this? Jenny, why did you join the National Nightly News team? I always wanted to work in news. Yes, but why specifically this programme? The National Nightly News. It was the news everyone trusted. Was? Was. Is. Do you really want to quibble semantics at gunpoint? Is there something else you'd rather discuss? Well, there is a great big Alan James-sized elephant in the room you seem to be ignoring. What do you mean? I saw your face when that vid came down. You didn't know, did you? It's about the message, not the messenger. Like I said, you didn't know. No. I didn't know. The people I met were with... He wasn't there! <laughs> God, I I'm didn't know sorry. it was Alan James! I'm sorry. But seriously. Alan fucking James. You're flushing your life down the toilet for... God, I love you, Jeremy, but... He's a good speaker. He's popular in the country. That right. Look, forget Alan James. There is still something deeply wrong. And you know it, Jenny. And you know it, Andy. And you, you are home, you know it too. Meanwhile, I'm interviewing a guest who stinks of shit. Patrick is paddling about in shit. And Robin, Robin is literally interviewing someone who collects the fucking stuff. I mean, it's not sophisticated, but what a metaphor. We are sleepwalking our way into oppression and the news isn't saying anything. We're not saying anything. Says who? Alan fucking James. What are all those scientists working on at Grentham Downs? What are they testing underground at Altergrave? Andy, your turn. Make yourself fucking useful. How many people have you brought in for consultations just because they weren't carrying or didn't have team membership cards? Oh, well, there's other forms of identification that we will accept. For how long? We're just here to help. Then why do you need these? Not really help when it's offered at gunpoint, is it, Andy? Let me demonstrate it for you. Let me help you. You eat these cards of my notes on it, and you'll probably digest a fact. That'd be helpful, wouldn't it, Andy? Knowing a fact? What? I don't understand. Do you want my help, yes, Andy? Yes, yes, whatever you say, Security yes. Security are here, Jeremy. Eat it. What? Eat the fucking news, Andy, or I'll force it down your fucking throat. Oh, Jeremy, stop. Go on. Really? Eat it. Eat it, you fucking bully. Jeremy, stop. They will kill you. Please, don't make me watch that. Please. Of course. You're right. Sorry. Sorry, everyone. You can put the card down now, Andy. You can go now. You too, Jenny. Fuck off over there. We're nearly done. All cameras on me. This new regime of ours is so... seductive. I understand that. But before we all... Hand off our freedoms. Should we ask to whom we're handing them over? Don't you want to know what's being done in your name? How many people were transitioned last month? A record high, again, if you care. 
Shouldn't someone ask Advance how they plan to deal with this blockade? How many years or months of supplies we have? Why aren't we asking these questions instead of who shit is this? There's a cat backstage dressed as a fucking goalie for Christ's sake. He's even got the little gloves. Anyway, that's why I arranged for you to see that broadcast in the last break. I didn't know it was gonna be him, but I guess that just about sums it up. We are all up Ship Creek with a paddle made of Alan fucking James. Christ is also fucking pointless. I was gonna quit tonight. Take a holiday, try something else, out of the limelight. Maybe try having a relationship. I hear they're nice. Never tried it. I... I loved the news. And now, well... Oh God, Jeremy, don't! I've tried my best to be honest with you, but this just isn't the news anymore. And I'm Captain sorry. Ed. I've lost this Alex. fight. Alex, think of the Captain consequences. Ed.
return to Channel 1 by scrolling up. Of course, I trust you know better than to put Disrupt on the air, Alex. We show the news, nothing else. A cow's tongue and... So, Julia's team have asked me to ask you to keep it light. What does that mean? It means do that thing you do where you turn politicians into humans. <sighs> Just don't get drawn into talking about the war or politics in general, really. They do know this is the news, don't they? You didn't hear this from me, but... Oh. Apparently, there's a crew at Team HQ right now. I think she's giving a speech or something tonight. They'll get it on the late news. Oh, great. So they get the brains and we get the performing monkey. Sometimes you sound just like him, you know? How are you? It is what it is. It is what it is. I miss him too, you know. Ten seconds, everybody. Rumpled old sod. Don't. Going in five, four, three. Good evening. This is the National Nightly News. I'm Megan Wolfe. It's the 140th day of war. Our main headlines tonight. Company of Heroes. Skirmishes on land and sea again today as our armed forces tested the metal of the World Council's illegal blockade. Advances strategy of multiple small-scale incursions into the disputed zone is certainly keeping the enemy on high alert. Unable to work out where or when the next strike will come. Sadly, however, more casualties were reported today, and as the weeks and months of this war make ever more demands on our armed services, those numbers will, tragically, only continue to rise. Don't starve. Advance's food programme moved from strength to strength today as rationing depots were opened in the last remaining unfed areas of the Territory. The rationing depots have been constructed in record time, and the government's agricultural coordination strategy has seen shelves restocked with increasing regularity. However, with a reported rise in mental and physical health issues since the imposition of the blockade, critics have questioned whether those smaller communities which are only now starting to receive help could have been better and quicker served. Seven days to die. The recent decision to allow those with long-term health conditions to access transition centres has today been declared an overwhelming success. Previously available only to those in their final years, the expansion of the service has been met with relief by the many organisations calling for it to be opened up to the wider community. With dwindling medical supplies leaving many of our most vulnerable facing chronic pain, it can come as no surprise that the transition centres have found themselves stretched to capacity. Populous. More than 11% of the population have thus far failed to register for a team membership card, a worrying statistic given that the cards are a legal requirement from midnight tonight. While applications are still open for those who like to run fashionably late, they can expect a few tricky questions from advance. Street Fighting Man. Spokesman Alan James today announced that Disrupt were responsible for the two explosions which rocked the capital's warehouse district last night. Julia Salisbury condemned the attack on what she described as vital medical supplies, as pointless and barbaric. Two security guards from the warehouse complex were injured in the callous attack, which, once again, shows Disrupt's reckless disregard for human life. And finally tonight. Our mutual friend. Bail was denied in the High Court today for shamed former National Nightly News anchor Jeremy Donaldson. The presenter will be transferred to new lodgings at Pendron Ridge Prison, while the lengthy preparations for his trial, which is still 18 months away, begin. Following his very public breakdown on this program 10 weeks ago, the once-loved presenter was disarmed and taken into custody by the community cohesion team. Let's hope doctors can help the once great man. But first this evening, with the war about to enter its 21st punishing week, and people hurting up and down the country, I'll be grilling unpredictable Prime Minister Peter Clement in an exclusive interview from his home in Lanfordshire. That's coming up on tonight's National Nightly News.
little overexcited to announce. I'll be interviewing the one and only Lil C. And later we've got a new feature that's sure to keep you coming back for more. But first tonight, let's check in with Prime Minister Peter Clement, who's speaking to us from his home in Lanfordshire. Good evening, Prime Minister. Have we caught you exercising? Oh, have we started? Yes, that's right, Miss Wolf. I have just a few minor adjustments. I mean, nothing drastic. I haven't joined the gym more or anything. As my old man used to say, just because she won't take it up the shit, it doesn't mean you shouldn't try for a quick fiddle up the car. Language, park. Prime Minister. What? Quick fiddle? What, what's wrong? Oh, shit. It's shitter, isn't it? Yep, that's the one. And can you tell us what brought about this new you? Tell us what brought about this new you. Last night, freedom fighters working for Disrupt destroyed a farmerside storage facility in the warehouse district of the capital. You'll no doubt hear it described as terrorism, but our intent was not to provoke fear, but thought. No one was killed in the operation, which destroyed both the warehouse and all its contents. Drugs. Drugs used in transition centres. Drugs used to kill our elderly and now our sick as well. And since that day, we know that this I extermination cannot be easily stopped. Cigar. Perhaps it can be slowed, or if you'll forgive me, disrupted. Weddings. Farmicide are owned by State Advance. As well and as again, isn't everything? Is useless, really Advance make the glossy TV ad works, the drugs, the transition centres, and the law. This Christmas, and that no government should finish me off for bloody good. Power. Did you make the, the decision to, to holiday the within the country this winter because no of the blockade, Not Prime even Minister? You. Well, Mrs. Freedom to die is never like travelling at the best the of times. Freedom worth <laughs> fighting for. Uh, is these the freedom are to live not the best of fear. times. Well, that we can all agree. And there's a lot of more red tape of involved in leaving the territory every day. At the moment, as I'm sure and you're all aware. With a thousand tiny acts of resistance, we are stepping closer to the inevitable fall of advance. Today, it is a warehouse. Oh, yeah. One day soon, also, it will be the whole system. It doesn't seem very advanced to be going abroad when the rest of the country is grounded. And yet, Julia Salisbury announced today that she'll be visiting Svenland during this year's winter break. Is that really an example of team spirit? What? Did you know about this, Gail? Did you know about this, Gail? Jeremy Donaldson is to be put on trial. Let's all think about that for a moment. One of the nation's most respected and What's beloved your morning routine. And for well, what? I have Waving a, a gun around, he clearly had no routine. intention of ever using. Rigid. But Jeremy Fuck Donaldson sake. had a very public breakdown. Oh, yeah. Is undeniable. Uh, a rigid and demanding plan that my doctor and Would personal trainer. Had Who's your personal trainer? Of course. Ah, so prick or crap. Is that on your card? I had a very public Prime Minister, speaking of planning, with the blockade in its 20th anymore. week and the people of this country reeling from its effects, what plans do you have to get us out of this mess? From a bastion of truth into a frivolous chat well, show. Well, that's a very blunt Like a mother watching question. her child fall under a predator's spell. Surely one thought you, the democratically elected Prime Minister, must have an answer. Don't you get smart with me, Pat. I was a fucking national treasure before you were a twinkle in the milkman's scrotum. They you want to talk about plans? Let me tell you about all. plans. That's all we do. Fucking yeah. plans and revised so plans and then meetings to discuss okay. the implementation of plans. Well, plans and yet more planning for fucking plans and yet more fucking plans. Right, well, that's good. That's good to know, Plan. You know, I used to really like you, Pat. You were a breath of fresh air. But I've been watching you. And you know what? You get more like him every day. I will take that as a compliment. Prime Minister, later on this evening, your co-leader, Julia Salisbury, is going to give a national address from team headquarters. Can you give us a hint of what she's going to say? Um, yes. Well, uh, I imagine that there sorry, will be sorry, you the imagine? usual... Uh, no, what, what, I, mean, what do, I mean is... You do know about this broadcast, don't you, Prime Minister? Well, I'm, I'm sure I did. Um, but Julia and I have no secrets from each other. We don't memorise each other's bloody diaries either. As me old man used to say, if you wanted to get a job done quick, don't get bogged down in the pubes. What else have you got? Sorry? Only cards. What else? A little piece of my life. Do you want to rustle through? 
Yeah, refill the last. Ta. Ah, oh, come on. Uh, come on. Okay. What music do you listen to when you work out? Well, Gail tells me that I work out to Little C, but I have absolutely no fucking idea who that is. Oh. Do you think the C stands for? It stands for collaborative, Prime Minister. Yeah, actually, that that does make more sense, actually. Uh, how's rationing affecting you? It's hard, but we get by. You just have to learn to get by on the basics. Take comfort in each other. I've got Mrs. C and many a fine single malt. I want for nothing. So for a decent night's sleep, of course. Prime Minister, thank you for joining us. When we come back, it's time for the Culture Spot with Lil C and a world premiere performance of her new song. I genuinely can't wait to hear that. We'll be back after this. One minute back, everybody. And that is what happens when you wander from the car. I don't think Hi. you knew about her statement. I don't think really anyone's supposed to know. CEO when you mentioned if Bozeman's Remington face turned a colour that I think you call embolism, am I in trouble? Bozeman? No, you're like the daughter you never had. I suppose the higher ups so might try him now. Who's Lil C? Who's Lil C? Are you winding me up? What? I'm civilised. I positively loathe these sanctions, Jane. I can't remember the last time we boiled a duck orange. I concur absolutely, Brian. There's barely enough milk to undermine the tea. George, from the club. Spotted the outdated mixing the mixing You'll need the new buttons during the next then. sections. First, we'll need applause when the guest enters and before her song. Whoa. Don't worry, I'll walk you through it when we get there. So low. One, One is certain, certain a preferable, preferable way exists. exists. And you'd be right. We've had our biggest and best brains working on this for months, and we've got you covered with the Remington Spiss Siege Survival Box. Inside every blockade-busting box, you'll find the things you really missed. A red wine, where you can hardly taste the chemicals. Some rare meat we grew in our production laboratory. Chocolate so salty, you'd believe it came from Svenland. The list of luxuries is endless. At least seven. I'd never heard of her before. Oh, she's big, really big. Really? Yeah. Is she any good? Nah, of course not. She talks shit. Oh. But kids go mad for her, absolutely mad. Live in ten seconds. Hang on, Colin, you've got kids? Yeah, I've got about six or seven, I think. Oh. What? Five, four, <laughs> three. Thanks for coming back. Later, we have an exciting new feature that we just know you're going to love, so stay tuned for that. But first, I'm really excited for our next guest. She rose to prominence as the delightful Susie May in All My Daughter's Children's Mind before taking the music industry by storm this year with her debut album smashing the chart records at the age of just 20. Let's give it up and welcome Lil C. <laughs> I just say, you look incredible. Oh, thanks, babe. I'm doing this new regime and it really does work. Ooh, what's the regime? And my manager suggested it to me. It basically involves bathing in like cabbage water and then having the leaves sucked out of you while you sleep. Wow, is, is that healthy? Oh, well, look at me, Meg. The leaves are my only nourishment. <laughs> yep, they certainly are. Now, you'll have to forgive me, but I'm somewhat of a super fan, oh. so I'm sorry if I get a bit starstruck. Oh, bless you. <laughs> I've never actually heard of you before, so if you do get a little tongue-tied, I can always carry the interview. Oh, that's good to know. So your first album, F My Face Together, it hit shelves this summer and it just exploded. I mean, what was that like for you? Bonkers, just yeah. so weird. I was in all the papers and the magazines. Overnight, I went from that like annoying little girl from that show to that like sexy little girl from that show. Wow, that must have been bizarre. Not really, it was just like any other morning. You know, get up at five, go on a four mile run, have three meetings on my cabbage bath, but then only then was my dad actually talking to me. Oh, of course, I mean the famed country singer, Billy Bob Jean Short. I didn't know you'd been estranged. There's nothing that strange about it, Megan. OK, yes, yeah, so he may believe that aliens told him to hate women, but there really isn't anything to prove that he's wrong. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, uh, this newfound explosion into your popularity, I mean, did that change your life? Um, well, I had to start wearing, like, nicer underwear, you know, for the paparazzi. But as my manager says, best to make the most of it before I'm 30. 
<laughs> Is that right? So what's the album about? So I thought it was about like how pretty and great I am, yeah. but actually it's about monetizing youth, I think, or about like promoting an unrealistic standard of beauty or something. Your manager again. <laughs> yeah, he says insecurity is an opportunity. Oh, <laughs> do you think he'd be happy with you telling us all this? <laughs> telling you all what? It really doesn't matter what I say here. I'll do my dance soon and then this part will it all be forgotten about. Oh. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> we're going to see some of those famous dance moves very shortly because you're going to be performing your new single, aren't you? Yep, it's from my album Put It In My A Together and it's out. Put it in my A Together and it's out. My friend let her 13 year old son join the Go Getters. He's occupied now, busy even. His room's never been tidier. But he keeps notebooks he won't let her read. And sometimes she catches him staring at her. And last week, she found him searching through her papers. When confronted, he always had a plausible answer, a good answer. But somehow it's too good. Like it's been prepared in advance. Or possibly by them. We want to know what the news will no longer tell us. And when we find out, we will tell you. We will hack into your news broadcasts. We will defend your right to information. We will yeah, resist and we will disrupt. I think things could have been different, like better. But I don't know. I love doing autographs and having somebody dress me and tell me what to wear. <laughs> <laughs> did you always want to do music? Uh, well, ever since I was a little girl, I did. I'd sit in front of the radio, and as soon as my favourite girl group would come on, I'd press record on my cassette, but then my dad would come in and tell me to turn it off and to go back upstairs and start practising again. Oh, you so, Sorry, is, you, is your dad your manager? <laughs> yeah, which can be tough. And sometimes when it gets really hard, he'll say, make Quagler proud and you might just survive childbirth. <laughs> well, you know what, despite anything, you'll make me proud. Oh, if only your opinion was as valuable as his. And on that problematic note, uh, you're going to be singing your song for us soon, aren't you? Uh, tell me about it, tell me about it. So, it's called These Babies Gonna Bring You Home, and I actually got sent the lyrics in the car on the way up here. But you know what, it's actually alright. And don't worry, all my work is team approved. Alright then, well you can go and get ready for that. We'll see you in a little bit. It was a very specific type of pleasure <laughs> to chat to her, and I just can't wait to hear this. Oh, so, here it is, you will see with an exclusive first performance of her new track, These Babies Gonna Bring You Home. Take it away. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Force's favourite, the Queen of Team, here to break in your blockades, Lil C. Uh -huh. you see I'm hungry there's a place in me that's empty I want that meat you packing only you can feel that crack in me I'm under siege so come and free me ain't no disruption here boy I got no agenda just want the team in me no bloody foreign member don't stop your morning there's holes in me that ain't been filled yet I only scream this loud when you do your country proud I ain't no vehicle's daughter Come and skirmish on my border Quick before I get much older Tie me down and pull me like an enemy soldier An enemy soldier Some action, so come and break my sanctions. I've been this wild and free since Mama burdened me. She was only 53, but gave you save her family. There's no one judging me if I'm the one that's in your fantasy. Don't die alone. These babies gonna bring you home I ain't no wicker spotter Come and skirmish on my daughter Quick before I get much older Tie me down and pull me like An enemy soldier An enemy soldier So what I need a Clemens boys Can come and use me as a toy And lift me over, grab my hair, rip off my clothes and dump them there I wanna 
see some action So come and break my sanctions Well, if that doesn't distract you from the world outside, I don't know what will. <laughs> I'd like to thank Lil C for, well, for doing that. Don't go anywhere. After the break, we'll finally be revealing the new se segment of our show that we just know you're going to love. We'll be back right after this. And we're out. Can I just say, thank you so much for letting me do this. It really means a lot to me, you know, yeah. to be able to promote myself on such a mainstream platform like the news. Uh, well, don't worry about it. And you know what? Good luck for the future. Take care of yourself. This industry can be crazy sometimes. Watch out for that father of yours, won't you? Oh, no, no. I manage myself. It's just, you know, for the public to have that certain perspective. You know, what it's like. Oh. Oh, right. Um, and Michael? What was Michael? What about Billy Bob Jean Short? Oh, my dad. He's such a sweetheart. We both have the same agents, you know, like it just made sense. Both of us for our And if these leaders consider And Michael, I want to see the revenue share for the clothing line and get me a GMT before my meeting with the Lube guy. They say for your pleasure. That is why I defy that, that we yet. pull together, that we encourage and educate our family, friends, and neighbors. I hate to tell you this, but you're going to need a whole sound effect buttons for this next section. Exactly right. Try and pick the most appropriate sound Do effect for the actor's the sort of lines. They can't hear your choices, things. so they'll be no, assuming no, you're helping things no, along and not, not making them look ridiculous. Mind you, after the last section, it can't help us all. Try and do better. Until it feels like 12. Got it? Absolutely, right away. 10 seconds. Five, four, <clears throat> three. Thanks for joining us for part three. We've been teasing you about our new feature all night and now the wait is finally over. I can reveal that every night on the show, we'll be treated to an episode of an informative and hilarious new segment called The Notice Board. It stars some top talent and we're very excited about it. But before we see it, let's have a quick chat with the writer, director and phenomenon, may I say, <laughs> Jeff Algebra, guys. Actually, I've, uh, I've dropped the algebra. I go by Jeff Dupoon now. <laughs> How do you like that? Well, yeah, very fancy. I suppose you need a new name now that you're a successful artist. Well, exactly. I'm earning enough to pay taxes now. <laughs> oh. It's shit. And how does Angela feel about all this? Who? Your, uh, your wife. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, she's long gone. No, she was holding me back. I'm with Norm now. We were married last month. <laughs> Norm de Plume. Yeah. And um, why did you write this? Hmm? What was your inspiration? Oh, well, I, I received a telephone call offering me 25 grand to write a pro team sitcom. And I heard my father's voice. It said, Jeff, you listen here, boy. You make hay while the sun shines. You ring every penny you can get out of this. So I wheeled him down to the transition centre, got out my typewriter and started clacking. Wow. <laughs> Utter shite. <laughs> and without further ado, let's give it up for the notice board. Miss Craven? Oh, morning, Ray. Everything all right, Mrs Craven? You look as worried as the vicar in closing time. <laughs> oh, Ray, it's those young louts. They've vandalised my shop again. No! Yes! 
Oh. They've written all sorts of obscene language and crude pictures, and I know it's those damn youths. I don't know. It could be the vicar at closing time. I'm just worried they won't ever become productive members of the community. What if they never see the error of their ways and end up as social outcasts, such as shoplifters or bong rats? Don't worry, Mrs Craven. This is a very supportive community, and I'm sure that in time they will fit into this society like this key into this lock. <laughs> See? Works like a charm. What a lovely way to put it, Ray. And just like that, we can unlock their future. Yes, yes. Wow. Look at all the letters in my collection today. Oh, I think that one's addressed to me. What? This, this one? Oh, so you're right. Here it is. <laughs> it's a letter from my granddaughter, Bre Brenda. She says she got an A on her maths exam because one of her friends has been helping her. She was always a team player, was our Brenda. What's up, losers? Hey. Oh, no. It's Brad. He's the coolest guy in the village. That's right. I just got here on my motorbike. <laughs> oh, clear off, Brad. We don't want any of your ilk around here. What? Radoots? No, ruffians. Have you come to tag the notice board with your gang signs? No way. I've actually come to pin my resume on that notice board. <gasps> I'm looking to do some tutoring after school. What did you say? To tutoring? That's right. Maths is very important. Would you mind, Ray? Not at all. <laughs> so you, a young person, have been spending your time helping others and not just urinating on churches or huffing glue? Hey, I haven't huffed glue for months. Well, blow me down! You, you know what? We misjudged you mm. based on how young and cool you are and not on your actions. Oh, no doy. So it wasn't you who vandalised my shop last night or called me a rancid old crone from the back of a chopper? No way. It can't have been me. I was too busy helping my friend Brenda with her maths homework. Could you speak up there? I thought for a minute there that you said Brenda. I did, you daft old sow. Did you hear that, Ray? Oh, yes, what a wonderful surprise. I now respect you as a man. Put her there, Ray. <laughs> oh, what the heck? Give us a hug. Sorry to interrupt the first 
groundbreaking episode of the Notice Board, but uh, we are receiving some breaking news. Um, I'm being told we are picking up reports from across the continent of what appear to be oh God. Um, what appear to be nuclear explosions in four major foreign cities. Initial estimates put the death toll into, uh, they put them into millions. I'm, I'm being told we're experiencing um, some power shortages as a result, so apologies, apologies for the interruption. And apparently we can go live now to team headquarters for an emergency broadcast from Prime Minister Julia Salisbury um, any moment. Yes, yes, let's go to that now. Good evening, citizens and leaders of the world. Minutes ago, operatives working for Advance detonated nuclear explosives simultaneously in four major cities across the continent. We have similar devices in 58 other urban centres and will not hesitate to detonate them. Will not hesitate to detonate them. We are hearing stories of power fluctuations and what could be minor earthquakes uh, throughout the continent. Stand by. Tolerate your illegal and genocidal blockade. You are to remove it immediately. We've lost contact with our benefactors in Urkestan and Konislava. All our equipment seems to be resetting. Um. Your territories will be taken under our control. We will install replacement governments to ensure that your can we get this confirmed? become part of the new future. Can we get this verified? I your need this verified. And now our borders. Your people are our people. I don't know if you can hear me. I don't know if you are receiving this, but if you are, then you have to know. You have to know what's being done. What's being done right now to our neighbours. This is unprecedented. Our government has committed an act, multiple acts of mass destruction in our name. A single shot at our territory or harm a single one of our citizens. Nor do I care how you voted. You didn't vote for this. Devices. None of us did. They will not find them. We the no doubt you are be. already searching uh, for them. We are uh, waiting our further news and oh ahead of yours. God. What if they respond? We will expect your complete acceptance of our terms by midnight tonight. Thank you. I, I don't really talk about my personal life in my job. It's not relevant or important. Um, so many of you may be surprised to learn that I have a brother. His name is David. And right now, I, I can't get a stupid face out of my head. He's a researcher and he's currently traveling the continent for work. And I don't, I don't know where he is right now. And I should imagine that there are many of you sitting at home tonight digesting this, this news. And you also have loved ones on the continent in Urkistan or Javier, or San Palmarino, or, or Konislava, which is where David was when I last spoke to him three days ago. So when I tell you I know how you are feeling tonight, believe me, I do. But I also know that there's, there's a flow to events. I see it every day here. I know that although tonight it feels like we may be in a time of fear and darkness, we may actually be at the break of a new dawn. We don't know that yet, we can't know that yet, but together we will find out and I will be here every night feeling what you are feeling and with your help, maybe we can all get to that brave new world. My name's Megan Wolfe. Let's make tomorrow better. And we're out. We've got people ringing around, but the telephone networks are overloaded. Okay. We'll find him. Do we know exactly, exactly which cities were hit, or...? Megan. Megan. We will find him.
Alan James. The revolution starts tonight, Alex, and we need your help. Throughout this broadcast, we're going to ask you to do things that will directly help with this mass protest. I'll be talking to you regularly tonight, and I'll also be hacking in when I can. Please help get our message out. We're on the verge, Alex. You've always been fair and balanced in your approach to us. With your help, we can tip the balance in our favor. If you play our tape at the second break, that's when we think it will have the most impact. It's on your right. ...episode of Just The Job, followed at 10 p.m. by a chance to see the very last episode so? of Just The Job. So what? How's it doing? Dr. How should I know? Boy, I haven't heard from it. He's a wanted criminal, Colin. So is my nan, but she never missed her birthday. Your grandmother's on the run, Colin. The yeah. Armed robbery, resisting arrest, double homicide on the same bloke. She's right off. I hope he's all right, though. No. He's got the this far, and your brother was fine. We're going in 10 seconds, everybody! I wonder what they're doing Annoying him, probably. Not probably. Definitely. Going in <coughs> five, four, three... Good evening. This is the National Nightly News, broadcasting across the territories. My name is Megan Wolfe. Our top stories tonight. Future legend. It's been 40 days since Disrupt conducted multiple attacks across the territories. During the coordinated action, subsequently dubbed the Night of Fire, emergency services were kept busy at the agricultural centres, while a series of covert attacks were carried out freeing political prisoners, including former newsman Jeremy Donaldson. Nothing has been heard from the missing journalist since the violent Disrupt attack on his convoy six weeks ago. Donaldson was on his way back to Betterment after his notorious court appearance. All of us here at Channel One hope that wherever he is now, he's safe. Food, glorious food. With the last of the menu centres opening in territories 5, 8 and 14 today, Advance confirmed that the programme is now in full operation, providing free food for every citizen of the new future. What started as rationing during the 20-week war has blossomed into a social contract that is the envy of the unawakened world. Jack Tractorpants, spokesman for the menu centres, said today that while they can guarantee the contents of every box is nutritious, the actual quality of the meals you cook depends on whether you have a touch of Chef Jordan Rankby or the culinary skills of a professional footballer. If I were a rich man, problems in territories 11, 17 and 22 today as striking bosses attempted to undermine their new economies. With seemingly no awareness of irony, the former CEOs and MDs have come together to form the Wealth Creators Union, with demands including a return to 150% bonuses, private jets and mandatory grovelling zones. Advance have been quick to respond, saying if they would rather quit their cushy jobs to become nurses or teachers, they'll earn significantly more than they used to pay their own workforce. Thus far, no one has taken up the challenge. Some fun now. Signs of ever more resistance to Advance's radical policies today, as popular resistance movement Disrupt extended their reach further across the territories. The organization's emblem appeared in every major city across the territories last night in a well-coordinated publicity stunt, which has seen them dominate the headlines. Asked about the impressive display earlier today, Disrupt spokesperson Alan James said that the movement was reaching what he described as a critical mass poor choice of words given recent history. And an ending of sorts tonight for three stories we've been following. A fistful of dollars. After a highly profitable year, Remington's Fist today announced the opening of their new high-tech underwater corporate HQ. Astounding CEO Sophia Remington, pictured here, departing for the new HQ built using underwater flood technology, commented, we've put windows everywhere, saves a fortune on aquariums. A happy ending there for Sophia Remington. Fun guy. Unexpected news today as two familiar scientists announced the birth of an extraordinary child. The underground struggle of doctors David Wong and Ingrid Svorsborg and Horgensward captured the hearts of people around the world. And after an arduous return voyage, which took over a year, the couple say they've never been happier. Baby Dante is said to be healthy, if a bit partial to the airing cupboard. Cash in the hat trick. Beer tycoon and world's richest man, Johnny Hamsleeves, is seeking to cement his place in the annals of history by today releasing his own currency. Johnny claims the mint he's installed on the east shore of his private island can print 100,000 hammies an hour. 
Lacking any status as legal tender whatsoever, he encourages customers to use it to fill swimming pools, decorate living rooms or trick the elderly. All that, plus we'll be taking a trip to Dangley Parts for the notice board, as well as getting a sneak peek at the hottest ticket in town. That's all coming up on tonight's National Nightly News. Today is the day we take back control. Soon it will be time for you to help us again. Come out of your houses, block the traffic, bring the capital to a standstill. I've met so many of you in my travels up and down Territory One. You always ask the same question, how can I help? Well, this is how. And as for when, you'll know. Keep watching. But first, 500 days after the loss of a fine leader and a great man, the start of tonight's programme is dedicated to remembering and celebrating the life of Peter Clement. Patrick Bannon is live from Parliament Park, where Julia Salisbury will be breaking ground on what will soon be a memorial garden in Peter's honour. Patrick. Much longer listening to that old bitch lying through her teeth about missing that poor uh, bastard. Patrick. I don't know what I'm going to do. We're live. Because I'm not being funny. Things were better with Peter, weren't they? Patrick. They were, and I don't mind saying it. They were, because he held her back. But now, now there's no stopping Hello, her. Hello, Patrick. We're oh, live. Of course, can't say that, can I, Francis? No, no, no. Not with public ownership. No, with public I'm ownership, you can't say anything Patrick. these days. Now she's lost it, mate. She's completely off the rocker. I heard from an aide that... Hello, Megan! You join me here live from the what? Oh. Uh, uh... Seems like we've lost some signal there for a moment. Well, we will be going live to that groundbreaking ceremony just as soon as we can get Patrick back. <laughs> Meanwhile, let me just say, I think the memorial gardens are going to be gorgeous. I've had a sneak peek at the designs and Alana Marsh has done a fabulous job. Oh, OK, all right, it seems like we have got the signal back. We can now go live to Patrick Bannon in Parliament Park. Patrick. Thank you, Megan. I'm Patrick Bannon. And we are indeed live here. Apologies for the technical difficulties there, but any moment now, Julia Salisbury will step out on stage behind me. Alex, both of you here. The boys in editing have just informed me that the eulogy footage isn't fully cut together yet. Point. You're going to have to do it on the fly. The for point. goodness sake, make sure you make it look good. Slowly gathering since this <laughs> afternoon. This is Alan. We can undermine them here and help us win hearts and minds. We can look bad, Alex. Really bad. And it seems like the ceremony is getting underway. Here is Prime Minister Julia Salisbury, the picture of elegance to begin her address. Good evening, fellow teammates and friends. 500 days ago, all of our lives changed irrevocably. Still reeling from the triumphs and tribulations of Liberation Night, Another great loss befell the people of these newly united territories. The loss of a leader, a statesman, a dear friend, and a hero, Peter Gordon Clement. Peter's death at the age of just 62, of course, announced by the team on the 24th of December, just six weeks after Liberation Night. Born to a working-class family on a housing estate in Rothering, Peter first trained as a carpenter before getting his start on television, first moving and building scenery and then developing into the personality that we all knew and loved so much. Just the Job first hit our screens over 25 years ago, running for 11 series, winning multiple awards and charming audiences up and down the country. Peter taught us, all of us, not to be content with the way things are. Not to accept inequities, no matter how small. But he also taught us what it took to fight them. Courage, integrity, empathy, and hard bloody graft. <laughs> Across a career spanning three decades, Peter Clement was known for shows including Wake Up, it's Saturday, and much later, late night chat show PT, which at its peak drew millions of viewers. Peter was by no means a saint. <laughs> Trust me, he once told me he had more regrets than he'd had stolen dinners. <laughs> he always did have a knack for a turn of phrase. But it speaks to the strength of his character 
that he chose to share with us his mistakes alongside his achievements, his faults as well as his talents. Peter had the heart to give it all, all he had for the people of these united territories. Famous for his potty mouth, it's estimated conservatively that Peter Clement uttered over 1.5 million swear words during his career, though some sources put this figure well in excess of 2 million F-bombs alone. Gripped by illness as he was in the weeks and months leading up to Liberation Night, he wasn't the man we loved. But his eyes still twinkled with that familiar joy for life, that spark of wit and wisdom of a life lived for others. Prime Minister Clement, of course, died from apparent liver failure after suffering from the long-term effects of alcohol abuse. I first met Peter nearly 20 years ago, moments before I was supposed to give a speech, not unlike this one, actually. Only I'd, um, I'd spilt coffee all down myself and... I was young, nervous, desperate to be liked, and, and from behind me I heard, Christ pet, you've either pissed your kex or sprung a leak, but either way you've got a problem. <laughs> and, and before I could even say a word, he'd stripped off his dry trousers and insisted I took them. <laughs> that was the sort of man that Peter Clement was. Kind, compassionate, sensitive, a brilliant thinker. A natural leader, but mostly a good man. <clears throat> this glorious nation of ours, so beautiful and new, this shining beacon... Maybe you could edit more in our favour next time. Things purpose, are about to get legacy. started. We have another chance to control the impression the public gets. You'll know when, Alex. The future he forged, the, the boundaries he pushed. To me, he'll always be the man in his pants cheering on a stranger at the back of the conference. It is my great honour to give to you the Peter Clement Memorial Garden. Oh. Should we see if we can get a countdown going? Everyone with me? Ten, nine, eight, seven. Now, Alex, control the message. Mom, we have to get you to safety. Come with us. I'm not leaving. I can't. Oi! You two, come with me. Don't panic. No! Well, stop resisting then. Stop resisting and we'll let you up. I'm not resisting. Ah! Fuck you! What are you, you doing? I'm not resisting. You're so. I'm not resisting. I'm the Prime Minister. I give you up. Turn the camera off. The National Night stand. News. We have the I right to be you here. Understand. I said turn the fucking yeah. camera off. Eyes open. <laughs> oh, who the fuck are you? Oh, I can't hear you. I can't hear anything. Yes, yeah, yeah. Medics are coming. You sit down. Oh, I can't hear you. I'm from the National Nightly News. Stay with me. I need help now. Payback. Salisbury's still here. <laughs> Junior Salisbury! You were guilty of the murder of more than 10 million people. Justice demands a response. Haven't you done enough? Look around you! Fucking this time. is what your precious freedom looks like, is it? Hold your fire! This whole territory won't rise up! Take to the streets, the time has come! Stop fires, break windows, draw them out! They can't stop us all! Resist! Distract me! Lower your weapons! Yeah. Location secure. Silence! Lower your weapons now! Send to get the rotation. Go out there! No. What are you doing? Come on! Can't you see? <laughs> Will you turn that off, please, sir? Hello. I said turn it off. Turn that off! Shocking scenes from the capital there. Is this not enough? Shocking. You've just seen them execute unarmed <laughs> civilians. People like you and me. So why are you watching this? Why are you not in the streets with us tonight? What will it take for you to get up and be a part of this? 
March on team headquarters, storm the building, demand elections, demand answers. Be what you were born to be, the once and future free. We'll be back after this. That didn't go so well, Alex. If everyone's safe, but we can turn it around in the next segment. One was a good distance from the unit base. Oh my God. This is becoming a weekly event. No, it's different tonight. This is the big one. Great. So there's a revolution happening outside and we're off to dangly fucking parts. That's journalism, apparently. And spin! This is Neil, come on in! Tell them about our thrones! We've got big thrones. Big thrones for big butts! Here, have some money! And the more you spend, the more you save! We've got bigger thrones! Mansion thrones! Thrones you can throw at stones! Stones as big as thrones! What do we got? The round. We got tons of thrones. We got thrones to put in your hallway, to put in your storeway, to put in your doorway! What do we got? Mm -hmm. Oh, doorways. No, thrones! 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 We've got all sorts of crazy stuff to bling your experience. You want it in gold? We've got it in gold. We've got gold-plated strawberries, gold-plated bikes, gold-plated cars, gold-plated helicopter, gold-plated jet plane. We've got gold-plated gold! We gold-plated, we melt it back down, we gold-plated again! Gold! 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 gold. gold. Alex, during this next section, a cameraman working in the newsroom as one of us is going to get a coded location out. We don't know yet which camera he's on, but if we find out, I'll let you know. Just keep your eyes out for the fist and try and keep it on the ear for at least five seconds. Our operatives will do the rest. Yeah! Mrs. Neal, come and take this away and spend it! Is this Craig? No. What? No. Ten seconds, everybody. Sorry, Craig. It's a no. Okay, we are going in five, four, three. Welcome back to the National Nightly News with me, Megan Wolfe. Very shortly, we'll be heading on over to the final episode of what has quickly become a hugely successful feature, The Notice Board. But before we do, let's chat with Philippa Radin. Tell me, why do you think the public love The Notice Board so much? It's real. <laughs> there, I said it. it. It connects with people. You know, people look at us and they say, those are real people struggling with real problems. That's a, that's a really interesting point. Yeah, I mean, I was saying to my PA secretary as I got out the limo, I was saying, it's good for people to see normal, authentic people like them on TV. Mmm, people like you. Yeah, precisely. Right. Unfortunately, then I was interrupted by some dreadful wretch who wanted an autograph, but a swift kicking from security soon put him back in line. <laughs> Yes, well, I think it's really good that our screens are filled with such relatable stories. So, the notice board is coming to an end after a sensational time at the top. What do you think has made this show so successful? Oh, it's a combination of so many things. Um, my hard work, mm. um, my talent, my look. Wow, we really have a lot to thank you for. Hey, hey, hey. You're welcome. Mm. What's this We've just heard. So well? Our man's on camera four. I have a real sense of responsibility now. Get back to the interview, I've Alex. I've been entrusted with something precious and that I should use that platform for good. Yeah, I think that's really important, that we should use this platform to, to do good in the world. I agree. That's exactly it. So I've decided to help as many other people. Excellent work, Alex. That's the location shared. Next, you'll need to give them the go. Is that um, better access to education or you know, reducing child poverty? Uh, no, by adopting as many as I can get my hands on. <laughs> oh, OK. Uh, how, many, how many children have you adopted? Oh, we're well into the double figures now, Megan. I stopped counting in the late 30s. <laughs> Goodness, that is a lot of children. Yeah, once we finish putting them into the guest room, I'll have to put a futon in the laundry cupboard. Oh, you really are some sort of hero. Hey, I live a privileged life. What can I say? I mean, any child I can take on is a child rescued from suffering. Poor children. Were their lives really that bad before? Oh, they're northern, so I presume so. OK. <laughs> yeah, it's shocking to think, actually, that only one in 10,000 children have a celebrity parent. Hmm. I'd never thought of it that way before. Well, I'm doing everything I can to fix those numbers. What do you think it is about your life that's so desirable, then? Well, it's mainly shame and panic interspersed with expensive bottled water. So, uh, actually, if anyone wants to, I'd happily trade. <laughs> now that I can relate to. Right. <laughs> you better go off and get ready. That was Philippa Radin sharing some thoughts about her lifestyle. 
I think it's really important to stay grounded uh, and keep everything in perspective. Clearly, not everyone else agrees, but that's enough for me. Let's go now over to Dangly Parts for the final ever episode of The Notice Board. <laughs> What a day! First the tea morning, and now to post this notice. I don't know how I managed to cope with it all. Oh wait, perhaps I do. Boo. Oh! By St Barnabas, what on earth is all this? Freeze, dirtbag! Oh, Laura, it's you. I thought for a moment you were a knife-wielding mugger or stabber. <laughs> no, I'm afraid not. It's just me, a community cohesion officer, responsible for keeping crime at record lows. Of course. I keep forgetting that thanks to you and your colleagues, violence on our streets is a thing of the past. What's all this, Vicar? I know! It's a disgrace. Somebody it's time for the go code. Give us three bows in a row, Alex. That will start the pencil movement. You might just pull this off. Push forwards! Three bows, Alex. Careful, Vicar. It looks heavy. Ha! They don't call me the right reverend. Ripped for no reason. Yes! It's no good. It looks like all those crucifix classes were a waste of time. Perhaps you, a young CCO, would be able to move it. Two for two. Fantastic. <laughs> looks like all those lifting classes were a waste of time. <laughs> it's too heavy. Even for me, a strong and capable woman. You did it, Alex. We're good to go. Strong enough to lift this. Did someone call for the best firefighter in town? <laughs> Hi! <gasps> well done, Captain Evans. You're so much stronger than us. Especially me, the weak old man. It's the least I could do for my community. <gasps> No luck catching the little devil then? Unfortunately not. The ferret struck again last night. When Ray opened the post office this morning, he found that every single stamp had been pre-licked. My <gasps> God! Some people have no decency. Sadly, if we don't catch him before tomorrow, we may have to cancel the village fate. <gasps> don't worry. We won't let that happen. Will we, Vicar? No, no, no. Laura, tell me, why do they call him the ferret? Some say it's because of his sneaky nature. But really, it's because whenever he strikes, he always leaves behind the foul stench of urine. Never fear, officer. We'll catch this pissy nuisance and save the village fate. Or my name's not Captain Danger Evans. The community cohesion team are doing their best. But they simply don't have the smarts to solve this mystery. But I know someone who does. Someone who's about to blow this thing wide open. <laughs> Me! Blackout! Ah, uh, it's the morning of the village fate. Thanks to theatrical convention. I sure hope everything goes to plan. Oh, look! There's Mrs Craven setting up her cake stall. And look, there's the motorcycle display team setting up for a show that will be far too expensive for live television. <laughs> I'm going to set up the coconut shy. What are you doing, Vicar? First, I'm running the tombola. Then, I'll be selling forgiveness for money. Aren't you 
judging the jams? I couldn't possibly. Ah! Well, that sounded like Mrs. Craven. <gasps> Looks like someone sucked all the jam out of her donuts. Shut down, Ferret has struck again. Whatever are we to do? Although I'm very competent, I have no idea how to solve this case. I guess we'll just have to cancel the fate. Hold it right there, ferret. <gasps> Me? Have you been drinking from the fire extinguishers again? Not you, the vicar. <gasps> I don't know what you're talking about. Admit it. You wanted the village fate cancelled so you could have the day off, didn't you? I already have to work Sundays. I shouldn't have to work two days a week. <gasps> But how did you know? Well, my first clue was the smell. Yes, I do smell of urine. Next, I noticed that the vicar's tongue was particularly dry, almost as if he'd been licking thousands and thousands of stamps. Or perhaps eating Mrs. Craven's baking. <laughs> 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 Which brings me on to my third clue. The vicar said that he had no more room for jam. Almost as if he'd had his fill. Precisely. But you managed to figure it all out from that. Well, I also uh, found this at the scene. <laughs> that proves nothing. No! Get him out of here, officer! Oh. <sighs> you did it, Captain. You could say you ferreted him out. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, come on. Let's go and have a party in my massive garden. I am doing well. Thanks to you, we're all doing well. Well, that was it. The final ever episode of The Notice Board. And what a way to end it. Thank you, as always, to Jeff, Philippa and Tommy. After the break, we'll be both dancing and learning. So don't change that channel. We'll be right back. That's the ads. Well done, everybody. Wow! Ha! What a brilliant run, eh? After party at my place. What advert is this, Alex? I don't remember I passing it for broadcast. Now, I think you made a mistake there. I'm an economist uh, and I've got four kinds of sausage. You've probably seen me on the news hey, you, talking you. about advance. You're coming to the after party. And how progressive their policies are. Well, I was wrong. Oh, and I'm here tonight to say I'm sorry. And one last push, Alex. We're closing in. One of the guests in the last section is working with us. You'll be asked to censor on our behalf. If you do it right, the final orders will be given. We'll get three chances. Get at least two of them right, and we're going to win this thing. It's happening, Alex. Tonight we take it back. I always envied my friends who had so much more. Over the years, my jealousy grew. So when Advance came to power, I didn't think about the damage they would do. I... I acted selfishly. I was glad to see the rich punished. I didn't see how backwards Advance were. I didn't understand that rather than tearing down the wealth creators, we should have been helping everyone else to take a seat at their table. Under Advance, the country is poorer. It is poorer in ambition. It is poorer in aspiration. We are infantilized by Advance's naive policies. Please, Sarah, anything. Sorry, Mum, I'm really not supposed to say. Are we safe? Hi, I'm Maddie. Uh, Johnny just said to ask if you need a touch up. I have hoarded myself out to the media to defend That's the That's my shade, is it? Uh, yeah. This is I my shade. I betrayed my parents. Mm. I see that now. Mum. Dad. You can run back to Jenny I'm sorry. Now. Our only hope. Sorry about that, Sarah. Nothing the you can only hope. At all, like, at all. They've said no one's died, that's lies. all I can say. Ten With seconds. What's wrong with you? She is in tears. Ugh. Going in five, four, three. <sighs> Welcome back to the National Nightly News. Later in this segment, we're hoping to be able to go back to Patrick Bannon at the scene of tonight's shocking disrupt attack. 
But first, I'm delighted to be joined by the cast of the smash hit musical Everyone is Talking About. I'll be speaking with the cast in a moment, but first, let's take a look at them in action. Please give a warm national nightly welcome to the Novaries. Hello? Doctor? Yes, I see. Thank you for letting me know. I have a decent life. I'm a happy, loving wife. And my job is well paid and fulfilling. I have a husband, John. He's due home soon, won't be long. And I have to tell him something. We share coffee in the morning And we make love every day We take time alone together To talk and laugh and play We prioritise our needs We do charitable deeds But the flowers of our happy life Are now beset by me I'm home Oh darling John Oh dearest John There's something very wrong just had a conversation with our Dr. David Wong, so please be seated. This news will make you feel defeated. The scans revealed a lump. You, you poor unlucky chump. Is it cancer? We're so done. We're having a baby. How can this be? Oh, woe is me. Why has this happened to me? I always wear two condoms for the maximum of safety. safety. In our tiny flat, we built a peaceful habitat. We're having a baby Now you can't have any wine at the club And there won't be any time for foot rubs Now your hair will stink of weed And you'll start to disagree And forget about that holiday in Territory 3 No more waking up at half past ten In fact you're never going to get a good night's sleep again no more snap decisions to go on to a club You'll be lucky if you even make it out to the pub Why can't we be more like our gay and lesbian jobs? The only clue they have to deal with comes from personal bums Now when I take a sick day at home The parasite won't leave you alone How he's wrong! We're out of priority treating us to their opening number from Energy for a Childless Life, which is currently the hottest ticket in the Capital Theatre District. And we'll be touring the territories later this year. 
Right then, come on, you got. Come on down. Let's go. Don't be shy. <laughs> Hello. <sighs> Hi, Megan. Hi. It's an honour to be here. Oh, really? Are you fans of the show? Yes, yeah, used to be. <laughs> well, listen, let's get stuck in. You're an amazing musical. Now, I mean, not only do you perform this show every single night... With matinees on Wednesday and Saturday! Right, but you're also the show's creators, am I right? Well, everyone contributed their ideas, and then some of us went away and did the actual work on the script. <laughs> um, but no, it's, it's very much a team effort. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> How rude of me, I've not introduced any of you. <laughs> I'll be the one being replaced next. Let's go down the line, shall we? Hi, I'm Jack. <laughs> Jim Blunt. Pleasure to be here. Okay. Jennifer Boreham Woodley. Hello, I'm John. John Sattley. Used to be in the business professionally. My name's Jill, with a J. <laughs> and I'm Janet. I'm the youngest. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> and you were all friends previously. I mean, what a, what a coincidence, right? <laughs> Uh, with, with, your, with your names begin, beginning with a J. Oh my goodness, guys! Our names all begin with J! <sighs> How have we never noticed that? Uh, because you haven't typed them out a thousand times? <laughs> <laughs> you knew? Why didn't you say anything? I thought we all knew. It's bloody obvious, isn't it? I just thought we were doing a funny thing where we never mentioned it. <laughs> and I believe as well as being friends, you're also couples. You know, in real life as well as in the show. Well, <laughs> oh, well. God, not exactly. No. I'm not married to him. Uh, <laughs> I'm with Janet. And I'm with John, you lucky bean. <laughs> Jim and I are married. Four fabulous years. <laughs> well, that must make for some confusion in the rehearsal room. Well, you should have seen the first draft. Jen decided that Jack would play Jim, I would play Jack. Jen, Janet, Jill, Jen, Janet, Jill. What about John? Well, my character was originally just called Man One. It was allegorical. It was, it was. very confusing. Not for a professional. <laughs> After much doing and throwing. And gnashing and wailing. <laughs> And gin and tonic. <laughs> <laughs> we decided that we'd just use our own names, which um, is less truthful. Right. We're also less likely to go into the wrong dressing rooms. Oh, God, yeah, that would be very embarrassing, wouldn't it? <laughs> uh, of course, when I first wrote it, we were only meant to run for a few nights at the Mimbley Village Hall, but when I registered it with the Department for Culture, mm. it caught the eye of someone high up, and before you could say overnight sensation, we were transferring to the capital! <laughs> it's all been a bit of a roller coaster, really. Yeah. I'm only 19, I'm the youngest. You really don't have to repeat that. <laughs> I had to give up my job as a mortuary technician. Well, yes, we all had to move to the capital. Yes, yes. <laughs> I love that job. It's been a very turbulent time. So peaceful, no singing. This piece isn't peaceful. Stand by, Alex. Sense of the orange. It's about children hmm? and why you shouldn't have them. <laughs> In a way, I guess it is political with a small p. After all, we are a solid unit, and eagle-eyed audience members will see we nod our heads to advance on stage throughout, and we target the messaging at women aged 22, well, about 35, as they're the most likely to be afflicted by this terrible problem. Terrible problem. Having children. Well, you understand, Megan. You clearly agree. Wow, this isn't about me. So. Of course, we see that there are advantages to a family unit, but eagle-eyed couples watch as the little parasites advance on their lives. And there's no time to play the guitar, get through a book, or watch a movie. They're exhausted, passed out on the couch by 20 to 9, for God's sake. You're very chatty tonight, dear. Usually I'm the chatty one. Because you're the youngest, we know! It's not a badge of honour, Janet. <laughs> <laughs> Janet, please, Jennifer. Oh, well said, John. Thanks, Janet. Got you back. So, could, um, could you just tell us uh, what is the play about? Mm. What happens in yes. it? Yes. Well, go ahead. It's a tragedy, obviously. <laughs> um, Jennifer, myself, and John have their child, and then the story charts the downfall of their hopes and dreams. And there's lots of singing. And dancing! A lot. My character works at a menu centre for a distribution unit. Eagle-eyed, she sees her friend's rapid advance to a pit of despair. Becoming a target for children's TV advertising at the age of 22, she decides to take drastic action. I can't really say more, though. I probably said too much already. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not spoil the second act for anyone who might come to see it. <laughs> <laughs> Which should be all of you. <laughs> For too long, we've been told that a life without children is somehow incomplete, that, that children are, are a blessing. 
Well, I've done the research and they're not. <laughs> Besides, there's already loads of bastards running around all over the place. So. <laughs> we just want people to have the option of a happy, child-free life without stigma. <laughs> you know, when I was 14, before I had come out, <laughs> I had an experience with a girl called Julia Jacobs. She was an experiment, I guess, you know, a chance to dip my toes into the eating. Well, thank you all so much for coming in tonight. I really hope you keep them dancing in the aisles for many performances to come. Mm. The nose is there. And I am pleased to say we can now go back to Patrick Bannon to get the latest from the scene of tonight's horrific events. Patrick, are you okay? Thank you, Megan. This is Patrick Bannon reporting from the scene of tonight's devastating and symbolic attack tonight this evening. An attack which I myself have been found myself caught up in. I I'm still a little dazed and a little deaf, Megan. So I hope you'll forgive me if I seem that it's time to speak with the Prime Minister. Mrs Salisbury, that's you. You're still here. The Prime Minister. I couldn't leave. Not, not when there were people that needed help. Any team player would have done the same. I don't deserve praise for being human. Yes, no accolades here. Or palisades. Or lemonade. Right. So, is the situation now? Are we safe? Um, yes. Um, the security services perform their duties without hesitation. And I would like to assure the public that although there have been some injuries, there were no civilian deaths here this evening. Oh, that's good news about the civ. Sorry, did you did you say no deaths? That's right. No civilian deaths. Just the four disrupt terrorists curtailed by law enforcement who were, as always, so cohesive. If I may, I have a message for your viewers. Oh, of course, the camera, there's the camera. Speak there, on, on the camera there. Stay at home tonight. Do not become another casualty of war. Disrupt have had their moment, but as the dear departed Peter Clements once famously said, it ends today. Thank you, Prime Minister, for those strong words of strength. Back to the studio, Megan, now in the studio with Megan Wolf now. Patrick Bannon there, bravely reporting from the front line of tonight's horrifying bombing. Maybe you need to get checked out, Patrick. Well, that brings us to the end of tonight's National Nightly News. But before we go, National Nightly News. The victory is in sight, my friends. You have mobilised. You have come together from our agents at the television networks risking arrest and getting those words to you to the many hundreds and thousands gathering to invade team headquarters. As I speak, we are turning the tide and it is time for change. Tonight we topple their regime and we also silence their mouthpiece. Channel One, time to wake up. Of course they would have you believe the military have been actioned and well, it's pretty scary. So stay at home and stay with Channel One, because the team has assured this programme that the turbulence will soon be over and we can once again focus our minds on building the new future with equality, fairness and resources for all. My name is Megan Wolf. Let's make tomorrow better. Done it, Alex. Tonight is the beginning of the fall of advance. Watch chat at 11 o'clock.
I've checked the schedule for tonight. Nothing major to report. Certainly isn't anything you can't handle. Still, at least my daughter's in for Advance's new initiative. That should liven things up a bit here. Keep up the good work. ...after the birth of their unexpectedly large family. At 9.15, it's What Music Is Best? A rundown of the top-selling songs across the territories. Expect catchy tunes and scenes of an inappropriately sexual nature. Not one to miss. At 10 p.m., it's time for Julia's Diary where the ever-popular Prime Minister reads extracts from her diary in front of a warm fire. Then, at 10.30, it's the latest episode of our drama series, Betterment, which tells the inspirational story of Emily Dennisworth and the brave doctors and technicians... And this is Jenny. She's the floor manager. Hi, Stacey. Mm. That's Colin. He, um... Do you know what? Just don't talk to Colin. We're getting involved in bringing your daughter to work, eh, Colin? Nah, nah, we don't believe in it. All right, come and sit next to Mum. <laughs> believe in what? Just days. How did it all go so right? That's followed by the territory. Add a girl. Ten, ten seconds, everybody. Now all of them. One day is a myth. I explained so much. Okay, we are going in five, four, three. As we go over to Megan and the team. Good evening and welcome to the NNN. I'm Megan Wolf. And who's this? You might be wondering. <laughs> well, it's Bring Your Daughter to Work Day here at Channel One. So I'm joined tonight by my foster daughter, Stacey. Say hello, Stacey. Go fuck you. So. All right then, here are the stories that matter to you. First up, with Advance confirming that the nuclear fallout from the 20-week war is to blame for the drop in birth rates across the territories, we asked you what keeps you going. 
I know that I for one was quite deflated when I heard about this, but reading all your submissions has really put the smile back on my face. This is from Drew in Humberset. To take our minds off things, me and my partner have been building this house for our hamster. It really does distract us from thinking about the 85% sterility rate. So next week, we're building Nibbles a tiny conservatory, a loft conversion, and a holiday home. Thank you for that. And if you've started a new hobby, do write in and tell us about it. Next up, you know how we love your uncanny comestible coincidences and <laughs> I don't know about you, but I think this one really takes the biscuit. <laughs> I'm not sure what I'm more impressed by, Stacey. The things our viewers spot or the unbelievable way our menu centres are now able to feed every team member every single day. Greg from Proddington has sent us this lovely photo of their breakfast, saying, I couldn't bring myself to eat my toast this morning because I could swear it bore the spitting image of the great Julia Salisbury's relatable face. So I had to make do with a plate of butter and two spoonfuls of jam. <laughs> do keep those coming in. Come on, come on, give me another go. <laughs> uh, we've just got time for one more of your stories. And this one is an inspiring story of rehabilitation. Uh, that's it, just tell us who it's from. Yeah, and then read it out. Okay. Um, so this one says it's from John in Stokely. Before I was convicted, I'd never read a single book but since I was released from Betterman, I haven't been able to stop. I'm even working at a library and on our lunch breaks, Mr. Wordyworth spell checks my tattoos. We absolutely love hearing the way our neighbours and team members have been able to become better people. So do let us know your stories here. You can do this bit, Stacey. <laughs> no, you're all right, thanks. Come on, give it a try. Let us know your stories here at the NNN. N -N -N. N -N -N. Right, a bit of a change of pace coming up here. You'll need to use the SFX buttons for the next segment. The advance have already selected when and what to use. Simple stuff. Just follow your government orders. First up tonight on the NNN, it's time to celebrate this week's team lottery winners live from the Shakespeare Theatre right here in the capital. We're going to hand over to Julia Salisbury. I suppose you don't think much of her either, eh, Stacey? She's got a lot more going for her than you wankers. OK. Surprising vote of approval there from Stacey. Let's go live to that right now. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to this week's team award. Of all the many duties I have as team leader, this is by far the most pleasant. As I so often say to you, the uneven past is now, following the demise of Disrupt, firmly behind us. This is the new future. And I say to you, it's better now. <laughs> I am delighted to be joined here tonight by one of the oldest people in Territory One. He was born over 107 years ago. Please give a warm team welcome to Alfie Tatchbadger. <laughs> so, Alfie, you must have seen so much in your lifetime. What have been some of the highlights? Alfie? Is he all right? His hearing aid isn't turned on. Oh, could you turn it on? <laughs> he says it drains the battery. Well, uh, will you tell him that we'll buy him a brand new battery after the presentation? <laughs> Yeah, he says that's fine then. And I will, I will help him with that, yeah. If you would. <laughs> Sorry, can't get the staff. 
We got it. So, Alfie. What? You're 107 years old. Oh, don't bloody remind me. <laughs> Would you like to tell the audience what that's like? Well, where is everybody? Um, out there, in the dark. <laughs> well, bless him, it's not just the ears. <laughs> Who are you? Uh, two sugars, please. Uh, uh, I'm Julia Salisbury, the Prime Minister. A oh, lovely story. Who are you really? No, no, I, I really am the Prime Minister. Oh, oh so you're a, 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 you know... A, a woman. Yeah, a woman. One, one Women of them. can do anything men can do these days, Alfie. Oh, can you piss standing up? <laughs> I can't say I've ever tried. No, I didn't <laughs> think so. Two sugars, please, and not too much milk. Uh, uh, shall we get to the awards, Alfie? Oh, aren't you going to ask me about my life? Well, I'm not sure we have enough time left now for that, so... When I was nine, I wanted a pet, so I asked me mum and pap. There was no television then, back then, you know. We made our own entertainment out of coal and roadkill. <laughs> well, that's fascinating. So they got me a pet, see? But it weren't a dog. They told me it were a dog, but it were a stone. A stone? Yes. So I called it Patch, which were a popular name for a dog back then, on account of the king having a patchy face. And I decided to introduce him to pretty little Gertie Thimble, who lived up the road. <laughs> oh, how romantic. <laughs> she threw my dog in the river. That was the day I decided I'd never marry. <laughs> and that's the secret to your long life? Oh, no. I've been married seven times. Divorced eight. There was a mix-up with number three, see? Yes, I'm just lucky. <laughs> Are we going back to the home soon? Uh, soon, Alfie. <laughs> First, let's turn to the reason we're all here. The weekly Territory One Team Awards. <laughs> First up tonight is a lady who really knows how to put in the extra hours. She works at a transition centre in Hamble Bamblebury and she has single-handedly allowed more families to unburden each other than any other nurse in Territory One. <laughs> In the uneven path, she'd have been locked up. <laughs> Tonight, she is being honoured as a team player. Please welcome Daphne Snister. Uh, uh, are you here to change me? Just uh, give her a medal, Alfie. There's a good boy. <laughs> oh, Two sugars, uh, and don't let it steep too long. I think you're supposed to give me one of those. Oh. Oh. Well, I, I, I... There he goes, look! <laughs> I can't get the arms up any higher than that. You'll have to go down, love. Thank God those fractious times are behind us. And now the territories are thriving. Are we in? As the act you said to the bishop. <laughs> yes, thank you. I've got it from here. Well done. Daphne Smith to everybody. Now, open your envelope and find out what you've won. <laughs> Don't hold back there. She's stuffing one of Peter's homemade Ethel's cakes. Got it. <laughs> I've won a holiday for two in Territory 15. It used to be called San Palmarino, didn't it? Uh, I believe it did, yes. Why couldn't we have stuck with that then? It's easier to remember. We're all one nation now. <laughs> Hang on a minute. Isn't it still on fire? And Daphne Snister, everyone. <laughs> oh, what about my change? I've been in these five months for three days now. Uh, we'll get to that, Alfie. <laughs> oh, right you are, love. Uh, next up tonight is a couple from Farnley who, after a rocky start losing their family's ill-gotten gains to the Assets and Wealth Act, have really embraced the new future, setting up a community farm and petting zoo in their local area for all the local children to play. Please welcome Otho and Lobelia Jackson Randy Gannett. <laughs> Medals, Alfie. 
Do you know, when I was in the trenches, I had a pal called Scotty Wilson. He was from way up north, so I didn't understand a bloody word he said. But he were my best mate. Should we describe him for ourselves? Probably for the best. <laughs> and his best mate was Smudger Aves. There was them two. Fiddly Eric, Unstable Terry, and of course, Leggy Sydney. She were a girl. But she had a boy's name, so they shipped her to the front anyway. <laughs> First girl any of us has ever seen curls up. She's dead now. They all are. Smudger and Scotty never made it home. Fiddley got shanked in Frankworth Prison in argument over an olive. And Terry, he exploded quietly at home. Sydney got a fatal skin condition. Scratched herself to death. It makes you think. Thanks, Alfie. Great contribution. <laughs> so, Otho and Lavinia, a petting zoo. After we lost all our wealth, well, we discovered there were actually people who had never even owned a pony. I used to have three. <laughs> so we decided to do something about it. Uh, that's the type of people we are, you see. Advantage of a private education, probably. Well, I'm sure we can debate that all night, but there's no time. So, let's see what you've won. Yes, before we do, there's something I wanted to say to you. Oh, absolutely. Every citizen of the new future has my ear. When advance came to power, you took all of our wealth. You took the shirts off of our backs. Quite literally, in my case, I used to collect shirts. Well, you might as well have the rest of it, too. Oh, security! Oh, God, not again. If I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times. Fannies and the news are not good bedfellows. Keep those flappy bits off my channel, Alex. And better. Uh, and you are? Oh, no. What's a go? Oh. It isn't right and it isn't fair. You tell him, girl. That's my wife, you know. <laughs> oh, no, you don't. You can't think pearls with swine. It isn't right. We used to have three horses, then and Bethel and Hungwell. And now what have we got? Two mangy goats, one mongrel dog called Kenneth, and a rooster that won't bloody shut up! Can we get this over quickly with, please? As the actress said to the bishop. <laughs> oh, here we go again. Uh, uh, hello, Alfie Tadge Badger. Please to meet you. Stop them! Uh, oh, don't worry, love. I I'll protect you. Oh, 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 oh. oh. You even better blow my ruddy nose. You know, this reminds me of when I was in my twenties and we go to the, the promenade at Shining on Sea and watch all the pretty girls on the beach. <laughs> Everything was black and white then, of course. We'd visit the Penny Arcade and try to win a block of lard to take home for the family. You couldn't buy lard in those days. You had to win it. Oh, it was so much simpler back then. Boys were boys, girls were girls. Everyone else was recruited by the circuses. <laughs> there were loads of them, you see, circuses, with their big tents and their candy floss. You hear the music. There was a pipe organ drifting over the nearby fields. Uh, my mum used to call it the most magical sound in the world. This was before she lost her hearing after giving a particularly loud round of applause. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, did, oh, did, did you ever go to the circus? What's that, Alfie? Uh, the circus, yeah, oh, never mind. Yeah, just the tea, Pat. Well. That was an unexpected dose of naked nostalgia. <laughs> Some people simply can't let go of the past. That's why I look in joy and fervent admiration at the younger generation. So cohesive, such a team. And with fertility falling throughout the territories, we should value our fabulous new generation now more than ever. Our final winner tonight is a go-getter who really went and got him, helping to root out more than 170 disrupt collaborators in his own neighbourhood. Since then, he's gone on to be a senior cohesion cadet leader and organised all of the entertainment at last year's camp cooperation. Our final winner tonight, Edwin Neverlay. 
Oh, you should be in a transition centre, you old monk. Prime Minister. It's an absolute pleasure to finally meet you. We're very similar, in my opinion. <laughs> well, I've never been much of a role model. <laughs> Nonsense. Prime Minister, you have saved this country. You have fought enemies, foreign and domestic, with an iron fist. As with my own tiny fists have I. Well, let's open the envelope and find out what you've won. <laughs> Maybe it'll be a fist enlargement. <laughs> <laughs> Year's internship as a behaviour coach at Betterment. <laughs> Let's show the fools where they went wrong, eh? Well, actually, Betterment is about rehabilitation, Edwin. Absolutely. And if they don't reintegrate, we retaliate. Just like you did on Liberation Night. Thank you for this award. And stay vigilant. Report the non cohesives. Be a team player. Concludes tonight's award fair. Uh, join me next week when hopefully things will be a lot more normal. Back to you, Megan. Prime Minister Salisbury there at a highly eventful team award ceremony. Any thoughts on this week's winners, Stacey? The nurse was fucking scary, the pre tees were saggy, and that little prick will never lose his virginity. Okay, well. Succinctly put there, if a little profane. After the break, we'll be going live to a star studded premiere. You won't believe who's on the red carpet tonight. Don't go anywhere, we'll be back after this. And we're out. Oh, Alex, one other. You know, What's that? Building, You're off already. I know you had to take the day of work, but you knew it. Now, oh, I see. Really no luck still with you. I'm so sorry, darling. I'll speak to you later. Oh, Alex. I completely forgot what I was going to say. Blast it all. Still, I'm lucky to have her. That. Do you reckon he's watching us somewhere? Laughing. Are you watching us? Are you receiving us? Are you fucking with us? Oh, right. So she can swear. How well do you know your neighbour? How well do you know the people down the road? Hippity Bob. So much better. So much better. You gotta go to better man. So much better. So much better. So, Patrick and Robin are just gonna grab who they can, and then you've got these generic links on the auto queue to glue it all together. They do know I have a Queen's View degree in journalism. Bet you wish you'd study something useful now, eh? All this bring your daughter to work day. What a joke. Where is our honoured guest? I don't know, she's probably sniffing around that boy band, Hot Spot. Heat that. Rash. Hot Spot won it last year. Heat Rash. Oh, God, they're running out of names, aren't they? I hear the computer comes up with them, the songs too. Ah, oh, there she is, and just in time too. That's ten seconds, everybody. What have you been up to? What's it to you? And we are going in five, four, three. Welcome back. Stacey's still here. Wishing she wasn't. Thanks, Stacey. And in this segment, we're delighted to have sent Robin and Patrick to the movies. Yes, tonight is the world premiere of The Automated, starring Lawrence Blunderclatch and the late, great Helena Canterbury Boatshoe. And all the stars are out tonight. We first covered this film almost five years ago, back when it was called The Medicated. Then, for mysterious reasons, the film was suddenly pulled the night before its release. Well, since then, executive producer George Focus has spent five long years polishing the film and turning it into a special edition and premiering tonight. With extensive state-of-the-art visual effects and a top-quality voice team, George says it's the movie he always wanted to make. Now, let's take a look at it. I can't deconstruct it. Captain? I can't deconstruct it. Robots! Is this a wig? You think I don't grow that? No, Dick, I'll kill you.
kill you. Think of Satin. There's something on your face, Chief Harrison! I wish you were real, baby. Flesh and blood. Captain Quasar! But you're just ones and zeros, baby. If only I'd noticed. Captain Quasar! You rusted! But I didn't notice! Captain! I'm buffering, Chief, you said! Got one on you! God damn it, lost it all! Here's a map! What's a map? Okay, so head north on Interstellar Avenue, left at the asteroid belt, and a tricky three point turn at Uranus. What are these symbols? This corner, this, this is the key. We could shut it down. Yes, yes, we could shut it down. But we have to ask ourselves, who are we? Gosh, thrilling stuff. What did you think, Stacey? The robots were all right, I guess. They certainly were. Let's go over to Robin Short now in Western Square, who I believe has got the star of the show. Robin. Right, you, shall we? Yes, we are live <laughs> from Western Square with a man who needs no introduction, Florence Blunderclatch. How has your mm -hmm. evening been so far? Magical, absolutely magical. <laughs> my most dear friends all gathered here to celebrate my work. One really couldn't ask for much more, could oh, one? Well, on that note, with award season just around the corner, are you hoping to add to your collection for a third time? Well, I really couldn't say. <laughs> but if the association deigned to honour me for a fourth time, <laughs> so be it. It's really not for me to say. <laughs> But let's just say that I know of three little gold men who are getting rather lonely. <laughs> Absolutely. Because I've won three. Three little awards. And each more deserved than the last. Well, it's safe to say that your career has gone supersonic in the last couple of years. How's that been? Well, as I was saying to Stephen only yesterday, that's Stephen Spellman. Yeah. The Stephen Spellman. Lovely chair. I mean, unbelievable mind. I said, Stephen, you know, this really has been quite the ride. Did you know what he said? He agreed with me. Wow. <laughs> and what do you attribute your success to? Well, if we're talking actual numbers, I'd have to say 60% talent, 30% looks, and 10% passion, brackets mm -hmm. general. Not to mention, the incredible coverage on election night. That really was the start of it all. That and my own range of sick bags. Lawrence's chunder catch. <laughs> <laughs> wow, who could forget? <laughs> well, it's been a delight talking to you as always. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, Patrick Bannon should be with Lil C for a conversation that doesn't involve vomit. Patrick. Thank you, Robin. <laughs> Fingers crossed. I'm joined here by pop icon, it's Lil C. <laughs> and her father, <laughs> country singer and alien worshipper, Billy Bob Jean Short. Howdy. <laughs> so, Lil C, what's with the bag? She knows what she's done. <laughs> well, we love this look. Is it one of yours? No, you know it's not. We don't do that anymore. Ah, uh, yes, of course, your clothing label went bankrupt, didn't it? <laughs> yes, because a certain TV show failed to fulfill their contractual obligations. <laughs> well, you look great. <laughs> oh, well, that's probably due to her new cosmetics and wellness brand. Well, I'm not sure that it is. <laughs> Let her show you. This oh. is our new eyeshadow oh. palette. She oh. calls this one Glands. Wow, it's scented. <laughs> Wow, that was a surprise. And this next one, this is our new lipstick. We call this shade Lips. Oh, oh, wow. Why is it so salty? It's organic. Mm. And this, our next one, this body spray, mm. this is a body mist which rebalances your hormones <laughs> and actually smells like fertility. Oh, right, yeah. <coughs> wow. You feel that? Yeah, yeah, that burns. 
Oh. All this is part of Lil C's oh. new range, straight from my veins. Oh, good lord. Breeze Craglar. Oh. oh, so um, you're retiring from the music industry. That must be hard. Well, she's way past her prime, Patrick. It was very hard for her to accept it first, <laughs> but the industry is very, very sure about these things. <laughs> Well, you sure we can't convince you to release just one last album? We do actually have another album ready, but that's for the label to release in case she dies over the next 10 years or so. Oh, oh really? Well, <laughs> given the way she's going, you might get it by Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we better let you get back. <laughs> oh, now, oh. now remember, we need the money. So, she's also available for parties, <laughs> weddings, funerals, and bar mitzvahs. Well, Thank you, Lil C. <laughs> That's Lil C there. Oh. oh, and it looks like Robin has got hold of Jesus. <laughs> is it obvious I'm sweating, Robin? It absolutely is, Patrick. Jesus, I almost can't believe you're here. How have you been? You know, I like to walk amongst the peoples every now and then. It makes them feel close to me. Right, yes. And to be close is to be human. And to be human is to be a part. <laughs> well, that was good, write that down. Hey, right, Rachel, write that one down. It's good to see you've done so well for yourself. Thank you, my child. You know, I have you to thank for that. If it was never for your show supporting me and my music, I never would have transcended. Now, there are rumours going around that you might be running for office. Is there any truth to that? Yeah, 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 that's absolutely true, yeah. But you're aware that elections have been suspended in the territories? Uh, no, I'm, I'm not running to be no prime minister. Oh, you're not? No. I'm going to be king of the moon. King of the moon? Yes. No, sorry. You're running for king of the moon? No, not running. It's my birthright. Ah, uh -huh. and does this have anything to do with promoting your upcoming hip opera, Chase in Space? Hush now. Cynicism is so on the moon. Ah, uh, okay. And how long will this last? Will it go the way of last year's Living as a Mouse fiasco? Or maybe your foray into ventriloquist beats? I don't make the moon rules, I merely live by them. <laughs> So, are you looking forward to seeing The Automated? You know, I don't believe in film. Thou shalt keep thine image still and holy. That's track for what Jesus Christ made us know. OK, thank you for your time and good luck with your new life in space. And with you, my child. <laughs> well, Megan, that's what success looks like. I'm going to see if we can grab someone else to have a chat. Back to you. Well, what about being so famous? It's places like this. You know, being around actors and rock stars, they're real crazy. And Crazy Neil knows crazy! Generations <laughs> perspective? You won't like my opinions. Oh, go on, try me. <laughs> well, Bumbanonk is so old he's like one week away from a transition centre, so who cares? And Lil C was cool when I was like 12 or something, but now she's just another fucking loony. You ever sit in a chair and knock your socks off? No, I can't say that I have. Makes a mess of the carpet. But what do you say? We got a deal? Uh, well. Well, what about Betty Andrews' handbag? <laughs> it's real leather, it's real cheap, and it even contains our heart medicine. <laughs> Spicy. Uh, no, really. I you've got the chair, oh. you've got the bag. You're really busting my balls. What can I do to convince you? Let me throw in my wife, Mrs. Neal. It's the latest model, not a scratch on her. Pearls like a charm. What do you say? We got a deal. Look, I, I really, I can't take your wife. Yes, you can. I got loads of them. Ooh. Come on down to crazy deals. <laughs> we got crazy deals on chairs. We got crazy deals on meals. <laughs> we got crazy deals on wheels. <laughs> we got wheels on meals. Meals on wheels. We've even got endangered seals. And we got meals with endangered seals. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Neil. Well, it's always a dream come true to meet a hero. How about that, Megan? The man himself, aren't we lucky? <laughs>
back to you. Notes. In a review which ends with the words, and he hasn't even had the decency to see it through, the film, which is free to all residents of the territories, has seen record pre-bookings and looks set to run for months and months. But let's go back to those lucky few seeing it tonight. Oh, I'm so jealous. Robin. Just the unusually wealthy, Megan. I'm here with richest man in the world and beer tycoon, Johnny Hounsleeves. Are you excited for the film, Johnny? Don't really have time for film, you know, I'm a busy man. Oh, so what brings you to this film premiere? It's always time for the smooth flavour of a headbutt ale. I see. <laughs> so, what have you enjoyed most since you became the richest man in the world? It's got to be the crisp refreshment that only comes from an ice cold beer. Mm, of course. <laughs> what would you say to the people that criticise your billionaire lifestyle? I'd like to headbutt them all, but I'll settle for the full bodied flavour of a headbutt ale. Honestly, did not think you'd be able to make a marketing opportunity out of that one. So, uh, yeah, fair enough. I have a question for you. How have you managed to avoid the assets and wealth tax? The only thing I'm avoiding is these questions. How have you avoided trying one for yourself? Hmm. Thank you. Aftertaste. <laughs> Just too much flavour to be contained in one taste. No, no, it says here contains grade D innards, <laughs> and then it just says miscellaneous in brackets. The D stands for delicious. <laughs> well, I think we better throw it back to the studio before you all see my miscellaneous innards. <laughs> Thank you to Johnny Hamsleeves for taking time out of your busy schedule to bring us this live beer advert. <laughs> I'm off to the movies, Megan. To be Robin, lucky you, and enjoy the movie. The Automated opens in cinemas across the territories this weekend. What a star-studded event, eh, Stacey? Who cares? No one goes to the cinema these days. Of course. We'll be back after these messages. I still go to the cinema. You should get yourself a video recorder, like the one at the home. Well, yeah, I've got a video recorder. It's just not the same, is it? You're right, it's better. No unevens chatting and chewing all the way through. Oh, what about a kiss and cuddle on the back row? Doesn't that happen anymore? In public? What's wrong with you? Nothing. Nothing's wrong with me. Feeling better? Mm. All right, you are. I've got to get set up for heat rash. I think Ronnie's on something. I know he is. It was on his rider. <laughs> Apparently it's medicinal. Ronnie's always high. Give him orange juice. My God, she speaks. He's a stupid cunt. And just like that, you wish she wouldn't. We seem to be a bit bunched up at its end. Oh, don't worry. It's SoCo. It's what now? So what is... Oh, here's Megan. Uh, she's going to be interviewing you. Hello. Hi. Uh, this is her... Uh, this is Stacy. Well, hello there, Stacy. Fuck off, Ronnie. Oh. <laughs> right. No, I'm sorry, but if we can't be polite, you're going to have to wait in the dressing room. Whatever. Do you want to go and wait in the dressing room? Hmm? No. No what? No. Thank you. OK. And sit up straight. You're ruining my shot. That's ten seconds, everybody. No co. Fucking right, no co. What's that? What's, what's no co? What's no Bring co? in five. Four, three. Welcome back. For our final segment tonight, Stacey and I are delighted to be joined by Heat Rash. <laughs> Their new album, Girls and Why We Love Them All, comes out this weekend. So, let me see if I can get this right. It's Nolan. I write the songs. Ronnie. That's what he says on my tattoo. Oh, you've got a tattoo of your name on yourself. Okay. In case he forgets it. <laughs> <laughs> this raconteur, you must be Chinny. So, <laughs> Why do they call you Chinny? Uh, it's because of this ugly old thing. Oh, I don't know what you mean. Oh, God, you're so fucking embarrassing. Oh, Dale. Crikey, Dale, you do not look old enough to be in a band. I get that a lot. 
I'm actually 23, the oldest one. Oh. I have a growth disorder. God, I'm so sorry. I, I didn't know that. It's so cool, Preeti. Uh, it's only messing with you. He's actually 58. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> OK, right, I see. You're going to be a handful, aren't you, oh, boys? Mum. <laughs> oh, and you must be TP. Hmm, what does TP stand for? <coughs> Tiny prick. <laughs> it stands for team player. I see. How long have you had that nickname? Ever since Nolan decided Terry Prodnos was a shit name for a member of a boy band. <laughs> no co, Ronnie. Yeah, no co, Ronnie. No co. Sorry, what does no co mean? Ah, it's the opposite of Soco. Ah. Fuck's sake. Soco. Yeah. So cohesive. You pretees say cool. Right, okay. Thank you, Stacey. <laughs> Sorry about her. Not your fault. She's uneven. So, you guys met through a popular show on one of our rival channels, didn't you? Yeah, team players with a Z. <laughs> so, how did that work then? Well, actually, Dell and I knew each other from school. We were actually classmates. And... For fuck's sake, Nolan, mate. Give someone else a chance. We all went on team players. We all auditioned. Mm -hmm. The judges put us into bands. And, um, yeah, we went to their houses and they just put us into bands. Oh, okay. It's an example of how we're greater than the sum of our parts when we work in harmony. Uh -huh. And occasionally singing it. <laughs> So every week on the show, they get these bands and uh, they give them a song that the producer just found from under the bin somewhere. Actually, I thought. write the song. <laughs> and um, the public would phone in and decide which song they like best. Right, and then uh, the losers would be eliminated. <sighs> yeah. Mum, what? No co. Pretty, so no co. The band who get the most approval gets to play their song again. Sure. Uh, so, so what happens to the losers then? Mum! What? What? What do I keep doing wrong? We don't use the L word anymore. What, you mean losers? Oh, would you please stop saying that? <laughs> that word is a pejorative. It's a word designed to diminish. At Go Getters I learned very early that we only win when everybody wins. But, mm. sorry, that's just, that's not real life, is it? That's just sports board, no? I thought you were Soko. Yeah, I... I am, I am Soko. Nah, you're a shrinker. Can't be friends with shrinkers. She doesn't know what you're talking about. She doesn't understand. Uh, so I do understand, actually, Stacey. What's a shrinker? Well, a shrink, a shrinker. What's is... a pretty, Mum? I well, I think it means someone who's older, pretty doesn't it? Pre-territories. It's someone who turned eighteen before the new future. Oh. We call you preties. Uneven. Mimi. Nonks. It's not her fault. She's old. She can't help it. I'm not that old. I'm trying actually. to help you here. Well, I don't think I need your help. See? Total Mimi. Is that so? Yes, obviously. <laughs> <clears throat> you know what the real problem with you lot is? You just can't get over the fact that your beloved disrupt are gone and you just don't fit in anymore. <laughs> but the truth is, Disrupt were violent, no-co, pricks being led by a fucking psycho. I'm glad they lost, and you should be too. Listen, not everyone over 30 supported Disrupt Stacey. Not everyone, no, but one fuck-off lot of you did. So-co, Stacey. So-co. Well, we've all learned maybe a little bit more than we expected to there. <laughs> I'm genuinely delighted to have met Heat Rash. And before we end the show tonight, I think you're going to sing for us, aren't you? Yes, that's right. We're going to sing a song from Girls and Why We Love Them All called Pieces of My Heart, mm. which is about a real relationship I have with an actual girl. Oh, no one, give it a rest, mate. No one cares. Come on, let's get on these stools, lads. Right. <laughs> so, um, Stacey. Can I get your contact? Oh, 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 she's 15. Go on, piss off and sing your song, Terry. Yeah. Christ. Right you are. So, here they are with their latest single, Pieces of My Heart. Are you excited, Stacey? Not for me, no. I only listen to blip music and a bit of jizz core. Pop music is... Ah, oh, yes. I know I meant to mention this earlier. Apparently, these newfangled boy bands change singer all the bloody time. Try and pull along, eh? Keep the shot on whoever is currently singing the lead vocal. I saw you 
standing by the man you sent Or with a brand new pair of flackers Baby, do you remember? You took the first of the pieces of my heart We wandered into a bush and grabbed a vodka and stank Took our assets and our wealth and drew them out of the Thank you for coming in. <laughs> now it's almost time for final thoughts tonight. And I've actually asked Stacey to write a few and they're just being programmed onto the auto queue now. Uh, now I, I have no idea what she's going to say. <laughs> so fingers on that bleep button in the broadcast room, just in case. Um, take it away, Stacey. My name is Stacey. I guess you know that by now. I don't know why I put that in there. Anyway, I don't watch the news. There's no need. You hear all the important stuff from your mates, so I don't know what's considered important anymore. But I'm pretty sure that it's not rehashed movies and fucking boy bands, so... Anyway, 
I'm going to talk about what's important to me. When Advance were first elected, six years ago, I was nine and in a home. Not a family home like you call a home. This was a state children's home. It was, well, it was fucking awful, actually. It was like a Charles Dickens book. The roof leaked and the walls were damp some mornings. The food was bad. Drugs and alcohol were everywhere. No one cared. You had to watch your back all the time because there weren't enough staff to manage us. And yes, as you'd imagine, there was a lot of... Some bad stuff went down there with some of the staff. OK. Not all of them, but the others knew, and they didn't stop it. And then Advance won the election. And like a miracle, things started to change. They got better. We had nicer food. The home was not just repaired, but redecorated and kitted out with books and sports stuff and musical instruments and video games. Most of the staff were fired and the new ones, which there were more of, spent time talking and working with the bullies. And you know what? A second miracle. It worked. The bullying stopped. Life, my life, got better. Because finally, there was enough money to do the good things and Advance had the guts to do it. I joined Go-Getters and on Liberation Night, that gave me a group of friends that I could talk with when the bombs went off and the power went out. Another miracle. I wasn't alone anymore. And that was the night I finally understood the importance of being in a team. So here's my final thought. I know the people who were doing better under the old system long to go back. You say, we were freer. But what you mean is, we were richer. But for every one of you, there is a hundred of me. And even now, after all you've had taken away, you are still doing better than I am, than I likely ever will. You still have homes of your own and families of your own who love you. And I'll never have that. So maybe you should stop looking for the worst interpretation of everything this amazing government does and realise it's not for you. It's for the millions like me. And you can cry and bleat all you want, but you're never going to get your money back because it's already been spent on miracles. Wow, thank you. Stand by. Stand by. Tomorrow better. And we're out. Is that all right? Oh, yes. Yes, that was more than all right. Nicely done. Mm. I think you might have actually given them something to think about. So I guess you're going to be taking me back to the home now then. Um, I was thinking we could go out somewhere and, I don't know, have, have a meal, talk about our options, if that's OK. Of course, Miss Wolfe. Security will be standing by. Thank you. So they're always there then? Uh, there was a... A thing, a few years ago now. Oh, with that Jeremy Blow. I heard about that. Everyone did. New song for the new future. Who knew that then? That speaks from and to look old enough. your heart. An original composition of cooperation and co. She does. That. A song of solidarity for a steadfast society. No previous songwriting experience is required. All you need to do is record or notate your anthem and, if possible, arrange it for a modern 39-piece chamber orchestra or 44-voice choir. The entries will be judged by acclaimed composer...
Please, good evening. That time again. Best not to focus on the problems and all that. Let's just get started. But uh, just so you know, the problems with your equipment continue unabated. Locked buttons, screens flickering on and off, sparks and the like. I'm sure you'll manage without issue. Oh, and don't forget, you've got free reign of the SFX buttons now. Make sure to use them to keep the show lively. Cheers. What have you got me? Nothing, Colin. No, come on, seriously. Not even a cake. I'm sorry, no. OK. No worries. How old are you then, Cole? OK, here we go. Big smiles. I've actually gained a year. I celebrated 44 last year, but it's actually this year. <laughs> it's brilliant. You're 44? I'm going in five, four, <laughs> three. Good evening and welcome to the nightly show. It's so good to have you with us tonight. I'm Megan and I'm joined as always by the inimitable Robin and Patrick. How are we? Well, we have got so much going on tonight. I'm excited. I'd say I'm about a 12, Megan. <laughs> on the excitement scale. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We have got so much SoCo stuff coming up. We sure do. We have celebrity chef Jordan Brankley who will be cooking up a storm. <laughs> we'll be announcing the winners of our big competition, Visions of the Future. And we'll be joined by a very special guest for a game of Wheel of Truth. And I'll even be showing you how to make your own Leader's Day gifts. We've got all of that and so much more tonight on The Nightly Show. With SFX, less is more, Alex. From the channel. We are soldiers. We are doctors, scientists and poets. We are all these types because we are you. We will look for the truth and unlike this channel, we will show it to you. You will hear some frightening things about this government. We are chilling and they are true. We have the evidence. Understand this. There is something wrong with the food. Right, let's have some applause on the way into the next section. ...by Chef Jordan Rankley. But first, we know you love them, so Robin's going to give us an update on our lovely nightly show pets in Pet Corner. Hi, suit yourself. Well, Megan, first up, we have our hamster, Lord Cheeks. Now, he's a squat winter grey with the scientific name Adipem stultus, and he lives here with us in this cage. Hamsters love hoarding, and they actually have special pouches in their cheeks for storing food. He loves carrots, apples, and chewing tobacco. Now, hamsters are nocturnal, so we'll do our best not to wake him up. But let's just see if we can... <laughs> well, the door has been left open. Um, so, um, it looks as though Lord Chinks has actually gone for a little wander. Uh, but I'm sure he will be around here somewhere. <laughs> In the meantime, let's say hello to our tortoise. Now, after last month's viewer vote, she is now, of course, called Slow Barbara. And don't panic, even though it is December, Babs here doesn't actually hibernate. Let's say hello. Oh, she's sleeping. Oh, Babs. Well. <laughs> oh. Uh, uh, those are our nightly show pets, Megan, <laughs> both alive and well. Back to you. Are you taking the piss now? We'll check in on them or some very similar animals at the same time tomorrow. Now then, I hope you're hungry, because if not, you're about to be. Patrick Bannon is with Chef Jordan Rankley, and they're going to be showing us how to knock up a delicious apple pie. Mm -mm. Time to go into the kitchen. Into the kitchen. That's right, and I'm joined here by Chef Jordan Rankley. Welcome to the Nightly Show Kitchen. How's it compared to the kitchens you're used to? I love the colours. <laughs> it's vibrant. It's fresh. <laughs> it's none about all the arseholes. <laughs> Sorry? What? <laughs> so, uh, you own six restaurants. You've been awarded nine Ballon Massifs across your career. Mm -hmm. And you've worked alongside the best chefs in the world. Tonight you've got me. Oh, are you worried? <laughs> Am I fucking worried? <laughs> are you worried? <laughs> are you fucking worried? Yes. Um. 
So, uh, what are we making today, Chef? <laughs> so, we've got a family over for Leader's Day. Yep. They're hungry. We're going to make them a delicious apple pie. Ooh, lovely. <laughs> it's got sweetness. It's got the acidity of the fruit. Mm. And then you get the richness of that pastry. Incredible. Wow, OK. So, where do we start? So, we're going to start by making our filling. So, we've got about a kilogram of fresh cooking apples here. Mm. Fucking beautiful. And we're going to slice these up perfectly. Yep. And then, straight into the pan. Uh, so, uh, your new show, uh, Demon Kitchen Heart Eater, starts on Friday here on Channel One. So, tell us about that. <laughs> so, teams of young chefs come into my kitchen, yep. and one by one I destroy them emotionally. And if there's time, I teach them some basic knife skills. <laughs> Fuck me, Patrick. What are you doing? What? <laughs> Shit. Is that how you cut? Fuck, you'll lose a fucking finger. Ooh, don't worry, I've got spares. <laughs> right, so uh, once we've done that, we uh, set these aside whilst we make the pastry. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Bowl. Oh. Yeah? OK. Sugar. Butter. Yep. We mix that together and then a whole egg. Yep. OK. Egg. What are you doing, you fucking donkey? Are your brains the size of that fucking egg? Oh, no, chef. No. <laughs> Shit. Right. Mix that with a wooden spoon and work in that flour, OK? Work that into a nice ball of dough, just like that. So, uh, what does the notoriously fierce Jordan Rankley do to unwind? <laughs> Shit, the bed. Yeah. What's that? What is that? It's a bit, bit lumpy. Lumpy? It could fucking pass for a sack of spuds. <laughs> Touch that. Touch it. <laughs> Yeah? Pathetic. That goes into chill. Now, we're mixing our filling. OK. Apples, sugar, yes. cinnamon. Mm. Oh, so, uh, well, you own six restaurants across five territories. Which is your favourite? Are you mixing that or fucking it? What? Are you going to light a candle? Take it out to dinner? Fucking mix it, for fuck's sake. Right. Now we're rolling out two thirds of our pastry. Oh God. Um, Bit of flour into the dish. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the filling goes next, right? Absolutely right. Oh. Lovely. Okay. Then we're taking the remaining pastry, rolling that into a round, and that goes on the top. Beautiful. Ooh. Lovely. Okay. Right. Brush a bit of water around the rim. Right. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> now press gently all the way around. And we're cutting five slashes very carefully for the steam. <laughs> and then brushing the whole thing with a beaten egg. Lovely. Oh, OK. <laughs> egg. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> oh, my God. You. You. Come here. Come here, you. That's a disgrace. I'd rather jam my eyeballs up my fucking arse <laughs> than look at that. Yeah. I'd rather use my tongue to tie my shoes after the fucking shit kicking <laughs> contest, do you understand? Then it goes in the oven for 45 minutes. Oh, <laughs> put your fucking head in the oven while you're at it. Useless. <laughs> you! Come here, you! You're the worst fucking thing to happen to food since cyanide, do you know that? I tell you what. Fuck <laughs> off! Get the fuck out of here! <laughs> Fuck off! Yes, OK, well, while I do that, <laughs> let's go now to Megan and Robin, who will be announcing the winners of our competition, Visions of the Future. I think you might be using those sound effects a little too much there. Well, that looks delicious. <laughs> if you want to follow along at home, then make sure you write in with a stamped address envelope and we'll send you the fact sheet. So, Robin, look at all these amazing entries to the Vision of the Future competition. Yes, we challenged you to show us your predictions of the future and we were just inundated with entries, weren't we, Megan? From wacky inventions to global problem solving, they are all amazing and we had the best time looking through each one. It was so tough narrowing it all down. So we have some amazing runners up. In third place, drum roll please, <laughs> we have Hamish, who's three from Lunwelly. <laughs> he calls this still life and the future of God, and it really blew us away. Just look at the line work here. 
and I can really feel every passionate stroke of the brush. Mm. If you look here, you'll see a beautifully rendered, what I thought at first was a smiley face or perhaps a cat. Oh. But I think if you really look, you'll see it's actually a representation of the seeming futility of death through the eyes of the living. Indeed. He's also chosen to just leave a lot of it blank. Mm. Which I think is really interesting. If you know Hamish and his work, of course, he, he loves focusing on the negative space mm -hmm. rather than the image itself. Stunning, absolutely stunning, and such talent from one so young, Megan. Absolutely. But next up, we have our second place entry. So in second, drum roll, please. We have Keith, 41, from Dungleys. Yeah, Keith, we were sort of aiming this towards our younger viewers, but still, he has sent in his idea of the future, which he's calling Ravaged Earth. Indeed, he says, and he's really rather detailed, notes. Um, deprived of basic resources, society will resort to a brutal system of weekly battles to the death where only the victor may breed. <laughs> he also says at the bottom here, either that or about the same, but maybe a bit worse. I really love his attention to detail. You can see the sort of gladiatorial arena and then what I can only assume is Keith himself pulling off this chap's head and shouting, um, Come back to me, Linda! Oh, Keith, maybe if you spent more time outdoors and less time entering children's competitions, she might not have left. <laughs> Special one there. And yeah. finally, of course, it's time to reveal our winner. All our runners-up will receive a day out at an inflatable happy land on an industrial estate just off the A40. Sorry about that, Keith. <laughs> but our lucky winner will win the chance to spend the day at the Department of Change to see how our teammates are actually making the new future a reality every day. And the winner is, oh. drum roll please. <laughs> it's... Oh, oh he was that. <laughs> I didn't like him much. I thought his man of the people act was just that, an act. But in the six years since he's been gone, I started to wonder if he was the only thing keeping the brakes on the team. And I'm wondering if Julia Salisbury realizes that when she reflects on his passing, or worse, that she knew all along, because then, of course, it's not reflection, it's motive. Seems to have gone a bit haywire <laughs> in what I can only assume is an ominous sign of things to come. Lovely, Lola. Well, if our winners have inspired you to make some artwork of your own, do keep sending them in, and yours could be displayed in our gallery here. Well done again to everyone who took part. We're going to take a break now, but when we come back, we'll be playing the Wheel of Truth yeah. and making some lovely homemade gifts. Don't go away. We'll be back after this. Right. From what I can tell, the vision mix is getting even worse for wear, Alex. I expect things will be more challenging in this next segment, so be careful. Don't take any unnecessary risks. Not like what we're putting out actually matters anymore. My flat's not far from here. I'm, I'm on the bus. Not tonight. I'll get cards arranged for you both. Find me when you're done and I'll take you out through the um, loading bay. Oft, however, by a massive 9% fertility rate here in Territory 2, who saw an unbelievable 191 births today. Though a nasty cold snap brings bitter winds overnight, so not all sunshine and rainbows. No rainbows in sight over territories three and four, as a category two storm warning means we advise our residents to spend their leaders weekend indoors. Though we're sure the happy parents of the 12 new children in territory three will be thanking their lucky stars for an excuse to stay home. Though of course, nothing to do with stars, more of a hot air, cold air thing. Next, this front of warm. It's playing havoc with the sound. It's bad out there. We're being stretched again. I have to use a high-pass filter. It's a revolution, Colin. Well, can you ask them to keep it down a bit? <sighs> Jenny, Jenny, where's Glyn? Can we get him out here? I'm not sure about this grandma one. Oh, he's writing with our other guests at the moment. But I just wouldn't say grandma. Grandmother? Yes, grandmother's arsehole. That's much better. Oh, oh, OK, everyone, if I could have your attention, please. Sarah just needs a word. Apparently, there's been some sort of disturbance near the studio. Now, I'm sure it's nothing to worry about, but I wanted to let you know that I've asked for extra security and they're already on their way. Thanks, Sarah. OK, ten seconds, so positions and pose. <laughs> OK, this time you've said it. Laughing, and we're going in five, four, three... <laughs> <laughs> 
Welcome back to The Nightly Show. I'm sorry, we were just saying we can't wait to taste Patrick's pie. Oh, I don't know, I think I could wait. Well, here it is, fresh out the oven. Oh. Oh, well, it does look amazing. Jordan, how does our Patrick do? Well, let's just say that pie's got more crust than my grandmother's arsehole. Oh. Oh. <laughs> well, thank you for that. Well, come on, try it, dig in. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Oh my god. Oh my lord. And a little glass of comfort for Robert, I think. <laughs> but now you better go and get ready for that next feature. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Every night we play a game of Wheel of Truth with our celebrity guests. But I know what you're thinking. Uh, Megan, we've only got one celeb guest. <laughs> well observed, viewers, well observed. Well then, I'd better bring her out. Welcome Should for I? the State of the Nation. Guest. What do you think? And she welcome for me. Best-selling author, lawyer and thinker. I mean, she's only the Bloomin' Team leader. <laughs> it's Julia Salisbury. Prime Minister oh. Julia Salisbury. Oh, welcome, Julia. Welcome. <laughs> 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 You. Oh, Megan, you look incredible. Oh, I was just about to say the same thing. <laughs> now, don't get too comfortable. It's time to head over to Robin and Patrick as we play Wheel of Truth. Wheel of Truth. That's right. It's that part of the show where we pit our celebs against each other to see if we can break them. That's right, Robin. They're going to spin the wheel to pick around, and it could be anything from box of flies to slap my face. <laughs> they really have no idea Lovely. what's in store. So, up first, we have Jordan. Oh, Let's give it a spin. Yeah, here we go. Oh! Okay, it's oh. fact or fib. Fact or fib. Jordan, is it true that you've been known to order takeaway for a dinner party <laughs> and pass it off as your own cooking? Fuck. <laughs> one fucking time. <laughs> one time. Well, I think if that pie was anything to go by, you did them a favour. Oh, <laughs> oh not so fast there, Julia. Fact or fib. Fact or fib. We've heard you've got a very interesting way of saving time during the laundry. Oh, my God. <laughs> You absolutely no, no. I can't. <laughs> okay, so don't judge. Once, we fought and died for the right to an informed choice. We had journalists we could trust, so we made decisions for the common good. Then we took it for granted, and now, now we have bread and circuses. So eat your sandwiches and enjoy your clowns while you can. My taxes, we're clearly not paying you enough. Come to my dressing room after the show, we'll sort you out. Oh, oh, are you blushing, Patrick? Is all this talk of bras embarrassing you? Blushing? I mean, I'm not blushing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Come on, then, you, Julia, spin the bloody wheel. Let's do it. <laughs> and you simply have to get yes, that face. Yes. Okay, you're ready. Here we go. Julia. Oh, who's that? Oh, oh my oh. God. <laughs> Is that you? Yes. Oh. Look, look, it was a very difficult time fashion wise. <laughs> no, it was fucking hilarious. <laughs> No, no, don't. I think it's sweet. <laughs> yeah. And well, it is as popular now as it's ever been. Oh, well, don't get too ahead of yourself there. Oh. Jordan, oh. who oh. is this? Does that look familiar at all? Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm glad I was getting fashion advice from someone who managed oh. to make seven look like 85. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just what the doctor ordered. I look like I'm haunting the fucking place. <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 we've got to move oh, on. No. Jordan, let's have another spin. Okay, here we go. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 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 it's my go time. 
you guys go on. Sorry, I'm so keen. Don't want to spend so much. Oh, while you're looking for a treat, yeah, it's fat uh, or fish. Oh my god. Oh, fish. Oh, fish. Okay, if you look under your podiums, you will find a lovely fish smoothie. Oh, <laughs> now, I'm going to ask you both a question, and all you have to do is answer it honestly, or else you'll have to drink the smoothie. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. okay. Are you ready for the question? Yes, yes. Here we go. Yeah. Which of your esteemed hosts <laughs> is the more talented one? <laughs> oh, oh, what a cop out. Oh, how is it? How is it? Fucking oh. you. <laughs> oh, we made it extra fishy. <laughs> I need my fucking mouth. Do you know how much these taste buds are worth? <laughs> Crafty Corner, where today I'm going to be ably assisted by Julia. Come on over here. Goodness me, I don't know how you're keeping your dinner down. I can still smell that fish. <laughs> well, to be honest, I've had worse. I used to eat at Peter Clement's house. Oh, well, I hope you've got your artsy hat on because today we're going to be making something very close to my heart. It's our little studio. Look at that. Isn't it adorable? Oh. All of us there on the sofa. Wow. Oh, it's gorgeous. Oh, is that all you in there? Yeah, it is. If we can just get a little zoom in. There we are. Oh, I don't know about you, Julia, but I always leave my holiday shopping to the last minute. Oh, every year. I do it every year. Well, luckily, these make amazing gifts. Shall we get cracking? Oh, yes, well, not much left in the bottom. Maybe not too. Two box Lovely. here. And Julia, that's it. Grab those scissors. I just want you to get rid of this front panel here. Perfect. <laughs> Will do. Are you big celebrators in your house, Julia? Oh, yes. Yeah. No, in my house, we show our love through food, like big dinners, loads of drinks. Absolutely right. That's the best bit about any holiday. It's all that food. This bit as well. Absolutely right. Cutting along the line there. Do be careful with the scissors at home. Make sure you're being supervised <laughs> it's a bit if tough. you are a child. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Fabulous. There we go. OK, so it's going to look a little something like this. And I've got one here I made earlier. We painted it with a bit of poster paint, white to match our lovely curtains here in the studio. But you can obviously have whichever backdrop you like. Like a nice shiny gold number. Well, exactly right. So we're going to make bits of our set now to put in the studio, perhaps a little desk. So I'm just going to grab this piece of card. I've just got it from a little cereal box packet. I think you... Oh, I'll give you this one, Julia. Oh, Shall I? you so much. Go. And all you need to do is cut along the lovely. lines there. Fabulous. So what's the best part of any Leader's Day dinner, do you reckon? Oh, um, I don't even have to think about it. Really? I love the three <laughs> potato pie. Three <laughs> potato pie? I don't know that one. <laughs> you know, with the chips covered in the mash or wrapped up in a jacket potato. <sighs> that just means it does that. <laughs> I don't know, but that sounds starchy. <laughs> well done, Julia. So now she's folding over a little bit there. What it's going to look like at the end is this little rectangular shape there. We're going to pop it in the middle. 
bit of sticky tape on the back there so it sticks down. Now we need a sofa. That's what we need next. We're going to make that out of a lovely paper cup. <laughs> Put knocking one down there. Over. Knocking it all over. <laughs> I got one though, Megan. Good. Fantastic. Um, click, along the line here, down the middle. Exactly right. And then when you've done that, around the bottom and again around the top. Well done. When you're done, <laughs> oh, there we go. It's going to look a little something like this. And look what I've done there. I've stuck some felt down. Nice and comfortable sofas. <laughs> yes, can't have our tiny Megan having an uncomfortable sofa, can well, we? Absolutely not. <laughs> She'll be on the phone to her tiny agent and getting someone tiny fired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, there's only one thing missing, isn't there, Julia? What is that? Oh, a higher calibre of guests. <laughs> Nearly. It's people. <laughs> so all we've done to make our little people is we've stuck a cocktail stick into a bottle cap. Mm, we just need a face for that now. Uh, I've got a good one here. I know it well. <laughs> it's me. Lovely. I'm going to stick it down there. A little bit of sticky tape. All oh, my felt's going everywhere. <laughs> there we go. Oh, I'm a bit lonely. Let's take Robin and Patrick over. Do, 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 do. Sitting down on the couch over there. Well, there you go. And, and well, well, I'll make myself just comfortable just just there. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> and these, of Lovely. course, are all made and cut out of our favourite newspapers or magazines. So you can have any guests you like. Julia, is there anyone else you'd like oh. in the studio? Oh, yes. Well, well, on, I'm going to be playing Wheel of Truth with yeah. Ronnie from Heathrow. Really nice. <laughs> yes, put that in the way. Yeah. Um, yes, he's going to be teaching me choreography and I'll be teaching him foreign policy. Mm, and of course you can decorate them however you want. Perhaps you're a bit, I don't know, nostalgic for the old look of our studio. We've got the blue studio down there. Or even a bit of retro red. <laughs> I've got Sheila Quickstep being interviewed there by... Oh, um... So, that's not, that's not supposed to be... Oh, oh mama, that place. It's time for a break. When we come back, I'll be on the couch of chat talking to some couch of you. Chat. And I just cannot Wait, we'll be back after these messages. Why do we bother, Alex? What's the point? It's not like this is even close to journalism anymore. How did I let it get this far? <laughs> you did remember. You're coming with me. Should we be worried? We've got the Prime Minister here. It's good that she's here. She's the reason for the extra security. Are we going to need it? Possibly. They're back. It's not very reassuring. I know. Good thing I'm not your mum, right? Clear as day. Sowing division. Undermining our lives and threatening our achievements. They use freedom of speech to justify their discriminations. They use tradition and history to justify their need to oppress. They want more than their fair share. They put themselves before the team. In a disrupt world, they would decide what women do with their bodies. They would decide what kinds of relationships are natural. They would exploit the vulnerable for personal gain. And they would eradicate betterment in exchange for a noose. They see themselves both at the same time, Colin. I'm quadruple jointed. Uh, that is not a thing. <laughs> oh yeah, Cortorcia doesn't run to my family. The sprongs are huge in circuses and casino heights. <laughs> oh, there would be. And brothels, obviously. Oh, crazy. <laughs> Everybody okay in here? Yeah. Thank you. Oh, yeah, we would be if you stopped asking us questions like that. <laughs> We're expecting troublemakers, but nothing serious. You might hear some noises, but it's nothing to be concerned about. The services know what they're doing. So, nobody freak out when the shooting starts, OK? <laughs> Show must go on and all that. Tits and teeth. <laughs> oh, cunt. Sorry, Prime Minister. <laughs> Thank you, Jenny. Tits and teeth, armed and ready. <laughs> Ten seconds, everybody. God, kill Best me. in the business, she yeah. is. <laughs> In five, four, three... Welcome back to the nightly show where it's time for the Prime Minister to face the toughest critics in the territories. You lot out there. <laughs> Call us on the usual numbers with your questions for the Prime Minister. First up, we have Humphrey from Hamble Bamblebury. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely place. I'm hoping to retire there. Ooh. Oh, good choice. <laughs> Are you there, Humphrey? Hello, Humphrey. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> we appear to have lost Humphrey. <laughs> we'll try and get him back, but let's go to another call in the meantime. Who have we got next, Patrick? Next up, we've got Mandy from Arsminster. Oh, I don't think I'll be retiring there. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Mandy. You're through to the Prime Minister. What's your question? Hello? <laughs> Mandy? <laughs> What's going on, Jenny? Oh, we try not to talk to the crew. Jenny? The lines are down. Oh, well, call down to maintenance and get... We can't. All the lines are down. Well, apologies to our viewers at home. We seem to have a few technical gremlins making mischief behind the scenes. <laughs> <laughs> so while we're getting back up and running, uh, Patrick has a couple of questions that were sent in by our viewers earlier this week. I do? It's yeah. your letters. Oh, yes. <laughs> Yes, 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 no, of course I do. <laughs> uh, well, our <laughs> first question uh -huh. is from Pat Patricia, <laughs> who lives on Camera Avenue. <laughs> uh, and what she really wants to know. Lock the door! Don't! Oh, lock the fucking door! Look at you, the CCO! Seal the doors! You, you're Jenny, aren't you? Come here. Don't be afraid, Jenny. We're not here to hurt you. We're not here to hurt anyone. If we don't have to, all I want you to do is to keep the show on the ear. Do you understand? Just do your job and everything will be all right, OK? Don't be afraid. Don't... You two, on your knees over there. Move! <laughs> so, this is the famous couch of chat, eh? I Good. don't answer questions at gunpoint, Mr James. Oh. You're not at gunpoint, Prime Minister. There you are. Oh, 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 please don't kill me, please, please. Nevertheless, if you think I'm going to answer to you, then oh, I'm afraid Oh, you don't have to answer to me, Julia. Are the doors locked and sealed? Yes, sir. No one's getting in or out. Good. Good. All clear. Good. Thank you. Yeah, it's good. Jeremy? Hello, you. <laughs> Why didn't you make contact? It would have only put you in their crosshairs, I'm sorry. You're a rotten, selfish bastard. Yes. Keep the show going for me. Of course. <laughs> Let them go, Alan. There'll be no killing tonight. Sorry, I don't think we've met. I'm Patrick Bannon. <laughs> so what you're telling yourself, is it? Sorry for barging in. Hate what you've done with the place. <laughs> Me too. Would you like your spot? It's yours now. You wear it well. So, let's talk, shall we? I'm secured here on their way, Mr Donaldson. I what? know you know that. Well, we'd best make use of the time we have then, eh? Well, I'll leave you to it then. No. I think you should stay too. For safety? For balance. Good evening. I'm Jeremy Donaldson. Let's welcome back the National Nightly News. Tonight I'm joined by probably the two most influential people in the country, if not the continent. So let's see if we can't kick over a few rocks and see what's lurking underneath. Prime Minister, if I could turn to you first. I have nothing to hide. Except that which is already hidden. Prime Minister, what is not ethandrone? I beg your pardon? Not ethandrone. It's used in birth control, among other things. If you haven't heard of that, Perhaps you could enlighten us in regards to agrobacterium tumefaciens. I, uh, I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about, Mr Donaldson. Well, that suggests a lack of attention to detail, Prime Minister. It's a bacterium used in the genetic modification of an organism. And I found traces of both these substances 
in every single one of the menu centre food boxes that I've had analysed from across the territories, if you're wondering. What exactly are you suggesting? I'm not suggesting anything, Prime Minister. I'm just pointing out the facts. Oh, my God. Is that why Kate and I can't have... So you blamed it on the radioactive clouds from your bombs? Before Stacy, We tried so many times. Prime Minister, is there something wrong with the food? You want the truth? You think it'll help your viewers sleep at night? Well, well, here it is. Six years ago, when we came to power, we got access to the real facts and figures. And they told us we were doomed. The population was expanding at an unsustainable rate. Within 50 years, we would be out of natural resources. We would war over fuel, and then inevitably food and clean water. It was no exaggeration to say that, that we were facing extinction. It was supposed to be opt-out contraception, a, an end to unwanted children, a chance to rebalance. But, but something went wrong in the testing phase. Nature took over. We never... I... I never wanted this. So you covered it up and blame the sterility on the bombs. Oh, please don't lecture me on morality, Mr James. Your hands are far too dirty for that. Disrupt only did what had to be done. <sighs> Disrupt are not the answer. You'll just take us to an even more extreme version of where we were before. Your, your miserable policies will kill us all. I'm not the one who built the transition centres. No, you're from a time where people didn't even have the basic right to, to choose how and when to die. You turned children against their parents. We enabled young people to speak up about the abuse that they were facing. And guess what? <laughs> Most of that abuse came from within their own families. Identity cards! Oh, grow up! You sterilised us against our will. I built a sustainable future. That's too much. That's not for you to choose. Well, if not me, then who? Who would choose it for themselves? And isn't that at the heart of all this? You don't trust us to choose. You think you know best? You know what's good for us, and if we disagree with you, then you'll send us to betterment. That's why there's no news anymore, because there's no choice, so there's no point. There should be elections. Elections have been suspended. Time to Suspend. unsuspend them, then. If you want to carry on, you'll need a mandate. We have people ready to stand against you in every territory. So, let's turn to you, Mr James. Yes. I want to assure the public that though disrupt our occasionally forced to violent means. We are not by nature a violent organisation. Yes, Jeremy? Could you have this queued up for us, please? Yes, Jeremy. It'd be a pleasure. Is that from disrupt leadership? In a way. Mr James, before you launch into a rather premature election campaign, I think it'd be useful for the viewers at home if you were to also answer a question or two. Of course. When we come to power, one of the first things we'll do is restore a free press. The truth is very important. No more hidden secrets. If you say so. From whom do you take your orders, by the way? I beg your pardon? Well, you're Disrupt spokesman, but for whom do you speak? You know I can't tell you. It's too dangerous for me to say. Don't worry. I don't share those concerns. You see, I've met with them almost five years ago now, back when I was a news anchor. And I also met with them a week ago to discuss tonight's activity. I think they wanted to check that I've stick to the script, which really shows how little they know me. So this time, I wore a hidden camera. Would you like to see a little of what we discussed? No, you can't. She'll have them arrested. They'll be dead by morning. Not an unfair assessment. Fortunately, it's not up to me. It's up to Alex in the broadcast room. What screen, Jenny? Screen four. No, you can't. My people will stop you. Cut the power to your machines. Well, I would imagine mine will be doing their level best to ensure that Mr Donaldson's footage gets the airing it deserves. After all, my security forces will be here soon, and I imagine this will end very badly for all of you. Queued up and ready. Thank you, Jenny. Alex, showing this will have consequences. For someone not showing it, it's up to you. Alex. You got us this far. 
please don't fall at the last hurdle. Oh, damn. Glad I'm not making this choice. All our good work. All the years of disrupting. You could make it all for nothing. Please. And you're absolutely certain in your research? It's unpalatable but true. Advance are covertly sterilising the population. Why don't you just release this through your normal channels? Mr. James is surprisingly efficient rabble-rouser. The peasants respond to his more earthy qualities. But you, Mr. Donaldson, are a face they trust. We did not risk our operative's life to rescue you out of altruism. And afterwards? Once all this is out in the open? We anticipate considerable unrest, possibly riots. Followed, of course, in the restoration of democratic elections under our control, of course. Mm. Nature abhors a vacuum. You, Mr. Donaldson, will create that vacuum and we should be there to fill it. That will take considerable resources. From what I understand, Advance took your wealth. The visible billions, yes. Some markets still prosper. There will always be addicts. And those with carnal desires for livestock of all ages. A lucrative business indeed. And then there are the foreign powers outside the territories. Those who fear to follow the fate of my glorious Erkistan. For them, no price is too high. Mm, folks like us are always well resourced. You need have no concern about that. We have the required funds to fight and to win. And once the fight is done, to make sure this aberrance is never seen again. A return to the natural order of things. The wheat rises to the top and the chaff is burned away. No more living side by side with ill-educated savages. Let the plebs pile up in the ghettos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Strict order, an end to ungodly acts. Everyone back in their place. Including our Mr James. It amazes me how he cannot hear the Damoclean sword as it dangles above his head. <laughs> oh, he is an ignorant bull. He sees only the red cape in front of him, never the hidden blade. And so it is with the low orders. <laughs> they are lost in this new world. They will gladly walk back to old one, and they will be ours again, as it should be. Excellent. Excellent. You set me up. No, Alan, you did that to yourself. Now do you understand what you're doing? Do you understand why we have to? Oh, pathetic. Neither of you recognises your own reflection. How long, Jenny? Not long, I imagine. For any of you. Security are outside. They've been here for five minutes, but they're not doing anything. Turns out there's a lot of them who wanted children. We're already a few minutes over, Megan, but with ratings like this, Bozeman's no fool. Do you want to take us out? It should be you. It should be both of us. You start. Before we go tonight, one final thought. There's so much to digest here, what's happened tonight in this political circus. The tent is collapsing and the ringmasters have lost their glitter. There will be elections. Soon, I'd imagine. You'll be able to choose. These two will run. A choice between a shit sandwich and a cold cup of soup. A circus of odds. Two extremes, both offering their own form of misery. You can do advance and be equal. In cages, like performing lions. Or disrupt and be free. To struggle and starve. Or you can do something different. You can run. You can stand. You can stop remembering the way things are and change it. You're good people and you are sensible people. You know the difference between right and wrong. So stop whinging and do something. Take responsibility, because if you don't, it'll all be left in these clouds. And that's the worst circus of all. My name's Jeremy Dawson. And I'm Megan Wolf. Have a transformative night. And then make tomorrow better. And we're out. You're done. <laughs> this programme, this channel... No, all Julia, not them. Them. We're done. They got us both. Your security team say they'll escort you when you're ready. We can call you a taxi, Alan. Where would I go? Wherever you want. Am I under arrest? I think you know you've made that impossible, Mr Donaldson. My bosses won't be pleased with you. Child sex traffickers and wannabe dictators. They're the natural enemies of the reporter. We should go and see Bozeman. 
We'll do it together. Yes. And then we'll burn this set. I'm, I'm Jeremy Dalton. And I'm Megan Wolfe. Our main stories tonight. The votes are in, and it's a decisive win for Accord. 
The new centrist party snatched victory from under the noses of the mainstream parties. Incoming Prime Minister Fatima Chowdhury called Accords win proof that the major parties had lost the trust of the nation and signalled the end of extremist politics. Neither Advance nor Disrupt, who failed to garner even 10% of the vote between them, have released a statement. Later, we'll be looking in detail at the election results across the nation before Jeremy brings us a report on the recent unrest in Valdez. That's all coming up on tonight's National Nightly News. i 
Tonight on Channel One, I'm going to be grouting with pop star Skinny. And I'm going to be showing Arthur and Katie from the Sunny Happy Playhouse team how to tell their bits from their pieces. So be sure to tune in to Channel One tonight for a new improved season of Just, Just the, the Job. Tonight at 9 p.m. dates I've been on when no one turned up, followed by the worrying number of lumps under my left arm, the date my childhood sweetheart married my best friend, the age my cat was when I ran him over, the number of conversations I've had with my father, and the exact time which my husband was I'm Megan Wolf. And I'm Jeremy Dawes. Our main headlines tonight. Daddy, it's starting! Get every single one of you's a bit Jesus. What a wild ride this has been. Well, that's a very blunt question. But France is lying to you. friends and neighbours and have confidence that the team will keep you safe. 
But now you start to see, yes? Eh? The people never happy. It never enough. <laughs> I cannot believe you. Are you saying that advance have cured death? Jog off! We're still vassal sla slaves, we're just in prettier cages. Oh my goodness. We're only getting started. Good evening, I'm Megan Wolf. And I'm Jeremy Jones. Our main headline.